Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto was the legendary Anbu commander? Here is short summary. What if Naruto was born before the rookie 12? What if he was born at Itachi's age and knew who his parents were? What if Naruto sacrificed his life to save his mother and newborn baby sister? In turn changing his life forever? Powerful Naruto. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Everywhere you looked you could see bodies of badly burnt shinobi and kunoichi alike. Their bodies were not even able to be identified. For what surrounded them were buildings that were crumbling from what looked like to be crushed or burnt by the massive flames surrounding the area. What was happening? Well it was simple the once great place known as Konohagakure, strongest shinobi village of the five great shinobi villages was being attacked by a massive looking fox with nine gigantic flaming tails. The fox was in legend named the Kayubi no Kitsune. Some say it never appears in human affairs aside the fight between Hiroshima Senju and Madara Uchiha since it was summoned by the Uchiha clan founder. But the question was why? Why had the fox attacked this once great shinobi village? That was on the mind of a few people, while there were more important things going on. In which case was a fight happening on the front line, four figures could be seen. First was a man that stood the height of 5 feet 8, he wore the normal shinobi attire which consisted of a dark blue long-sleeved shirt with a green junin flak jacket, he also wore dark blue junin pants that had medical tapped at the ends. Ending his attire was blue shinobi sandals and a sleeveless white trench coat with red flames licking the bottoms and a small chain connecting the ends together. The man had tanned skin with icy sharp blue eyes with spiky yellow hair. This mon's name was Minato Namikaze IV Hokage of Konohagakure, husband to Kashina Uzumaki and father to his five-year-old son Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze and his newborn daughter Mito Uzumaki Namikaze named after Kashina's great-grandmother. At the moment he was fighting a man standing the same height not much could be said about this man except for a few things. First was that all that could be seen was that he wore black shinobi sandals and black shinobi pants. Beyond this was just a black cloak that covered everything on the upper body, he also adorned a mask with a design on the left side, but what was unusual was that there was only one eye hole in it, which was on the mon's right side of his face. These two were fighting while the other two were watching with mixed emotions. The first was a beautiful woman with long silky red hair that at the moment reached the ground she had a heart-shaped face and violet eyes eyes that showed how tired she looked. She was at the moment wearing a hospital gown and was holding a covered up bundle in her arms. The only thing you could see was a tuft of red hair. This woman was Kashina Uzumaki second Jinchiriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune, wife of Minato Namikaze and mother of Naruto and Mito Uzumaki Namikaze. She was holding her newborn daughter tightly at her chest as she watched her husband fight off the man that ruined everything for them. The one who destroyed the day her daughter was coming into this world. She looked worryingly at the person beside her this person she was looking at now was a boy that looked around the age of five years old. He was wearing an attire not seen on any other kid their age. He was wearing an attire of a shinobi. His clothes were special made since this boy had become a shinobi at a young age, but it all was what a normal anbu would wear only not with a mask. His face was what had her concerned this boy had blue eyes that were round like hers, but were already starting to narrow like Minato's and had spiky yellow hair like Minato, but it was much more spiky than Minato's even when he was younger. This boy was none other than her and Minato's pride and joy and genius of a shinobi. He was Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze Genin of Konohagakure, son of Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki and now brother of Mito Uzumaki Namikaze. He had a kanai and shuriken pouch on his left thigh. Right now Kashina was getting worried for her son who was glaring at the cloaked figure with much hate that surprised her since she hadn't seen such hate from her son at all except when it came to some of the higher up people in Konoha. Although I don't blame him, Ing Council been trying to turn him into a weapon since he was born. Kami only knows what they would do when they find out Mito was born. She thought bitterly before she looked back at the fight and saw Minato Rasengan the cloaked figure into the ground using his Hiraishin no Jutsu level 2. That was before Minato jumped back to them as the man disappeared a few feet from them holding his injured arm. The man himself was glaring at Minato's form with hate and rage. This spiky-haired fool stopped his plans fully, but still Kayubi could still destroy Konoha. 
so with that he just turned his head toward Kashina's form and saw the little bundle in her arms. He smiled evilly behind his mask and warped behind her and before Minato could do anything the cloaked figure took out a kanai and brought it down to the bundle in Kashina's arms. Minato watched in horrified eyes as he used Hiraishin to get there in time while Kashina was too weak after having Kayubi ripped out of her by this man. But with surprising speed the kanai was stopped by another which shocked the masked man before he looked into another pair of blue eyes, but they held so much more coldness and hate that it made the man inwardly slightly flinch. Naruto kept his gaze on the man not seeing the shocked look of his parents before jumping up kicking the man in the face send the man skidding back a few feet. This gave Minato the time to appear between his family and the cloaked figure who now had a bit of a crack in his mask. The man now was shocked he was actually kicked or more so was hit. He was now glaring at the other blonde boy in hate and now wonder. He mentally shook his head before speaking, HMPH, I don't need to be here anymore my job here is done. He said before warping out of the area. With the man now gone Minato stretched out his senses to look for the man inside in relief not finding the man not there. He looked over his should and smiled at his family before he heard Kashina start to cough violently. He rushed over to her as Naruto was by her side in an instant and was doing as much as he could to help her. He was looking worried as his mother was coughing up blood while protectingly holding Mito in her arms. He gently held her upright as Minato rushed over and was checking her and saw the effects of having Kayubi ripped out of her taking its toll. He then remembered the threat that was looming over Konoha and looked at the now growling Kayubi who had turned its sights on them. He glared as his mind was going a mile a minute to think of an idea to stop the Kayubi before he remembered a type of sealing that he had created with the help of Kashina's own mastery in sealing. He grimly remembered the effects of what it does to the user, but remembered the pros of what it does. Naruto who was holding his little sister in his arms and helping his mother to support her weakened state. He looked and saw the emotions running through his two sans eyes as he was staring at the Kayubi who was coming at them. Kashina must have seen this before chakra chains came out of the ground holding the Kayubi slamming it down in front of them. This action made Minato and Naruto snap their heads to her in worry seeing her get weaker as she looked into Kayubi's crazed eyes and saw something wrong with it, but couldn't figure it out in her state of weakness. Minato sighed before he heard a rush of wind and saw a giant paw heading for Kashina and cursed before flashing in a flash of yellow. He hoped he would make it in time. Naruto saw the coming paw and knew where it was going. He looked at his little Imouto in his arms before ing her forehead before putting her in Kashina's arms and jumping in the way with his back at the incoming paw. Kashina looked with horrified eyes as Naruto just threw himself in harm's way to stop the incoming attack from killing her. She saw Minato appear to late and saw him watch with horrified eyes as his son just sacrificed himself for his mother. He started to tear up seeing what was happening, but that was squashed down when his son weakly looked at him as blood was dripping from his mouth. Naruto at the moment was in so much pain he couldn't think straight except for just protecting his mother. He looked over his shoulder and glared at the less crazed eyes of Kayubi before looking at his father that was tearing him at what had happened. He smiled at his father as more blood dripped from him. Two San do it. While you have the chance, he said as the light in his eyes was going out. Minato frowned before he saw Naruto's understanding his eyes. His eyes were growing wide as Kashina was crying on what was happening she still listened on what Naruto was saying. S. Sochi. W. What? Dot are you? He said, to San. Dot use. Dot the. Ceiling. On. Me. Use the shiki fuin on me while you have the chance, he said in a much weaker voice. Kashina shot her head up in disbelief at what her son just said while Minato just looked into his son's eyes seeing his son completely serious of what he was saying. Kashina voiced her concern, S. Sochi. Dot why? She said which Naruto looked at her before smiling ignoring the blood running down his chin. Why? It's simple I wanted to protect you. Ka san. As for the ceiling as. Ka fine. Sure you know. I am actually now connected to Kayubi. So now the shiki fuin would do its work and. Cough drag this fox into me, he said. B but how do I you know that? S ceiling. Said Minato as his along with Kashina's eyes were watering. Naruto just smiled, because I've studied the effects from the vault while you weren't looking. I was. Curious and knew this. Dot was the only ceiling I knew. Would stop. Dot the Kayubi. Dot and I know. Dot for a fact. That if the container was physically connected. To the one being sealed this would 
greatly increase the chances of the ceiling be done perfectly, he said before going into a coughing fit. Minato and Kashina were now letting the tears fall they knew of that ceiling it was the same one Kashina helped Minato with they both knew of the effects and what it does. The ceiling would summon the god of death itself Shinigami to carry on the ceiling and even though the Shinigami has immense power it would have trouble sealing one like Kayubi. That's when they realized Naruto's plan and had to smile even though their son was dying in front of them while they couldn't do anything about it Naruto showed smarts they went beyond his age. Minato let a tear fall before looking at Kashina as she didn't hold anything back as she sobbed into Naruto's shoulder. He knew if he went through with the ceiling he would most definitely die and the way Kashina was she would too from the lack of Kaiubi even with the Uzumaki's longevity she wouldn't come out of this alive, and finally his son Naruto his flesh and blood he didn't know if he would survive since the Shinigami would seal it up in the container and drag the container into its realm with himself included or would heal Naruto. But either way if they three died who would look after Mito? He wasn't stupid to leave her in Konoha's hands, but he did trust Jiraiya if things got bad and Tsunade was there too. He didn't believe in Serutobi much even if he did call the man sensei he just couldn't place that there was something underneath that old man that was dangerous. He sighed before he smiled at his son and wife before walking up to Kashina and bringing her into a hug. He looked down at Mito with eternal sadness in his eyes before looking at Naruto with so much respect for his son. Kushi Chan. Let's do it. He said, which she looked at him with a weak, defiant look before a cough interrupted her thoughts. She looked and saw Naruto looking at with pleading eyes, which broke her iron will that she was known for before she nodded as well, knowing this was the only way. Naruto smiled before he looked at his father, to san do it. Dot now. He said with a struggle as he coughed up more blood. Minato nodded quickly as he did the hand signs. As he did so Naruto looked at Kashina one more time, Ka san. Dot let me see her. Dot one more time, he said gesturing to Mito. Kashina smiled sadly as she weakly shifted Mito in her arms to uncover a sleeping redhead baby girl. Naruto smiled at her and even though he had lost all strength in his whole body he moved his bloody right hand and gently touched her sleeping face. His eyes were looking at her face solely even as his father was getting to the last signs or the fact Serutobi arrived with Kakashi and Jiraiya, or the fact his mother was watching with sad tears coming down her face. Imoudo. I don't know if you can hear me. Dot but I will say this. Oni-san doesn't have long. Dot and he wants. To say his. Peace. He said as the baby girl's eyes started to twitch. As Naruto was doing this he didn't see the once upon a time Kayubi crazed eyes glaring down on him go glazed before it blinked before looking upon the situation before its eyes shot wide open seeing Kashina's state. That's also when it felt something on its left claw it looked down to see Naruto's bloody body struck through its claw. Its eyes shot wide open even more as an emotion flickered in its eyes. If anyone would have seen it they would have seen a teardrop from the Kayubi's eye. Naruto looked and saw Mito's eyes starting to slowly open. He was shocked while internally was happy to see her eyes before he died. He knew he would die, he wasn't stupid and it made him sad he wouldn't be able to watch her grow. He cut out his musings to see violet innocent eyes staring at him curiously. He smiled sadly as he stroked her small cheek which got a small giggle from the now awake little girl. He smirked even as he was on death's door he would smile at his baby sister since she was taking her first look into the world and was kinda glad he was the first thing she saw. He continued not seeing the shocked and yet terribly sad eyes of Jiraiya, Kakashi and Serutobi. Hey. Imoudo. Welcome. To the world. This probably isn't the right thing for you to see on your first look, but at least. Dot you can see Oni-san first. Isn't that right? He said cooing the last part which got a small giggle from the little babe. Kashina watched with sad eyes at her son talk to his baby sister which to her was his last her words to her. Minato was on the last hand sign before hesitating and looking at Naruto only to get his sight he would remember forever in death. Naruto was smiling at Mito while holding her small hand in his own. He saw him talking to Mito which the little one was giggling and smiling at her Oni-san. That's when he saw the sideway glance from Naruto which was so full of determination it shocked him before nodding. Naruto then looked back at Mito and said his last words to her. Mito. I'm afraid Oni-san is going away now and. Big brother won't be able to see you grow up into a beautiful woman he knows you will. I won't be able to protect you at night like a big brother should, I'm sorry I won't be able to help you when you really need it. But know this. I will always be watching over you somewhere you should know I will always be there even when you don't. Know it. 
he said with a strong voice even as he was going very pale. He may be five years old, but he was much more mature for his age and knew this was probably be the last time he would see her. Despite the short years he trained ever since he could walk his mind would unexpectedly grow beyond his physical appearance. He only told this to his Ka San and Tu San and his best friend Itachi. God he's gonna miss him even though Itachi was the same age as him Itachi was like a little brother to him always asking for help with his shinobi duties. He just mentally hoped Itachi could get over his death. He looked at Mito who was looking at him even more now with tears starting to form in her innocent eyes. It was like she could understand what was happening instinct veli and started to cry. He smiled sadly before ing the crying baby on the forehead once more before looking at a sad Kashina. Ka san. Go ahead. Take her. Dot two san is finished. He said which she nodded before taking the little girl in her arms once more to lullaby her to help calm her down. Naruto looked back to see the shocked spectators and smiled, see ya later. Kakashi. Aero senin. Hokage sama. He said before Minato shakingly slammed his hands on the ground with his bangs covering the tears falling from his face. Shiki Fuin. Naruto smiled sadly as a flash of erupted around the family of Namikaze and the deathly silent Kyubi while a barrier separated them between the now coming shinobi from Konoha to see what the Yodam had planned. Silence. That was what greeted Naruto as he had his eyes closed. That's when he felt something. He doesn't feel pain anymore. He twitched his eyes a bit before opening them to see darkness he couldn't see anything except outlining of a ghostly aberration in the darkness in front of him. He couldn't tell what it was, but he did have a suspicion of what it was. The ghostly aberration itself was staring at Naruto's suspend form in the darkness with interest, he knew of the boy, but for some reason something about the boy just interested it to no end. And most mortal don't, have the ability to interest a being such as itself. It decided to show itself to the boy after dealing with the ceiling. Back in the Dome of Light you could see the still figures of the Namikaze family and Kyubi with Mito silent as well. That's when they all felt it. Death. An embodiment of death itself slammed on them all except Mito as to not kill the little babe. The ghostly aberration showed itself to be a white cloaked purple skinned deity. The appearance of the thing showed its spiky white hair that sticked in all directions as it flowed past its neck. There was also horns sticks out of its head and hair. It looked at them all with calculating yellow piercing eyes that showed wisdom beyond comprehension. It looked before it settled on Kyubi it frowned before looking at Minato and Kashina. That's when it linked all the dots. It looked down at Minato's haggard form who was staring at him with sadness that showed even a mortal could make a god flinch from the sadness in his eyes. He followed his gaze discreetly at Naruto's prone form with his stomach impaled by Kyubi's claw. The deity frowned before looking upon the forms of Minato and Kashina looking at it. It then started to speak, mortal. Dot why have you summoned? Me? It said even though it knew why, it still needed to know everything perfectly. Minato not looking at Naruto prone form for he was sure it would break him up inside state, Shinigami sama. Please. I beg you. Dot can you seal the Kyubi away? Into my son. He said as tears started to form in his eyes. Shinigami even itself softened its own eyes and stated. Mortal. I can't do. Such. A. Thing. Even. Though your son's chakra coils haven't fully developed yet, it would certainly kill him. Even now your son is stuck in limbo since I haven't passed judgment on the boy yet. Though we can seal it into your other child. It said gazing at the other child. This got shocked and sad reactions from the two and even Kyubi was shocked to hear what the Shinigami said. Naruto? In limbo? They looked at Naruto's prone body and Kashina burst into tears seeing his eyes dull of any life in them. Minato started shaking as he dropped to his knees with his head hung low. Kyubi looked at Naruto's prone body in sadness it had watched from within Kashina how Naruto grew up and had come to respect him and now it being the one causing Naruto to die just made it want to die. Shinigami just watched on with an impassive face not showing the hint of pity in its eyes for the mortals. Minato stopped shaking before looking into Shinigami's own eyes showing a broken man. Yes, but please. I beg you Shinigami let us talk to Mito before we join our son that's all I ask of you Shinigami-sama. He said kneeling before the being with his head on the ground. Shinigami on the outside just looked at the man while on the inside just smiled. It nodded making Minato smile in happiness thinking after this he could go see his son on the other side. He walked over to Kashina as they sat in front of Naruto with him facing them even if he couldn't actually, 
seat them he will remember the memory of what the family together one last time. The two talked to each other as Minato told Kashina of his plan of sealing part of their chakra in the seal so they could help Mito when she grew up. Kashina agreed to this before she said her last words to Mito as did Minato. Though they were surprised when Kayubi itself started to slowly wrap its tails around them all bringing them closer to each in Naruto prone form. Kashina looked into Kayubi's eyes to see sadness beyond recognition she smiled sadly knowing Kayubi was back to its true mental stability. They gathered closer to Naruto's body which instinctively moved a bit secretly shocking the Shinigami knowing the boy was still in limbo so how was his body still moving? They watched as he looked raised his head to look at them and even though his eyes were dull of life he smiled a gentle smile that radiated happiness never seen before it shined like a sun Kashina and Minato got up with Mito in Kashina's arms walked closer to him as Kayubi's tails closed in around them and hugged his body which he did his best and wrapped his LTTLE arms around them as his face was staring straight into Mito's own. This was the image Shinigami saw and right now the deity had come over its shock and was smiling at the picture even now it could feel Naruto in limbo smiling as if he was feeling what his body was doing. It then glanced at Kayubi who at the moment was tearing up as the tears fell into its fur. It frowned once more that monster Madara Uchiha did this and would be damned if it didn't hunt him down for this. It then saw the family separate just a little before they turned toward Shinigami with determined eyes knowing they were ready. It inwardly saddened it to let this happen but even it didn't have the power to break the rules her sister created when this seal was made. That's when she started the sealing. And small authors note Shinigami just like Kami will be portrayed as females in my story. Naruto who was still in the dark realm. As he called it was sitting on the floor meditating trying to remember the feeling he just got a few minutes ago. That's when he saw his family around him smiling at him and the Kyubis tailed around them protectively. He let a small tear drop from his face knowing he wouldn't see them again. And like someone was reading his mind, oh I don't know about that, said a feminine voice behind him. Naruto quickly jumped back in a defensive position only to see a ghostly figure a few feet away from him and it showed the deity Shinigami with an amused look in its eyes. Naruto just stared at the Shinigami before relaxing just a slight bit to analyze the situation and remembering who it was just glared into the eyes of Shinigami shocking her inwardly since this mortal was only 5 years old, but showed he wasn't afraid of her in this form. Naruto just glared at the specter and god of death before he spoke, I see you're here to take me into your stomach as well. Then go ahead and take me and Kayubi, he said which the Shinigami smiled before it spoke. First off you have quite the courage to stand up to me the goddess of death like that. And second let me talk in a better form this one is just for show, said Shinigami shocking Naruto before she glowed white before her form started to shrink till it was as tall as Naruto so she could look into Naruto's eyes. When the light dissipated it showed the body of a five-year-old girl with straight pitch black hair and porcelain skin that shone beautiful in limbo. Her eyes were that of the purest white she was wearing a black kimono. She had no footwear from what he could see that was before he saw her smirking at him since he did admittingly look over her body he looked away from her face a tint of pink on his face. This action only amused the girl before him even more since he heard a heavenly chuckle from her which made his heart warm a little it sounded so much like a melody his Ka San would sing to him when he was little. He regained himself and looked back at her only to see himself inches from the girl's face. He blushed before taking a step back this only made her smile as she spoke you know. Up close you're kinda cute, she said admitting the honest truth he was only five years old, but in the academy he was one of the most wanted boys in the academy. He was growing up fast since his face was getting more angular from all the training he did. He recomposed himself and stared at her with curious eyes. You um. Aren't you Shinigami? I mean seriously too San finished the ceiling shouldn't I be with him in your. I don't know, pointing to his stomach which got a laugh from her. Kami. Her laugh itself was like a melody. Shinigami shook her head before looking at Naruto, the boy just interested her greatly even now knowing she was the Shinigami goddess over death and he seemed to totally unfazed by this, it made her interest him him go up higher each time he spoke. But then she remembered the situation at hand and frowned. Naruto, she said in a stern voice which shook the boy and made him realize she was now serious so his eyes hardened since he knew there was a time to goof off and a time to be serious when the situation called for it. This action made Shinigami even more interested in Naruto now, she couldn't wait to tell Kami-chan about this one. She cleared her throat before speaking, Naruto. 
I know everything that has happened since Kayubi attacked Konoha and I have to say watching you sacrifice your life for your mother like that even at your age is surprising. Most children would have stayed rooted in the spot yet you threw yourself in harm's way to save someone precious to you. That is a very admirable thing to do Naruto. She said with warmth in her voice. Naruto just looked down smiling sadly figuring it was his last act of ever seeing his family again. Shinigami saw this and continued, unfortunately things went bad. Your plan from what I can see backfired. Dot you died before the ceiling could complete itself. And we had to choose another container and the only one at the time that could Kayubi was none other that, she said and that's when she stopped seeing the recognition in Naruto's eyes. Naruto's eyes were wide in terror figuring his plan would have succeeded, but hearing what happened made him hate himself he wasn't strong enough to last a bit longer. He thought about what he could do before he snapped his eyes open and raised his head to stare Shinigami in the eye. This action made her flitch in his eyes showed determination beyond anything she had ever seen not one mortal ever had those eyes before not in history no one came close to these eyes. These eyes. Both scared her and intrigued her for some reason. First she was scared for those that fought against him when his eyes were like that and too. It excited her to see a mortal. Make her. A goddess flinch. Oh yes she was now fascinated with this one. She then continued despite Naruto's growing aura of that glowed a light blue color. Also I hate to inform you, but. Your father and mother. Weren't able to survive the ceiling since you know of the price of summoning me to your realm. And your mother the wounds she suffered and the terrible pain of having Kayubi ripped out of her made her go over the edge. I was able to stop time in the barrier which separated all of them and Kayubi from the outside world. She said but was cut off when she felt it. Naruto's aura started rising after each word was spoken and when she said his parents were his dead, his aura skyrocketed startling Shinigami. Her eyes were wide open in shock she now saw Naruto glowing figure shrouded by the waves upon waves of the blue spiritual energy. She then hesitantly looked and saw his dyes they now glowed with an unearthly white outlining the pupil. Naruto couldn't believe it, but hearing it from the goddess herself made Naruto snap. His little sister. She would be all alone in the cursed shinobi world. The world he knew that had too much violence and greedy humans. A world he knew would hurt her. That's when he made a decision that would change the shinobi world forever and make the heavens and hell itself shift. He glared at the shocked goddess of death. Take. Me. Back, he said with an unearthly wind blew through him and passed Shinigami ruffling her hair and kimono. But this didn't phase what did was that his Ryatsu was growing much larger than any mortals should even for a Hokage this was too much. She heard his words and was about to disagree when she stopped seeing his eyes and saw he wouldn't take a no for an answer and somehow in the deepest reaches of her body she felt that she needed to say yes. That's when something hit her, his Ryatsu was beyond that of any mortal she had ever seen, he had courage and the guts to go up against anyone despite it being human, demon or god he wouldn't stop. And the last thing she took in personally was that he would protect his precious people till his dying breath and then some. That's when she decided on what she wanted to do and knew she would get a tongue lashing from her sister, but even Kami would agree when she sees Naruto later on. Shinigami looks into Naruto's bright blue glowing eyes hiding her anxiety from seeing such eyes and spoke. Then if that is what you want then I need to ask, she said with an edge at the end of her voice. She glared back into his eyes. Are you willing to sacrifice your humanity to gain your life back? If you choose to do so then you will be brought back, but with the knowledge of you being my avatar in the living world. Will you do this? She said with a serious tone in her voice. This was a decision she actually wanted him to accept. For some reason imagining him being her avatar sent chills down her spine. Naruto was inwardly shocked at her deal and thought about. Sacrificing his humanity to come back to life. Being her avatar in the living world. That meant he would have the powers of a. Shinigami? He then remembered his baby sister's face and decided with no hesitation, hell yes. I would do anything to protect what family I have left be damned if I am a human or whatever the hell I am. I will still protect my precious people and nothing will stand in my way of that, he said with his Ryatsu flaring even higher at that point. Shinigami smiled at this before appearing in front of Naruto surprising him before she raised his face with both hands. Then. Receive thee of the Shinigami, she said and before he could interrupt she captured his with her own. This made sparks run down Naruto's spine since this was his first and despite his age he was always curious about his first time. So with a little hesitation he ed back earning a small moan of surprise from the goddess. 
He instinctively wrapped his arms around her small frame and leaned in a bit more. This went on a bit more before Naruto body flashed white. When it dissipated it showed Naruto wearing a different attire, he now wore a white shitagi underneath the black kosot. Below this he wore a white hakama himo underneath the black hakama. The last thing was that he wore a white sash around his waist and on his feet replacing his once upon a time shinobi sandals were white tabi as his footwear were waraji. Finishing off the look was a giant sword on his back that just oozed Ryatsu. At the moment the goddess of death was still getting out of her little daze until Naruto flashed and that's when she opened her eyes to see Naruto's transformation. And to say she was shocked was an understatement. Never before did she think Naruto would become something like this. For she was seeing a ghostly image of a mask on his face. She shook herself as she looked at her now avatar to the real world and she honestly couldn't be happier of who she had chosen. Naruto blinked before looking at himself and saw his different attire before shrugging it wasn't important at the moment. He looked back up to see the goddess looking at his form in shock before recomposing herself. Well, now that you have become my avatar there are some things you need to know, though I'm pretty sure you'll get to know most of what you are later on. All I have to say is that you truly only answer to me and no one else even your Hokage. No one is your true leader except for myself. And when I call for you it is either that I need a soul taken when I am too busy to do so. Also there will be times when I have to call upon you to get rid of people tampering in Kami or my territories. Do you understand? She said which Naruto nodded already having knowledge of what he is going through his mind. She smiled before bringing him into a hug this shocked him before he embracing the warmth. Now it's time for you to go, but before you do. My name isn't Shinigami, it's actually. She said hesitantly for no mortal knew her name and this would be the first one to ever know, besides Kami. Naruto looked at her curiously until she looked back at him and said, My name is. Megami, she uttered. He just blinked before smiling. That's a wonderful name, Megami. Dot has a nice ring to it, he said before he remembered the happenings in the living world and all sense of playfulness erased from his body. Megami blushed at his compliment, before seeing the change in his demeanor. Naruto had to go back to the living world fast. I guess it's time for you to go for now. But remember the abilities of being my avatar will come to you in time I promise, but for now you have to go back, she said with a hint of sadness in her voice. Naruto just stiffly nodded and with that Megami snapped her finger and a flash of light erupted from the darkness. As he closed in on them Naruto smiled at Megami surprising her a bit. Megami-sama. Will you do me a favor and tell my parents? Imo Udo-chan will be protected. He said which she smiled before nodding and with that the light covered them both. As it did so Naruto swore he heard a faint voice from Megami saying. Goodbye for now. My avatar soon will we see each other again and honestly I can't wait for that to happen. He smiled before he accepted the light bringing him back to his world. So this way he can still protect what family he has left in the world. In the living world outside the barrier was half the Anbu the Hokage, with Kakashi and Jiraiya. They had all watched as Minato do some kind of seal before this barrier had erupted some had tried to destroy it using every jutsu they knew. But nothing had worked so they decided to wait for it to finish though they were very worried for Naruto when they saw him impaled on Kayubi's claw before they vanished in the light. That's when they heard a crack and they looked up to see a barrier cracking before more cracks appeared Befpri shattering and a blinding white light erupting from inside blinding them all from what could be seen. When it died down they had looked up to see a sight that would forever be in everyone's mind that day. Naruto was there dressed in his normal attire holding onto his baby sister as he sat between his parents who were holding onto each other smiling. Naruto was standing between their bodies with his sister held tightly against himself with his head held down his bangs covering his eyes. When he looked up he looked at the now shocked spectators his once blue eyes were now glowing with a supernatural blue that some took a step back. While some who were friends with Naruto namely some of the Anbu and Kakashi and Jiraiya were gobsmacked and were wondering what happened. Serutobi though was the first one to get over his shock first before taking the situation at hand and saw how his predecessor was dead along with his wife leaving behind their now alive son and newborn daughter. He looked at Naruto and from the time he seen the kid graduate at the age that was unnatural from the little time he was on his team never once had he seen his eyes like they were he was honest with himself those eyes scared him for some reason. Naruto looked down at his parents' bodies and smiled sadly before looking his baby sister and smiling warmly at her sleeping face he looked at the ceiling on her belly glowing red and mentally nodded he saw the only influence from the ceiling was the whisker marks on her face. 
He bent his head just a little bit in her forehead once more and whispered his words that somehow echoed around the area. Don't worry Imauto chan Oni-san is here for you and he's gonna protect you from anyone and anything. Even if he has to face the devil itself, he whispered which somehow got a small smile from the red-headed babe. He looked down at his parents' bodies and took out two storage scrolls he was gonna have them buried where they wanted. He wasn't about to let the council or even Serutobi decide this only him. He sealed them into the scrolls and pocketed them into a pouch. He looked back at the spectators and walked over to them. As he did so he ignored the astonished looks he was getting or the suspicious glares aimed at his sister when one did he would glare back making them freeze in their tracks. He walked right up to Serutobi and looked him right in the eye. Hokage-sama, I'm sure you already know what's happened as do you Jiraiya-san, but right now I don't care what you do cause right now I have a little sister to take care of. He said and before they could stop him he jumped back into the woods heading for the Namikaze compound. He knew what he just did would be called into question and there was also gonna be a council meeting for what happened and him being called in. Well he didn't care at the moment what he did care about was protecting his baby sister. He knew for a five-year-old taking care of a child would be hard, but he wouldn't give and he wouldn't let others take care of her since he didn't trust most except for a select few. Hell he didn't trust Kakashi or Jiraiya, they might be family friends it was just something about them told him not to trust them completely. And Serutobi. He didn't trust that man at all. He knew he would take after the village more than a Hokage's family and would try to announce something to the public to quell down their questions, if it did come to that. Hell hath no fury like a brother's wrath for not even Kami would stop him from unleashing his rage upon those that would try to hurt his sister. When Naruto reached the compound he entered in before activating the security seals around the compound and area to not let anyone in. He then went to his now sister's room that was beside his own and saw everything in order from the little crib with plush toys to oddly enough an orange colored fox as well. Then the diapers to the blankets. He remembered his Ka San buying food for when she was hungry and storing them in the kitchen. He looked at his sister seeing her sleeping he smiled before sitting in the rocking chair and laying Mito on his chest letting her sleep he then covered them up with a blanket and he started letting himself fall asleep. He would be doing this a lot to be sure she was safe. Megami who was watching through the mirror looked at her side and saw the parents of the two smiling warmly at the scene. She smiled as well before she started to explain why they were here. With that, the legacy of Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki, Mito Uzumaki Namikaze and the avatar of the goddess of death Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze began. Next day we find Naruto waking up to look down seeing a little snoring babe. He smiled before picking her up and going down to the kitchen. To get her something to eat, that's when he heard knocking he heard it coming from the front door and as he walked over to it he discreetly pulled out a kanai to make sure it wasn't an enemy. He opened the door to see his panting longtime friend Itachi Uchiha. He smiled this was probably the only person he truly trusted in Konoha though he frowned when he saw the worried look on his friend's face. Itachi who was panting to get here as fast as he could looked up to see his best friend looking at him with curiosity and confusion. He needed to hurry before the personal anbu of the Hokage came that's when he saw the bundle in his arms and he remembered his mother saying something about Kashina having another child. He smiled despite the situation coming at hand. He shook his head before looking at Naruto again. Naruto ni san. Hurry you need to get to the council chambers they have ordered the Hokage's personal guard to come get you I got here as fast as I could before them. He said which Naruto frowned at before looking at his sister then he looked at Itachi with the same eyes he had the night before. This froze Itachi in place his surrogate brother was staring at him with eyes he had never seen before they looked like they were the eyes of a warrior someone who would travel through the nine levels of hell and back to protect his precious people. Naruto saw Itachi's look but ignored it for more important matters. I knew this would happen. Itachi do me a favor. Hold Mito and stay in this house till I come back I personally don't trust anyone except you with her so please keep her safe inside the house, okay? He said holding Mito to Itachi. Said Uchiha air hesitated before holding on to Mito he looked down and immediately smiled seeing her sleeping face. As for myself I'm going to have a talk with the council, and also Itachi if she gets hungry the food is in the kitchen in the pantry, I'll be back alright. He said which Itachi nodded at since he knew from experience taking care of his little brother Sasuke. Naruto smiled before jumping through the forest to get this meeting over with. That's when he met up with the Anbu guards the personal guardians of the Hokage. He frowned before he saw the leader coming up to him, 
Naruto-san you have been requested at the council chambers by the Hokage to discuss of what happened during the Kyubi attack last night, he said. Naruto nodded before heading his way with the Anbu following him. When they were passing through Konoha he saw the destruction Kyubi had left in its wake and the people who were rebuilding. When some saw him they were whispering to each other before getting back to work. Naruto just ignored them he didn't really care of what they had to say he honestly didn't care for Konoha in general only the people that were his friends. That's when they stopped at the Hokage Tower once inside they lead him to the chambers. He could hear actually feel the feeling of nervousness coming from a few people that were staring at him as they walked to the doors. He frowned it was like he was walking to his execution. Once at the doors he was getting irritated and before the Anbu could open the door he did it himself. The way his Ka San used to. Kicking them open making a bang. Echo around the chambers silencing the arguing that was happening. The whole council and Hokage included looked to see Naruto with a twitching eyebrow with a nervous Anbu squad behind them. What is it you have called me here for? He said with a edge to his voice which made a few raise an eyebrow at. Serutobi quickly cleared his throat before someone took offense to what Naruto just said. He looked at Naruto, nothing Naruto-kun, only to find out what happened at the Kyubi attack and I'd suggest you don't lie. We need to know the truth, he said. This made Naruto physically scowl remembering the event. He then mentally decided to do this only to get the council off his back on the topic. He explained everything except of his business with the goddess of death. How she was used at the container of the ceiling of Kyubi this got many scowls from the civil inside. He ended it there when he took Mito away from the area so Serutobi could clean up the area. After his explanation the civil inside erupted. We have to kill the demon while it's weak. The seal is sure to break soon we have the chance to end Kyubi now. The Kyubi is weakened we have the chance to end it once and for all. Screeched a pink-haired woman. Naruto was trembling with anger as the few clan heads that were friends with Minato and Kashina knew of their skills in sealing and knew that there was no way of that seal breaking. Uchiha Fugaku though was frowning as he looked at Naruto, the boy himself was best friends with his genius son Itachi and knew that there was something he wasn't gonna tell them. Serutobi schooled his features as the civilians kept complaining, but that stopped when he saw Naruto trembling his eyes widened when he saw a little glance in his eye. The shinobi council that was Serutobi's old teammates Kaharu, Homura and Shimura Danzo were neutral on what to think actually as they had glances at each other. Naruto had enough of the death threats and spite against his sister so he raised his head, snapped his eyes open which changed from the sapphire blue they were to the white of his eyes being pure black and the pupil being a golden yellow and practically roared. If you motheres don't shut your mouth this instant so help Kami, I won't stop myself from killing every single piece of shit civilin in here. Do you understand me? He yelled as his chakra actually exploded around him making a crater where he stood while the windows shattered as well. The walls and ceiling as well started to creak and crack from his unleashed chakra. The civilians practically fell down gasping for breath while the clan heads, were looking at Naruto in shock. Well Sume was sporting a devilish grin. Yep Naruto was definitely Kashina and Minato's son. Serutobi was staring at Naruto in utter shock. To threaten the civilians like that he hasn't seen except from Kashina or Minato when they were pissed and from the brief glance he saw in Naruto's eyes he knew it would happen again if they crossed the line with him. The Anbu that were close to Naruto were blowed back a few feet as well. When the chakra pressure had cooled down a bit Naruto snapped open his eyes glaring at the civilians making them go pale. If I ever hear you say that again, I hold my promise and kill you without a shred of remorse. That goes for every single person in here, he said pointing to everyone. Mito Uzumaki Namikaze is my baby sister and despite me only being 5 years old I will fight to the death to protect her from the enemies outside of Konoha and the ones on the inside that includes those that would try to hurt her physically or mentally they will die by my hand and you Hokage-sama won't stop me either, he said making Saruobi go wide-eyed as well as the rest of the council. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Just threatened the governing body of Konoha with death if they tried to hurt his baby sister in any way. Civilians were either red in the face pissed at how this boy threatened them. With death if they tried to in their minds kill the demon, or they were pale thinking he was speaking the truth. The clan's heads even Fugaku were doing their best to hold back a smirk. Naruto definitely shut them up with that threat. Naruto turned toward Serutobi and spoke, if that is all Hokage-sama I have to go take care of my sister at the moment. He said before he started walking back to the doors, 
Sarutobi snapped out of his shock before speaking. Wait. We aren't finished here yet Naruto-kun. I have decided to announce to the public about Mito's status as a Jinchuriki only for them be put under a law that will sign fee they speak of it to the younger generation they will be put to death. He said speaking the truth since he had planned on this to happen just in case. The civilians looked at Serutobi like he was an idiot for saying they should be punished only to get a warning glance from the man which shut them up quickly. Naruto on the outside was impassive, but on the inside he was furious with Serutobi for what he was doing he was practically announcing to the public his baby sister was a big target to them. He balled up his fists which started making his knuckles turn white and blood dripping from his hand. He looked over his shoulder at Serutobi and glared at him. Very well, but be warned Serutobi. This got gasps from everyone he disrespected the Hokage. Even if they mumble a single insult or try anything they will die no matter what you say this is clan business at the moment and they try to hurt or kill an heir of our clan and if they try anything not even you will stop me from killing anyone that tries it be damned them civilians or clan members anyone that tries will meet their end by myself. He said before walking out the door ignoring the gawking from the whole entire council. Soon though it was now Grin Naruto was now appointed as the first person in her book to shut up the council, threaten the Hokage and now threaten clan heads as well. Oh yes, Naruto was definitely Kashina's son. And the years went on like normal except Naruto had buried his parents in the field of their clan home, marking it with a tombstone with the Namikaze and Uzumaki symbol. It stated, here lies two of the most well-loved people in Konoha. Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze mother and father of two. These two were powerful in their right stronger than anyone of their generation and above. Though they died fighting the Kayubi, they still died with a smile on their face. They will be missed by all, but much more by the children they protected. Over the years also after the announcement was made the villagers were like Naruto predicted hateful and tried everything, but they only ended up getting killed by Naruto or arrested before he got to them. Sometimes it was a match between himself and the Hokage as to who would get to them first. Also as he took care of Mito he had to sped up his training to go on missions to help take care of himself and Mito. So with astonishable speed he sped through the ranks of the shinobi making chunin at the age of 7 junin at the age of 9 and shockingly and with the respect of the whole Anbu. Anbu captain commander at the age of 13 something that shocked everyone. But his best friend Itachi has also grown and rose through the ranks and became Anbu captain at the age of 13. They both were respected in Konoha and prodigies never seen in a century. Over the years Naruto had made friends with plenty of people from the Inazuka clan Erhana, also with Yugao Azuki, Kurenai Yuhi and Anko Midarashi. Jiraiya over the years had come to visit them and the first time he came he was given a decision from Naruto on who he would help more if the time came to it. Him and Mito or Serutobi, it took a while, but Jiraiya had gotten Naruto's full respect and trust when he bowed his head saying he would help them when the time came. Naruto had also visited Itachi during the years with Mito and was accepted by some in the Uchiha clan especially by Makoto and Little Sasuke. Fugaku though was shrewd to Naruto and would at chances glare at the little Mito. Mito over the years she had grown up like a little Kashina she was quite the tomboy and had the fiery attitude Kashina had. Though when she trained she excelled in Kenjutsu, Taijutsu and surprisingly Fuinjutsu. Although when she had trouble her Oni-san would help her when she needed it. That was something else she completely adored her big brother he was her hero the one who protected her told her stories of her parents held her when she cried after hearing what was sealed inside her. She was told by him since he didn't want others to mix up the words to make her think differently. He was there to help her when she needed it. She looked up to Naruto and trained to be like him. Naruto though raised her to be who she wanted to be he couldn't break her of the habit of playing pranks something he found very enjoyable. He himself of the years had grown beyond what others knew ever since that night with the Kyubi attack and him meeting Megami. He had received information a week later about his role in Abolites as her avatar and when he learned that they had different Abolites he pushed himself even farther to master them. Though he did this in secret no one knew of this not even Itachi knew though the man suspected something. Naruto overall was strong stronger than anyone ever knew as a shinobi he was holding quite a bit back from everyone even the Hokage who he at the moment was starting to hate as the years went by. He was always training when he had the time using cage bushes when he could not many to make him get chakra exhaustion but still many. At the moment he was a fuijutsu master, ninjutsu expert. He was fluent in taijutsu matching guy himself. 
In Kenjutsu he was unmatched by everyone he could wield a katana masterfully like he had done it his whole life. Secretly he had read the notes on his father's Horaishin no Jutsu and decided he would make that a type of ninjutsu class called Jiken Kuken he had secretly made a few jutsu if the situation called for it. But at the moment he hasn't showed it to anyone. He also learned one technique he took great pleasure in. It was called Hoho or Shunpo it was something needed with spiritual energy. It was a speed movement skill that increased his speed beyond measures. Though when he mastered it he never stopped training to get him even faster than before. He could honestly say if he told anyone of his true status that he was as fast as his father when he used the Horaishin no Jutsu. Though he was proficient to him anyway as a shinobi, he quite immersed himself in being Megami's avatar and through the years he meditated and finally met his Zanpakuto spirit and when he did he was shocked to see a young teen around his age wearing a black cloak with tiered ends at the bottom. The man had introduced himself as his inner spirit and Naruto couldn't have been happier the guy reminded him of himself when he was doing a mission. Over the years he learned that the teen's name was Zanjetsu. That day also sparked when his weapon he received at becoming Megami's avatar changed forever. It changed into a giant cleaver that was as tall as he was and grew as he did. The sharpened end was white with the blunt end black as night. The handle had no guard and had what looked like medical tape wrapped around it leaving behind a long flowing end of it when he unveiled it. His Zanpakuto had told him that it was called Shikai a form that manifested what his spirit was. He also learned techniques called Kido. They were like ninjutsu and fuinjutsu, but so much different than the others. He had learned that you concentrate your spiritual energy and speak the incantation instead of doing hand signs like ninjutsu. Over the years he had practiced and mastered a few that were ranked from 1 to 80 on all classes. Ranging from Bakudo, and Hado. He learned that one was for sealing or stopping one target or multiple and the other was like the other except it was more of the offensive spells. He heard of Mito mentioning something about Kayubi and he was shocked to hear that Kayubi said she was sorry. And from what Mito had told him of what LTTLE she could she said Kayubi was sorry for what she had done and explained all that happened. He decided on that day Madara Uchiha was his prime target. Also during his duties in raising Mito he made himself a reputation among Konoha as the demon's guardian, though he didn't care what they said he brought the title up full blast when he crucified a villager to the wall in Konoha Square for punching Mito. After that incident he was looked at with fear and anger at the same time knowing if they tried to get to Mito they would die by his hand alone. As the captain commander of the Anbu Corps he was respected beyond anything with them and that with his position he never showed his face or identity to enemy villages. Though that didn't mean he doesn't have enemies in Konoha as well. The first was the villagers in Konoha, they always tried to hurt Mito and he would stop and kill those that even tried. Those that did land a hit on her was tortured with a genjutsu of them watching as Naruto killed their family before killing them when they're physically and mentally broken. Another enemy was the council after the council meeting all those years ago he had made an enemy of the Sibylanes and the respect and protection of the Inazuka, Aburame, Nara, Yamanaka and Akamaiki. Fugaku though was neutral to him as well was Hiyashi for reasons unknown. The elders were always pushing for Mito to be made as a weapon or executed or made as a breeding stock when she was old enough. This made Naruto unleash chakra slamming them into the ground and ripping off one of their limbs to make the point across if they tried he was watching. And lastly was Hiruzen the man was always trying to take Mito away from him claiming he was too young to raise the child, well he proved him wrong after all these years and with the protection of over half the clan heads he was protected from the Hokage's attempts. He knew what the man was trying to do. He was trying to have her either live on the streets or live in his clan compound to separate her from him and make her loyal only to Konoha and trained as a weapon for only Serutobi. He stopped that Emi daily with the fire Damio's presence and since the man was a long-time friend of Minato he was willing to help out. At the moment we find Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze walking down the road to the academy to pick up his now eight-year-old sister from the academy. As he passed through the streets he ignored the glares from the men or lust-filled looks from the women. That's right, Naruto was getting those looks it seems from him being the last male of his clan and added with his look he was one of the most wanted men in Konoha. At the moment the Namikaze had grown to 5 feet 7 and wore his normal attire of black shinobi sandals black junin pants and a long-sleeved black shirt. Over this was a anbu chestplate with two pouches on his right and left thigh. One for shuriken, 
Kanai, Sunbo and Ninja Wire. The other was for storage scrolls and customized seal tags. He was wearing metal-plated fingerless gloves as well as a Konoha headband tied around his waist like a belt. He had a Anbu standard ninjutsu on his back as well as his kitsune mask on the side of his face showing himself to the public. The mask was Mito's idea and he did it for her and plus it really scared the populace when they saw it. Over all this was a black trench coat with the Uzumaki and Namikaze symbol of the back as well as, Anbu Kayaputan Komanda, Anbu Captain Commander, in kanji. As he walked the people went around him since his aura just screamed danger to those that pissed him off. When he reached the academy he frowned seeing Mito sitting on a swing being glared at by the Sibylane families. Some were scowling at her while some were spouting insults at her. His blood began to boil before walking to his sister. As he did so the hidden Anbu who just arrived as the personal bodyguards for commander mentally gulped and knew their commander wasn't gonna show pity to those villagers even if children were with them. When Naruto was behind the families he raised his hand and grabbed one Sibylane's head and with surprising strength lifted the man who was one of the few spouting insults at his sister and actually threw him into a wall making it crack and cave in. After he did this he ignored the frightened looks he was getting from the children or horrified looks from the adults and walked up to Mito as the crowd made way for him. When that was done he walked up to the sad Mito who had her head hung low with her red hair covering her eyes. Naruto saw the tears falling down her face before he got on his knees and spoke, Hey there Mito-chan, ready to go home. He said. Mito went rigid she knew that voice she snapped her head up to see Naruto smiling at her warmly as the tears fell from her face. Naruto ni san, she yelled before jumping onto his chest hugging him. He smiled while patting her head as he did so he looked back at the glaring crowd and released a burst of his key shutting them up. He then looked back at Mito and sees her looking at him with cheerful violet eyes. He smiled before speaking, well ready to go home Mito-chan, he said. Yeah, but first can we go to Ichiraku, I'm hungry and I wanna see old man Toichi and Ayame ne san. She said which he smiled again those two were probably the only Sibylanes that respected two sans wish and helped her when he wasn't around. Sure let's go, he said before putting her on his shoulder and walking out of the Shinobi Academy fields. As he did so he looked on ahead thinking on what his latest mission had detailed. It seemed Iwa was getting restless since they found out Minato and Kashina, two of the most hated people in Iowa had children and since they didn't know of his status as captain commander and heard of Mito they were trying anything to kill her. Even risking war. He scowled as his eyes flashed a bright blue that wasn't gonna happen anytime soon as long as he was alive. He looked up at a grinning Mito and smiled his sister was his light if he had to say, she was the thing that kept him from obliterating Konoha from the ground it sits on. If it wasn't for her, Itachi, Yugao and some of his friends he would have done it and slaughtered most of Konoha's population. Hey Mito-chan wanna go see Itachi and his family later on. He said which her eyes snapped wide and grinned before jumping on his shoulder. Yeah, yeah let's go I wanna see Itachi ni again, she said. Naruto smirked before walking ahead not knowing the future was going to be full of strife for him and Mito. Two years later, it's been two years and things have went great for Naruto and Mito. The two along with Naruto's friends have been able to keep the council and villagers off his back because of Mito. Though Serutobi was getting desperate and would often challenge him in clan laws on ways to adopt a child from an unfit parent. Naruto always countered by saying he has raised Mito and she turned out great and wouldn't let him turn her into tool for him to use and discard. Though their training along with Itachi's went great. Mito with the help of her brother was at high genin level alone with the studies and training she had done. She was intermediate in Fuinjutsu, Lo Chunin in Ninjutsu, Genjutsu was non-existent except to be able to dispel all with the help from Kayubi. Her Taijutsu with the help of her brother was Hai Chunin and with her mother's sword and help from Naruto she was Hai Chunin to Lo Junin in Kenjutsu. Overall she was quite the skilled shinobi, though she never stopped thanking Naruto whenever he helped her train. Itachi was someone Naruto was positive he could call a brother. The teen was to him a little broder looking for ways to either get out of situations without violence or ending it quick. He helped Itachi get stronger for the past two years and even before that. He helped Itachi get stronger to be one of the most powerful shinobi in Konoha. Naruto himself though hadn't changed all that much except for being a 15 year old he could beat Serutobi now even if the man was in his prime he wouldn't stand a chance, 
no one knew Naruto's true power except Zanjetsu. Though Itachi always suspected something, his skills as a shinobi have only went up more since the last two years being the captain commander of the Anbu Corps. His skills in ninjutsu were extraordinary, Fuinjutsu he had passed his father in the art and was on par and close to passing his mother's level as well. Taijutsu was something he added with his Kenjutsu with him always doing physical exercises that would make guys say it was crazy to do made him past guys level and beyond. Kenjutsu was something he took pride in and could honestly say the seven swordsmen couldn't hold a candle to him. His speed added with the power of each swing was uncatchable and looked nothing except a blur. His skills as a Shinigami have skyrocketed though as he grew up over the last two years. His talking with Zanjetsu and training in the art of Kido had done wonders. He had grew more attached to the Zanpakuto like it was his arm he was swinging instead. And with Kido he had mastered 81 to 99 though the latest ones on both Bakudo and Hado still needed a bit more practice. He had also created a way of healing with Kido, but needed no incantations. Just concentrated spiritual energy. His speed though with Hoho -Ho had went past even Zanjetsu's expectations he was nigh uncatchable in that aspect no one was as fast as he was. Though no one has seen his true power yet anyway. Although his greatest achievement was raising to the next level of his Zanpakuto something called Bankai, Zanjetsu had said was only done before by Megami herself. He was quite proud he achieved the next level though it was hard to control at first but he had done it and had to say Bankai was only gonna be a last resort when he needed it. Though even if he was stronger than anyone even truly knew he wasn't arrogant and flaunted his abilities. He was cool-headed, and emotionally balanced to handle any situation that called for it. Though there was a share of problems as well. First off Konoha's Sibylane populace was getting more brave to actually try and ATTCK him head-on with a few shinobi as well thinking they had him outnumbered. They were wrong and paid the price. He made an example out of them and showed their mutilated corpse that if they tried it again he would do something far worse than this. That shut them up only for them to come back a week later in bigger numbers. Also Iwa was getting much more desperate and it showed when they sent an assassin to kill Naruto and Mito. When this happened and Naruto stopped and killed the assassin, he had placed the body in a box and written a message to the Suchikage that if he tried again he would be starting something he would regret later on. This didn't deter the Iwa cage it actually made him try harder and harder than before. It was putting the strain of war breaking out once more. There was also another problem, but it was within his own mind there was something trying to get out and he didn't know what it was and he had asked Zanjetsu only to get a silent, I don't know myself. This kind of freaked him out but didn't stop him from his life. Though everything changed when the day came when the Tsuchikage declared war on Konoha. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, shinobi of Konoha, avatar to Megami goddess of death and Anbu Kayapudan Komanda was standing around his personal squad the ones he had grew up with and trained with. Each were strong in their own right, and right now they were having a meeting about the declaration of war with Konoha all because of a grudge from IWA. First one to speak was Nako aka Yugao Azuki, Naruto Komanda sir what are we to do with the situation at hand? War has been declared by Iwa and we personally don't have the resources for another war, she said. Weasel aka Itachi Uchiha and Naruto's best friend nodded, that's true sir, after the third shinobi war and Kayubi's attack we just don't have the shinobi to win this war. I know we've pulled through and through in history through all three wars, but this time it's different we are limited to shinobi and resources. It would personally take a miracle to win this war sir, he said in a monotone voice. Inu aka Hana Inazuka hung her head, yeah, and it's even worse with half of Konoha calling for a trade with you and Mito-chan to stop the upcoming war, she said as a tear fell from her face. She Yugao turned their attention to Mito who was sleeping on the couch. Naruto were now as cold as ice and the temperature in the room dropped a few degrees. The others tensed up as they saw their leader's gaze. Let them try and trade us because just like Iwa, those fools in Konoha will suffer for their insolence. He stood up with his battle gear ready, and formed the Hokage that I'll be going to Iwa's borders to deal with the invading force myself, he said getting shocked looks from them all. Wa what, Naruto senpai, master, you can't be serious, said Yugao. We know you're strong Naruto, but to face a battalion alone of Chunin and elite Junin would even be tough for the Hokage to deal with, 
and you're saying you are gonna go face three battalions alone. Hannah protested not wanting her friend to go in something like that alone. Naruto smirked and tightened his gloves. You forget Hannah-chan, that my father was capable of such a feat and lastly, he said with his eyes narrowed. Don't compare me to that old fool. He is nowhere even close to my level and I'm stronger than I look. He stated and they still looked skeptic until Itachi spoke up. Senpei is right. He alone can deal with the invading force without any help, he said with a small smile on his face. Besides, even when I fight him, he never revealed all of his skills and plus he isn't the Anbu captain commander for nothing. B but what about Mito-chan? With you gone and us being on guard, she'll be defenseless, Hannah asked. It's already being taken care of, he said and that was when a puff of smoke exploded into the room and the others jumped to their feet with their blades ready, until it cleared revealing a grinning Jiraiya. Fear not younglings because your savior the gallant Jiraiya is here too. Bam, thud, an annoyed Naruto gave the man a brain duster to the skull and sending him face first into the ground, causing his subordinates to sweat drop. Now's not the time Aero Kaiofu, Naruto said in an annoyed tone. Said Senen got up rubbing the back of his head, glaring at his godson. Mito sat up stirring in her sleep and slowly opened her eyes to see her godfather and her eyes lit up. Before Jiraiya could make an retort at his student's son, a red blur glomped his leg made him stumble back a little. He looked down and saw Mito look up at him with a grin on her face. He grinned back and picked her up. Well if it isn't my favorite godchild Mito-chan, he said and tickled her sides, making her giggle. Naruto smiled at this. Despite being a pervet to women, he loved Mito to death and always tried to spoil her when Naruto wasn't around. Guess what? Me and you are going on a little field trip while your brother deals with those bakas from Iowa, he said making her eyes light up. As for you Naruto be careful out there because I'll drag you out of limbo and beat the crap out of you if you leave your Imaudo here all alone, he said in a serious tone. Naruto just snorted before walking over to his Kaiofu and Mito when he looked at Mito he saw her worried eyes and smiled, he put a hand on her head and ruffled her hair making her pout cutely as he spoke, that's not gonna happen Kaiofu I wouldn't even dream of leaving her alone and especially with a pervert like you, he said with a teasing grin. Jiraiya just glared at his godson before smiling and patting him on the back. Naruto just nodded at him before looking once more at Mito, I'll see you later Mito-chan, be good for Aero Kaiofu now you hear. He said which she just smiled though he could see in her eyes that she was planning something. Of course Nisan I wouldn't dare, she said with a oh so innocent tone, Naruto just grinned before Ingi forehead making a tint of pink appear on her face. Kayubi within Mito's seal watched on and grinned, oh, is little Mito-chan feeling embraced that her big, strong brother ed her? Kayubi said, this made Mito blush bright red. And no, it isn't like that, Mito said, but she could still hear Kayubi's snickering. Then, I'll see you later then, he looked at Jiraiya and nodded the man nodded as well before vanishing in a puff of smoke. Naruto then looked at his squad and gave out his order, all right then you know your orders, move out. He said, hi, they saluted before dispersing, Kami's realm. Within the realm of Kami was two figs watching through a glowing screen of the happening in the elemental countries. These two figures were both female from the curves you could see in the female features they had. The first was Megami goddess of death, she had changed her body to that of a 16-year-old woman. She was wearing the same kimono from when she first met Naruto, but it hugged her perfect hourglass figure and didn't leave anything to imagine. Her s were a perky C cup and the kimono showed a bit of cleavage. The other was Kami goddess of life and sister to Megami she had pale porcelain skin like her sister but had low flowing silver hair with glowing golden eyes that radiated power and wisdom. She was wear the exact opposite of her sister, but no footwear. She wore a white kimono hugging her figure as well exposing her perfectly round and perky s. Kami at the moment was watching her sister's avatar heading to war. She had at first heatedly disagreed with her sister on giving a human her blessing, since the last time they did that it only threw the world it is now into chaos. But that was squashed down as she watched the boy no man grow up and train to get stronger and she like her sister was at fist perplexed and interested in Naruto. She and Megami though frowned when they saw him heading off to war, though they knew this would happen sooner or later. Alt out she and her sister secretly wanted to see what Naruto was capable of. 
Iwa border. Three battalions of Iwa Nin consisting of Chunin, Elite Junin, and Anbu were waiting with anticipation to break into Konoha and kill the last Namikazes as well as make the village pay for what Minato and Kashina did during the war. As they were about to break the border, their eyes widened in horror when they saw the son of their most hated enemy appear before them, walking towards their position with a stone-cold and murderous gaze locked onto them. They all started to get nervous as his gaze was so much similar to Minato's. D don't be afraid. Just because he's the son of that man and his of a wife doesn't mean he can take on all of us, the commander said of the battalion stated until they were all finding it quite difficult to breath because Naruto was using his spiritual pressure to make them all break into cold sweat and swore they saw a menacing figure with a scythe hovering over Naruto. For that comment on my mother you'll be the last to die, Naruto said in a dark and dangerous tone before holding out his right hand and in a flash of light Zanjetsu appeared wrapped up fully with medical tape. He unveiled it showing his partner in all his glory. This intimidated quite a few of the already terrified Iwa Nin. He suddenly took a step and vanished, causing them to go on the defense and unknown to them, he was already cutting them down at speeds that surpassed even his father's. W was that the Horaishin. One Junin asked his colleagues but Naruto appeared in front of three squads with Zanjetsu drawn out, and the next that happened was forever plastered on the Iwa commander's face. Blood limbs, and screams of pure agonizing pain filled the air as the three squadrons were all cut to shreds and were either dead or close to dying. No, that was a technique I created and learned called Shunpo or Flash Step, he vanished once again and in slow motion appeared behind the only remain ninja. And the one I just killed you with is currently called Senka, he said as he sheathed his blade on his back and blood shot out of the Iwa commander's chest area where the heart is and spinal column. And as for your Suchikage, he and his village are about to get a wake-up call. He finished as the man fell to his knees. D damn you Namikaze. He coughed out and fell to the ground. No damn your village and your leader's ignorance fool, he said and starts to leave the area. As he does so he mentally feels that feeling again like someone or something trying to erupt from his mind. He shook his head and shunpos to the Iowa village. Onoki the current Suchikage of Iwagakur wasn't happy and at the moment was slamming his fists onto his desk. Why? Because an Anbu he sent to check up on the invading force on Konoha came back and told him that they were all massacred with no survivors. As he pondered on what he was going to do next he looked out his window and his eyes widened in terror and horror as he saw Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze hovering over the village and staring right at the man and then aimed his right hand at the tower. This is a message to you and anyone else who dares to harm those precious to me you old fool. Hado number 88, Here you Gekizoku Shuntenraiho, flying dragon striking heaven shaking thunder cannon. He called out as he fires a gigantic beam of electrical and spiritual energy that hits the cage tower and truly an enormous explosion that not only engulfs the tower, but one quarter of the village as well. As Naruto watched the mayhem he caused he felt slightly guilty for killing the innocent but if it wasn't their leader then none of this would have happened. With that he turned around and shun Pio'd away leaving his mark and message at the entrance of the gate. It stated, you wanted a war, well you got one and paid the price for it. From Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, this event was recorded in history called the, Massacre of Iwa. Kami's Realm, the two goddess who had seen the destruction was shocked at how strong Naruto was and how he handled Iwa. It was just too fast even for them. Megami though was beaming with pride her avatar was making her feel the ultimate feeling of pride knowing the man walking the living world was her embodiment on earth the one who represented death to those that crossed her. Kami though was staring at Naruto with half-litted eyes that showed a emshin Megami had caught and she smirked. It was lust, at her avatar, oh yes she couldn't wait to start teasing her about this piece of information. Fire Country Border after leaving Iwa in chaos and killing most of its shinobi that followed after him he had arrived in record time at the border in fire country. He then bit his finger and swiped it over his hand and started doing hand signs. Shokan Ribasu, reverse summoning he stated before vanishing in a puff of smoke. With Jiraiya, as Jiraiya played with Mito around on the toad mountain he couldn't help, but be a little worried for his godson going against Iwa alone was suicide to any normal human. Shormanato did the same thing and came out with a victory that ended the Third Shinobi War, but even he had trouble standing after pushing his body past its limits. As he caught Mito hiding behind a tree he heard a puff of smoke and turned around to see his godson appear in a reverse summoning. 
He looked and saw the only different thing about him was the giant cleaver on his back and the cold eyes that were slowly becoming warm seeing his sister, but nothing else out of the ordinary. Mito looked up to see the sound of poofing to see her beloved Oni-san she smiled cheerfully as her eyes lit up. As Naruto looked at Jiraiya he felt a red blur tackle into his chest making him stumble back a bit before falling on the ground. He rubbed his head a bit before blinking he looked downward to see Mito staring at him with her big violet orbs which glistened with tears. He smiled as he wiped away the oncoming tears in eyes, what's wrong Imouto chan He said in a soothing tone. She visibly relaxed at her brother's touch and voice she always did as she grew up his voice was the thing that always made her feel safe and relaxed. She pushed her face into his chest as she spoke, I I, thought you were gonna be hurt again. She said sniffling a little since on the inside as her Kyofu took her away was deathly worried for her brother, and seeing him now healthy with not a scratch on him made her feel safe again. Naruto just blinked before grinning a devilish grin, he s his hands to her sides before tickling her making her burst out into giggles as she rolled off of him. Ha ha how's that Mito chan, this is for believing I wouldn't get back injured, he said as he continued his, torture, on his poor little sister. He stopped a few minutes later before picking up Mito who was blue in the face from the lack of air. And sat her on his lap like he used to when she was a little girl. He looked at Jiraiya and she leaned into her brother's warmth, her head was popped up on his chest where she was facing Jiraiya as well. Jiraiya watched them with a smile on his face as the two actually reminded him of Minato and Kashina when they were younger, but he shook his head before speaking, so. Dot how did it go? He said. They were stopped like I said, nothing else to it Kyofu, he said hiding how he destroyed a quarter of the village itself. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes on Naruto he was hiding something and knew it would either be bad or good he didn't know. Cuz at the moment he just needed more answers. I see well what will you do in Konoha because of your actions it will be regarded back on Konoha seeing as they have someone like you able to destroy armies like that with little effort like your two san then things will be tense with the countries. Naruto nodded as he ran a hand through Mito's hair, I know this, but that won't deter me from protecting my precious people Kyofu and you know this better than anyone, he said. Jiraiya grinned warmly before walking over to his godchildren and gave them a hug, yeah, and I have to say I'm proud of both you the way you're both turning out in life and both your Ka-san and Tu-san would be proud as well, he said. Naruto nodded before he looked down and saw Mito asleep in his lap with her arms wrapped around him and head buried in his chest. He blinked before picking her up gently in his arms and stood up he shifted her in a bridal carry with her head leaning onto him. He ed her forehead once more before he looked at his Kyofu with a serious eye. Kyofu let's go back to Konoha I'm sure they're looking for results, though I'm sure most already know by now, he said. Yeah. You're probably right though Serutobi might be pissed after what you did, he said. Like I care what the old fool thinks he has no say in what I do or who I protect. I'm sorry Kyofu, but the man to me is nothing more than old fool that thinks he can control me, he said. Jiraiya nodded sadly knowing his godson was right Serutobi had tried for years to either control Naruto or take Mito away from him. Now let's go, he said before muttering a small, Shoken Ribasu before disappearing in a puff of smoke as did Jiraiya. Kanahagakur, when news had spread of what was going on and exactly, who, was sent to counter I was invading force the shinobi of Konoha were skeptic if Naruto would be able to do what his father was able to do as well as a few sibilanes that got along with him and Mito. That's when news had traveled of I was invading three batlions completely massacred with no survivors. This got cheers from all the shinobi knowing if it wasn't for Naruto they would have lost. They all knew they were still weak from the third shinobi war and added with Kyubi's attack made it all the worse for him. But thanks to Naruto the newly and highly respected captain commander of the Anbu Corps was able to put an end to it. What was more shocking was Iwa the village itself being attacked with over a quarter itself being obliterated and the cage tower along with it. This had served as a warning to Iwa to not try attacking again of petty reasons. They only hoped Naruto would come back soon. Serutobi though was sweating bullets to do what Naruto did was completely amazing something that was only told in war stories when Minato completely decimated a battle in of Iwa Nin in one minute flat. What Naruto did was going to be told in legends to come for being a man wiping out not one or two but three battalions of Iwa's finest ranging from Chunin, elite Junin and Anbu. 
and add the fact he desroyed a quarter of Iowa was telling him there was more to Naruto than he or anyone else knew. Naruto's squad that was on frontline guard duty heard the news the first though and had funny reactions. Even though they all knew Naruto was strong they never expected him to not only destroy three battalions of Iwa Nin, but also destroy a quarter of Iwa itself. Oh h yeah they were definitely not gonna underestimate Naruto again. Itachi just smiled knowing his brother figure, best friend had done something legendary and saved Konoha from imminent destruction. The said squad who were at the gate suddenly saw two figures appeared a few yards away from the main gate. When they sensed out who they were they completely left their posts and shushined to them. As Naruto walked with Mido in his arms sleeping peacefully with Jiraiya beside them they felt three presences heading their way and smiled when they knew who it was. They all appeared in front of them before Hana and Yugao surrounded Naruto checking for injuries as Itachi just walked up to him and pat his shoulder. Welcome back Naruto Senpei, he said. Naruto smiled as Hana and Yugao stopped fussing over him before giving him a hug. No one noticed Itachi's slight twitch at the scene, that was before they jumped back hiding their blush. Naruto just blinked owlishly before he smiled he checked to see Mito still asleep in his arms. He looked up at his squad and announced, Iwa is awfully surrendered they have been crippled and cannot even put up a defensive. So there is no more to worry about for a long time so let's go home guys, he said which they all noted at. With that they all walked back to Konoha awaiting what the future would bring them. It's been a three days since the invading force of Iwa was stopped and slaughtered as well as Iwa having a quarter of it being destroyed. This had also set events to happen. The survivors that seen what Naruto did had put him in the Iwa bingo book as one of the most dangerous men in the shinobi nations. Kumo's rakage was excited to see Minato's and Kashina's son do what he did to Iwa and especially the message he carved in the entrance into Iwa's village. That had set the record of Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze being entered into the bingo book. Suna and the other Nibhoring villages were wary of Konoha now since they had someone like him in their ranks. The day Naruto came back to Konoha he was surrounded by shinobi all giving him cheers of what he did and sibilanes bowing in respect despite what he had done in the past and their past sins against him and his sister he still saved them from destruction and they owed him that much. Sandame though when he confronted Naruto about it later that day earned a glare from Naruto telling the man what he does is not his business since he was the commander of the Anbu Corps he has special laws made for that position of what he does on personal levels is not dictated by the current cage of Konoha so the man couldn't do anything about it. The same night Mito never left Naruto's side she stayed with him every second till it was bedtime and even then she wanted to be by his side, him fighting a war must have really worried her. It had been the next day and he heard bombarding sounds coming from his door that morning so when he left Mito tucked back in bed he went to open the door only to be bombarded with questions from Anko and Kurenai to see if he was alright. He just waved off their concerns saying he was alright, that seemed to calm them down. On the third day as he, recovered, although he wasn't tired at all, he was called into a council meeting to discuss of what happened and he wasn't really in the mood. All he really wanted to do was spend time with his emo Udo was that too much to ask. He still remembers that when he scared the Sibylane council shitless and stopping most of Serutobi's questions about his weapon. That's right he now fully let Zanjetsu sheathed on his back, since for one he wasn't gonna hide his partner anymore, two it was intimidating as hell to see him walking down the street with Zanjetsu on his back and three. It was fun seeing Yugao going gaga over the weapon. Now after two weeks things have been going back to normal except that feeling in his mind was getting stronger with each passing day and it was starting to worry him. Though this didn't deter him from training or helping Mito with her training when she needed it. It also didn't stop him from going back to duty and doing missions with his squad although he has been seeing Itachi acting strange lately. That was something else Itachi was hiding something and being childhood friends for so long it worried him and he promised himself he would get to the bottom of what was wrong with him. He also strangely kept visiting Makoto and little Sasuke ever since he heard about Fugaku becoming even more, deranged in his clan. He was worried about the two. So when he came to visit he would talk with Makoto while teaching Sasuke things he needed to know in the current grade he was in at the academy. This sparked a budding friendship with Makoto he always remembered Ka-san being best friends with the woman and had to say Makoto was fun being around. And little Sasuke despite having a similar attitude like Fugaku's was easy to tease or get him mad. 
He also spent time with his squad when they weren't on duty and with Anko and Kurenai as well. Though he was noticing some weird things happening with Mito she would sometimes always blush when she looked at him while her eyes were always flashing red a few times when she looked at him as did a few other women he knew. He may be a genius of a shinobi, but he was dense as ever when it came to women. At the moment we find our blonde hero walking around Anbu HQ after finishing a solo S rank mission to Kusa country, as he was walking he thought about getting Mito and taking her out to Ichiraku after academy the day was over with. That's when he looked up and saw a sight he thought he would never see Itachi was waiting at the door with a distressed look on his face while a scroll was tightly gripped in his hands. Naruto frowned for as long as he knew Itachi he has never seen him look this emotional before, sure they made small jokes around each other, booth this was different something happened. So with speed unrivaled by anyone he appeared beside Itachi who had yet to even realize his presence. This made him even more worried Itachi was always the first one to know he appears at team meetings. Itachi, what's wrong? He said worried for his best friend. When he saw Itachi stiffen he knew something was up and decided he would find out what was going. He asked again, Itachi, turn around and tell me what's wrong. Naruto said once more. Itachi sighed he didn't know Naruto was near him till he spoke, but he just came at a very bad time. He had been hiding this for as long as he could and didn't want Naruto to know about it seems Faith didn't listen. He sighed before turning to Naruto. Naruto. Dot can we talk in private there's too many ears, he said looking around the area. Naruto frowned before nodding he grabbed onto Itachi's shoulder and using Shushin. They appeared in the Namikaze compound when he let go of Itachi's shoulder he made a cage bushin and told it to go get Mido, the clone nodded before disappearing. After this Naruto closed all the blinds and activated silencing seals, after this he looked at the now nervous Itachi who was still staring at the scroll in his hands. Itachi, explain to me, what's going on, he said with a, don't argue with me, tone. Itachi flinched before looking Naruto in the eye, well if I'm gonna be explaining myself I better do so in my, true form, he said which shocked Naruto, Itachi put his hands up in a hand sign and muttered, Kai before a poof of smoke erupted from Itachi's body covering him completely. Naruto had to shield his eyes before THS smoke dissipated, and it did so Naruto was beyond shocked, where once stood his best friend Itachi Uchiha stood a long raven-haired woman in the same clothes Itachi was wearing only difference it hugged her figure like a second skin and the chest plate armor didn't hide the perky sea cup ass showing from her chest. Her heart-shaped face and coal black eyes looked back at him as bangs fell in front of her face. Naruto just blinked slowly digesting what he was seeing basically it was a clone of Makoto in his opinion. Said woman looked at the ground, A hey, Anyo, N Naruto, this is my true form, this is who. I, R really am, said the woman. Naruto just thought about what she said and his eyes went wide in shock that is until he saw her eyes that held a bit of pleading and acceptance. He mentally cringed those kind of eyes always broke him one of his small weaknesses. He rubbed the back of his head and spoke, so I'm guessing you're actually, a female. He said. Yes, she said. Naruto frowned, why hide it? He said. It was because Fugaku placed the genjutsu on me to look male because he wanted only sons and not a daughter in the family. But Ka-san always helped me when I needed emotional support when father became strict on my training, she said. Naruto scowled at this Fugaku to do such a thing made him wanna kill the man, but first. Then why didn't you tell me? I am your best friend aren't I? Don't you trust me enough to keep this a secret? He said. The woman snapped her head up at him and let tears start to fall from her eyes. I didn't know what you would think of me, I didn't want the only person to bring me out of my cold persona to leave me if he found out the truth, she said as she fell to her knees crying. Naruto was there in an instant holding her to his chest as he rubbed her back in comforting gestures. He still was trying to wrap it around his mind his best friend since childhood the Itachi he grew up with, trained with, did missions with was actually a female and was actually scared of telling him the truth. He pulled himself back and raised her head by her chin till she was looking him in the eyes. You have nothing to be scared about, I would have accepted you either way, now. Dot why not start telling me your true name him? He said. This made her emotions break and wrapped her arms around his head and cried and wailed into his shoulder as he held her. 
Knowing this might take a while, after she had calmed down a bit she looked at him and spoke, my true name, dot the one Ka San gave me is Hitomi. Uchiha Hitomi, she said. Naruto actually grinned, the name fit her perfectly. That's a beautiful name, Hitomi-chan it fits you, now Hitomi I need you to explain what's been bugging you for the past few weeks, he said. Hitomi actually blushed at his compliment before she remembered why she was here. Naruto-kun, it's a long story, but let me start by explaining what my clan has been planning. With that Hitomi started explaining the Uchiha clan with her father planning a coup d'etat and rebel against Konoha. She told him of how some members of the clan were innocent and didn't even know of the plan. She also explained her situation as a spy for her father in the Anbu this way she could gather important information and hear on the Hokage's meetings, but she also told him of her undercover status being a double agent for Serutobi and the council. She told him of Serutobi's plan along with the elders to have her slaughter the clan so something like this wouldn't happen again. She even told him they when she tried to refuse Serutobi threatened her by having Sasuke getting a loyalty seal placed on him and Makoto used a breeding stock. That's when everything broke she fell into his arms and cried her eyes out. Asking, begging for any kind of help. While she told him all this Naruto was deathly silent his bangs covered his eyes, as his grip on Hitomi was tighter and he kept pulling her closer into him to soothe her as much as he could. When the woman stopped crying she looked up only to gasp seeing Naruto's murderous and deadly stone cold gaze. She could see his eyes changing bit by bit. Naruto grit his teeth before pulling away from Hitomi, he got up and pulled her up as well. Hitomi-chan, you should have told me this before, he said. I I didn't know if you would, she said only to stop when Naruto hugged her as his chin was on her head. Of course I would have, you should have told me everything from the beginning. But I will tell you this Hitomi-chan, he said ignoring the fact he added the Chan suffix to her name. Though Hitomi did notice and would file it for later. I will help you, be damned I become an enemy of Konoha you and I are friends the best of friends you know this, and you should know I'd do anything to help you, now me and you are going to the Uchiha clan compound and find the ones who are planning this uprising, and the innocent ones will live. I hope you don't have any problems killing your father do you? He said. She answered with no hesitation, hell no, I'll gladly kill him, she said. Naruto nodded once more before speaking. Good I want you to give me the names of who the ones are planning the uprising, also I'd suggest you put back on your Itachi, Genjutsu just in case. I'm gonna help you lift this burden and help out your clan, now once you have killed your father I want you to get your mother and if possible Sasuke and take them at our squad safe house, he said while walking up to his closet. She nodded with his planning and knew the innocent would be safe at the safe house the seals Naruto implanted in the building wouldn't allow those with evil intentions would be blocked out. That's when she saw Naruto open up the closet to show a bunch of boxes and clothes, she watched curiously when he moved them out of the way and bit his finger drawing blood. She watched when a white glow erupted from the closet. When it faded it showed a closet full of scrolls that had kanji for something different. They ranged from weapons, medical herbs and medicine, personal fuinjutsu books and tags, family scrolls and books on nintai kenjutsu. She watched in fascination when he practically cleaned out the whole closet and started sealing everyone into his own body she remembered him making a pocket dimension seal used on the body, but this shocked her. When Naruto sealed the last bit of things he needed he closed the door, and looked at Hitomi and spoke. Now Hitomi you know the plan after we kill the ones trying to plan the coup I'll have you take your Ka-san and the ones that are innocent to the Safave house after you do this activate the seals. Because after this I don't want them to feel what is gonna happen afterwards, he said looking away from her one second before looking back at her. Do you understand? He said, yes Naruto-kun, but what about Mito-chan? And the rest are our friends. What will we do? She said worried about her friends. Naruto just scowled before punching the wall behind him making a five-foot crater, this shouldn't be surprising since he had long since passed Tsunade's legendary strength, but the Namikaze compound was made of the thickest stone and improved with defensive seals. So what he basically just did was make a crater of pure chakra enchanced cement and steel. This got a wide-eyed look from Hitomi when she saw Naruto's eyes change once again, to those eyes. The ones that showed he was willing to do anything to protect his precious people. I am gonna do what I should have done a long time ago, Hitomi-chan. 
I'm gonna usurp the Hokage and take Mito away from here to the fire daimyo. When I leave the gate I'm gonna leave a messenger bird for Yugao, Hana, Enko and Kurenai they will be the only ones to know what has happened. After this and I have Mito with me I want you and your clan to follow me okay? He said. Mitomi just nodded dumbly still trying to wrap it around her mind hearing Naruto going to usurp the Hokage and governing body of Konoha itself. She mentally chuckled Naruto was always like that he'd face a village and become its number one enemy if it means saving a friend in trouble. She stood up and went over to Naruto and before he could do anything she did something she had wished to do for a long time. She captured his in a passionate liplock. Naruto went wide-eyed before remembering his first with Megami and did what he did with her. He wrapped his arms around her and leaned deeper into the making her moan in surprise, he rubbed her back while they went against the wall. They continued this for a minute before breaking apart for air. When they separated they eyed each other before Hitomi smiled with a small blush on her face. Thank you Naruto-kun, I just wanted to do that before we went separate ways for now, she said. Naruto just blinked before grinning. Yeah, me too Hitomi-chan who knows there might be more where that came from, he said with a teasing grin. She blushed bright red before turning around, L let's go, she mumbled. Naruto smirked before coming up from behind her and hugged her from behind. Very well Haim, but first let me reinforce some more clones to go help get my sister. He said once he did that he grabbed her in a hug and shushine to the outskirts of the Uchiha complex. Two hours later we find Naruto's clones holding Mito Uzumaki Namikaze as they raced through the woods getting to the outskirts of Konoha. As they did so Mito was asking why he was doing his and only said they needed to get away from Konoha for good and that he would explain later. At the Uchiha clan complex chaos was happening, Itachi, and Naruto himself had already infiltrated the clan compound and were assassinating the traitors. They were officially found out and at the moment was killing off the planning traitors and was sparing the innocent which had the innocent ones follow, Itachi's, clone and promised it will be explained later. Naruto dodged a kanai slash before kicking a Uchiha guard into a building and ducked under a Kaden jutsu before doing hand signs himself. Kaden. Miss Irafuraimingudoragon. Kaden. Dragon flaming missile, he stated before blowing a white flaming dragon incinerating a group of Uchiha shinobi and burying a few buildings along with it. Naruto exhaled before looking at Hitomi's gobsmacked expression he chuckled before speaking, I had it mastered a bit ago, anyways let's get to your house I have a feeling something bad is happening, he said which, Itachi, nodded before they sped through the deserted or destroyed buildings. When they got there Naruto narrowed his eyes when he heard seeming so he rushed in kicking the wall in and finding the source with, Itachi, following him. When they got there they saw Fugaku trying to stab Makoto which the woman was resisting the best she could despite her being having resistance seals on her. Naruto's blood boiled over and Shun peeled between Fugaku and Makoto and kicking the man through the wall and standing protectively in front of Makoto. He nodded at, Itachi who nodded back which she went outside to deal with Fugaku. While that was happening he looked back at Makoto and started ripping off the resistant seals on her and helping her stand. And Naruto-kun, what's going on? Why was Fugaku trying to k-kill me, she said as tears were glistening in her eyes. Naruto just closed his eyes and hugged the woman he had come to see as a very precious person in his life and let her cry in his shoulder. He looked in. Itachi's direction to see her standing over the dead body of Fugaku, but seemed to be looking at the other direction. He didn't have time to think about it at the moment as he held Makoto and helped soothe her as best as he could. With Hitomi, Hitomi had just killed Fugaku with her ninjutsu, before she heard sounds coming from the other side of the room. She looked over her shoulder and inwardly cursed it was her little brother Sasuke, and with him seeing her over Fugaku's body made it confusing for the child. Nisan, What's going on? That clan has been killed and... Dot and, that's when realization came up on his face. And Nisan. Dot why? He said as tears fell from his eyes. Hitomi flinched which was missed by Sasuke and decided on another course of action. I was doing this, to protect those precious to me Sasuke. She said in her Itachi Genjutsu. Sasuke looked at his, Nisan's form, in confusion before he saw Hitomi's eyes close before they snapped open revealing her Sharingan. Hitomi knew what she was doing was risky, but maybe this way she could help her little brother. Before Konoha could corrupt him, 
I'm sorry Sasuke, but I have to go now as for why I did this it's like I said it was because I wanted to protect those important to me, that included you as well. Goodbye, baby brother, she said before her Sharingan morphed into a three-pronged shuriken and said. Mangeku, Tsukiyomi, she said that was when Sasuke fell unconscious with a gift from his niece San to secretly protect him later on. With Naruto, he pulled away from her and spoke. Makoto-san we have to get you out of here I promise everything will be explained soon, but there is something rotten happening in Konoha and I intend to find out so please do me this favor and follow. Itachi, when he asks you to, he said he started walking out of the hole in the wall. Makoto watched her best friend's son and her personal friend walk out after protecting her from getting killed. She calmed herself and saw, Itachi, come back in with a sad frown on his face. Ka-san it's time we go, but first, puts his hand in a tiger seal, Kai, before she changed back to her real form shocking and making Makoto smile happily. Hitomi smiled as she hugged her Ka-san. Ka-san we have to go Naruto-kun has helped me get the innocence of the Uchiha clan away we need to get to them and fast, she said surprising Makoto once more before she started grinning. Su. Dot it's Naruto-kun now huh? She said Hitomi just blushed and looked away from her as Makoto was laughing at her daughter's expense. Naruto himself had already shunned Pio to the Anbu HQ and demanded for the guards to drag every single council member to the chambers on the law of the captain commander himself ordering this. They quickly saluted not wanting to be in Naruto's line of wrath. When the council members of all kinds were summoned from all the civil aims to the clan heads and elders even Sarutobi himself were dragged by the Anbu and told to come for it was an emergency. When they asked why they only got, it was Naruto Komanda's order, which made them all think what was going on. Why has that brat called us here for so late in the night? Said a pink-haired councilwoman. I agree what is so damn important that he'd have his own Anbu drag us from our home to come here, said another civil aim. The clan heads though were mentally frowning wondering what was going to have a meeting ordered by Naruto himself, and it never happened since he hated the meetings. It's because I have important business with some people in this very room and you're all here to witness what I mean, said Naruto as he appeared from the made everyone jump not even sensing him there while Sarutobi, the elders and sibylanes glared at him. Why have you called this meeting boy? Some of us have better things to do. Naruto just throwed a glance at the man before ignoring him completely as he pulled out a folder from his coat. This is the reason I've brought you all here, it would seem there was some Uchiha in the clan planning a coup, he said and raising his hand silencing the incoming questions. He then spoke once more, also this folder here is a personal file on my squad member Weasel aka Itachi Uchiha and from what I can see there is top secret information of him being a spy for the Uchiha clan he said gaining even more gasps and narrowed eyes from Sarutobi and the elders. But that's not the real reason I've brought you here you see, you Sarutobi and you honorable elders of the Shinobi Council have made him an undercover spy to be placed as a double agent in the clan and also have ordered for him to slaughter his clan, that also has innocence within that know nothing of the plans some others were making, he said. Sarutobi narrowed his eyes at Naruto while the elders did the same while the clan heads were inwardly trying to figure where this was going. So I say right now, what gave you the ing right to order one of my subordinates? Even if you're the ing Hokage you have no jurisdiction with my squad here as in Sarutobi. And even more so you threatened my subordinate with his family if he didn't do as you ordered. So I'm gonna give you one chance to explain yourself Sarutobi one chance is all you're gonna get. He said. The clan heads were gawking before Soom growled at Sarutobi she always knew something was fishy about the man, but with this recent information tipped the scales. Sarutobi was thinking a mile a minute on what to do before going with an alternative, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, you dare order me. The Hokage of Kanahagakur, and dare threaten me, would you risk your life like this to get information? He said. Naruto glared at the man, hell yes you old bag of ing bones he said with venom dripping from each word. Sarutobi then smirked and decided to play his ace, but what about Mito? Are you willing to risk her life? He said getting shocked looks from them all. Naruto was deathly silent after that before an unmeasurable force slammed in the chambers crushing the floor the Sibylanes didn't stand a chance and was slammed into the floor, the clan heads had more resistance, but had to hold on to their desks from falling to their knees. 
Though Sarutobi was had the worst of it since it was all aimed at him. He was on his knees gasping for breath, he looked at Naruto to see a menacing ghostly figure holding a scythe hovering over him as Naruto was glaring at him with his now eyes changed from the ice cold blue to the black eyes with the golden pupils. They held so much anger and hate it was suffocating. Naruto raised his right hand as Zanjetsu appeared in his hand and pointed it at Sarutobi. If you so much as try anything to hurt her to get to me, I will make what I did in Iwa and Kayubi's attack look like a children's fight compared to what I would do to you and Konoha as a whole. He said with a much different voice than before. He then glared, Now that you have spoken I will leave you will this threat here is in Sarutobi, if you so much as try anything that I find out is not right in my book I will do something far worse for your village and release all the secrets I know of in Konoha from the defensive mechanisms that protect our walls to the Fuin barrier that surrounds Konoha everything to even its dark, little secrets. He said. This made Sarutobi go pale and nod before the pressure led up completely. When they looked up they didn't see Naruto anywhere. But they could still hear his voice. Always remember Sarutobi, I'm always watching you and I'll be there when you up and I'll be the one to send you to the Shinigami along with your teammates, he said before the voice faded away. This event had marked a major shift in Konoha as the day, when Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze became its number one enemy and missing Nin. With Naruto we find him already outside the Konoha gates as he headed for the safe houses. As he did so he sent four cage bushes Hegnet into messenger birds to relay the information, and for them not to do anything until they got another message from him again. Five minutes later using Shunpo he arrived at the safe house to see the security seals activated and the occupants safe and sound inside, he could also sense Mito in there as well with Hitomi and Makoto around her. He sighed before walking up to the doors and activating a blood seal to unlock the security seals as to not set the alarm off. As he got inside he locked it back and he turned around to see the Uchiha survivors looking at him with understanding eyes, Midomi must have explained while he was out. He nodded at them as he walked up the steps to talk to Hitomi and Makoto and also to check up on Mito. When he got to the second floor he saw a few Uchiha shinobi that weren't involved with the traitors guarding the door. Once they saw him though they saluted before opening the door. He smiled at them before walking through as the doors closed behind him ending with a click. Once inside he was on the receiving end of getting tackled by a red missile knocking him back a few steps. He looked down to see Mito smiling at him, he smirked before looking out to see Hitomi in her true form and Makoto smiling at him. He smiled back at he picked up Mito and set her on his shoulder only for her to stay put. He sighed before setting her in his arms in a bridal carry as she cuddled into his chest. Naruto rolled his eyes with a gentle smile Mito was always clingy when it came to him. He kept walking as Mito snuggled closer into him and spoke, so I'm guessing you told the others of the situation. He said gesturing to Hitomi. Said now revealed female Uchiha air smiled. Yeah, though it was surprising when a few said they had suspected something, but couldn't get any real evidence, she said. And have you told, pointing at Mito, about anything else? He said. Hitomi nodded. Just the small portion, but what I don't get it's what we're going to do next. She said with a frown. Nato just grinned. I have an idea, just have the survivors get ready we're leaving in about in 10 minutes. Naruto said while shifting Mito so her head was resting in the crook of his neck as he walked to the window looking out in the forests of fire country. Hitomi nodded before walking out to address the survivors of their next move. Makoto though stayed and walked up beside him as she looked at him with a gentle smile. You know Naruto-kun. You remind me so much of your father and mother it's remarkable, she said. Naruto smiled. Hey, yeah though honestly I think I take more after two san, but got the short anger fuse from Ka san. Especially when it comes to council meetings, he said with a frown. Makoto just laughed. True, Kashina wasn't one for politics, but could make them shut up when they needed to, and I can see you got your father's and physical appearance and skills, she said with a little humor in her voice. Naruto just grinned. Yeah, but I think Mito chan here is just like mom in everything from the tomboyish attitude to the talent in Fuinjutsu. He said as his eyes softly settled on Mito as he pat her head, causing the little girl snuggle closer into him. Makoto blinked and smiled at the scene. Naruto kun, you really love her, don't you? She said. Which Naruto just looked at Makoto softly. Yes, 
I love her more than anyone could imagine and would protect her to my dying breath just like you, Hitomi, Kaiofu, and all my other precious people. That was the promise I made when I died, he said with the last part quietly, but Makoto caught it, but before she could question him Hitomi came back in. Naruto-kun, everyone is ready it's time to go, she said. Naruto just turned around and nodded and walked to the door with Makoto eyeing him strangely, she still couldn't get out what he said out of her mind. Now she knew there was more to Naruto than she or anyone else even knew. She then decided she would find out what he meant later on. Naruto walked out the door before he remembered something and looked at Hitomi, Hitomi-chan, where is Sasuke? He said. Hitomi just closed her eyes. I decided to leave Sasuke behind I explained this to Ka-san and agreed, I have a plan that has a risk of a 50-50 chance in the future to work. Until then we'll have to wait till then, she said. Naruto just closed his eyes remembering Sasuke when he was growing up, and decided he would keep an eye on him to make sure he was okay. He opened his eyes, very well, then as you're still acting commander I am gonna keep an eye out on Sasuke if he's ever in trouble or decides to take the wrong path. I'll straighten him out for you, he said with a grin. This made Hitomi as well as Makoto go wide-eyed before they smiled and nodded. Arigato Naruto-kun, they both said in unison which was pretty funny seeing they looked like clones of one another. Naruto just smiled and waved them off. It's all right, but right now we have to get moving, he said as he walked out the door with the two following him. Makoto wondering where they were going. Where will we be going Naruto-kun? She said, Hitomi raised an eyebrow she too wanted to know, but she was more curious at how her mother was exclaiming his name in such an affectionate manner. Naruto just kept walked as he held Mito, where we are going is the one place I know you all will be safe, it's the one place Konoha can't touch you. We're going to the heart of fire country, we're going to Haishi the capital city of Hai no Kuni, Naruto said. This made them gasp, they were going to the fire daimyo city. The very place that was built even before Konoha. Sure they had been around the area on missions, but never before inside the city. Naruto somehow knowing their thoughts. Don't worry, we'll be led in I know the fire daimyo and he's a personal friend of my father's and myself as well. Even if the man is a lord of a country he will not deny help from me since I've helped him out before and saved his family from assassination once or twice, he said shocking them even more. Naruto then looked at Mito before patting her head as he softly spoke. No matter how long I have to, I will always protect you through life or death. I shall stick to my promise and always protect you, Naruto said. He inwardly didn't know why he said that, but it's just something within him demanded him to say it. He shook his head as he was followed by a smilling Makoto and Hitomi. Hai Shi Gates At the gates of Hai Shi, we find Naruto with Makoto and Hitomi on both his sides while Mito was on walking beside Naruto holding his hand with the last remaining Uchiha's following them. When they finally reached the gates they were surrounded by the guards. They were samurai the personal army of any daimyo, they were the security force and police force of each capital city in every country. As everyone was tense, Naruto was just staring at them with an impassive face. That is until they heard a voice from the samurai. And Naruto Dono, said a male voice, Captain, said a samurai, the samurai were looking at their captain who was walking past them toward Naruto before he bowed surprising them all. Naruto just smiled at the man who was wearing the standard samurai armor except he wore a captain's badge for squad 3, the man had messy brown hair and grey black eyes. He wore a katana at his hip and a small dagger attached to his back with the handle facing his right so it would be an easy quick draw. It's good to see you, Nokura, Naruto said. The newly named Nokura stood up and smiled at the man before him, as it is to me Naruto, what have you come here for? He said eyeing the people with him. Naruto frowned and spoke, that will have to be spoken with Izo-sama, he said, which got a frown from Nokura and nodded. Then follow me, you all back to your posts, nothing to see here. He said making the samurai head back to their positions. Nokura then looked back and said, now if you will all follow me, we will head to see Izo-sama, he said getting a nod from Naruto. Mito who was watching curiously looked up at Naruto and asked the question on all their minds, Anyo, Naruto ni who is Izo? She said with her face scrunched up cutely making her look like a confused fox. 
Naruto just smiled as he ruffled Mito's hair making her pout as a tint of pink rose up on her face. Why, he's the fire damio of Hai no Kuni, he said in a nonchalant manner although inwardly he was grinning like a madman. This got gaping looks from everyone as he walked on with a confused Mito as to who the fire damio was. Fiaparezu throne room entrance, Naruto with Mito followed by Makoto and Hitomi. They had left the remaining in another room so they could rest after the long journey. As they left them they had followed Nokura as Naruto had yet to say a word only to speak when asked a question from Mito. When they reached the throne room doors Nokura turned around and smiled. Izo-sama, we'll be expecting you Naruto Dono, so please go on ahead, he said before the giant doors opened up slowly to reveal a room twice the size of the Hokage's office. The room itself had paintings of the previous daimyos along with their accomplishments listed below. Ahead of the group was a small red carpet leading to a throne with a person sitting in it, this person was wearing elegant and formal clothing. He had black hair with some grey could be seen showing he was middle-aged. The man had brown sharp eyes that showed wisdom and a feeling of commandance. This man was Iro Mizaki, current fire daimyo of Hai no Kuni and Lord of Fire Country. The man smiled brightly when he saw Naruto and speaks, Welcome Naruto how long has it been? He said. The fire lord of fire country Iro Mizaki, was staring at the man in front of him. He had just been told of someone wanting to speak with him, but had at first declined saying he was spending time with his family. Though things changed when the messenger said it was urgent and spoke exactly, who, it was. That made him leave in a hurry. So imagine his surprise when he is informed of a group of Uchiha and its matriarch along with Naruto's little sister that he has helped protected from Sarutobi's attempts. That made him mentally scowl that man had lost his respect long ago. He shook his head before speaking. Hello Naruto-san, it's good to see you in good health. Now I am glad to see you and all, but I have to ask what is so urgent to come here personally to speak with me. Iro said wondering what his friend needed to speak about that was so urgent to not even relay a message ahead of time. Naruto frowned before looking at Mito. Mito chan go to Makoto san and stay with her and Hitomi chan, while I speak with Iro sama, okay? He said with a reassuring smile. Mito was about to disagree when she saw him reassure her so she walked over to Makoto and Hitomi before turning her head to see Naruto nodding for her to go on ahead. She smiled before walking with Makoto holding her hand as they walked out the door. Hitomi though was hesitant as she looked at Naruto worried until he spoke. Hitomi chan, don't worry everything will be fine. Remember what I told you, I would do anything I had to protect you, Makoto and anyone else that is important to me. So go on ahead Iro-sama have things to speak about, he said. Hitomi stayed there for a few seconds before smiling and went out the door giving Naruto one last glance as the doors closed. After they did so a tense silence followed as Naruto looked back into a piercing brown eyes as Iro stared back into cold icy blue eyes. They stayed like that until Iroh broke the tension. Naruto, what is the reason you called this meeting? Has something happened? He said needing to know what has been going on to make his friend and be so serious. Yeah Naruto usually is serious all the time, but at the moment he was seeing something in Naruto's he hasn't ever seen before. Naruto just remained impassive before speaking, what I'm doing here Iroh sama is that something happened in Konoha that has made take the alternative path I once told you about. He said making Iroh's eyes widen slightly, Naruto continued despite this, you see I won't lie to you ever since the past declaration of war from Iwa and its decimation, Konoha's higher ups have been on my back for some time now. But that wasn't really that bad. That is until, they crossed the line with one of my subordinates, he said with a cold edge tone in his voice. Iroh frowned at this he remembers the declaration on Konoha from Iwa and the Daimyo of Earth Country had not known until it was too late. Despite that though it stopped when news of Naruto's deeds of decimating the invading force and of his action with destroying part of Iwagakure itself. Still Onoki the Tsuchikage had survived that whatever destroyed the tower at the time surrendered, and to make that man surrender was in itself was almost impossible to do. That's when he analyzed the rest of what Naruto said and spoke, what did they do Naruto? Was it so bad to make you leave Konoha along with the Uchiha matriarch and some of the clan's members as well? He said, Naruto just stiffly nodded before speaking. Yes sir, 
Now I'm gonna explain to you all that's happened in the past few hours regarding of what's happened and of the current situation. Naruto said. Iroh nodded before Naruto started explaining of what Hitomi passed on to him. First he told him of. Itachi's true gender and name and what a few in the Uchiha were planning, Hitomi's position of being their spy within the Anbu ranks, also of Serutobi and the Elder's order to have Hitomi be a undercover double agent within the Uchiha clan. He also told him of the threat he gave to Hitomi if she didn't do as they asked when they ordered for the Uchiha clan as a whole to be slaughtered. He also spoke of when he came and helped her with the finding the true traitors of the clan and helped assassinate them before sparing the innocent. He spoke of them saving Makoto from Fugaku trying to kill her. After this he told Iroh of his summoning with the governing body of Konoha. He told Iroh of his argument with Serutobi and with his order to the old man to give him the information he needed. That's when he lastly spoke of Serutobi's threat of to have Mito killed to subjugate Naruto's will. He then explained the rest of him leaving behind a scared council and amused clan heads of his longtime last words to most of them. If they ever stepped in the wrong territory, he'd be back to kill them. Iroh took all this in stride before he snarled in rage. I warned him. I warned that old fool, if he crossed the line with me, him and Konoha would pay. Iroh yelled. He closed his eyes, trying to calm down after hearing everything, especially about Serutobi's threat with Mito's life and having the man order such a thing with Uchiha clan made his blood boil. He took a calming breath before opening his eyes before he looked in Naruto's direction. Don't worry, Serutobi will pay for what he has done, Konoha will suffer for the leader's ignorance and foul leadership. Now while I deal with them is there anything you need Naruto? He said, after seeing the hesitant look appear on his face. Naruto looked at the ground as thought about what he was gonna ask of the man in front of him. That's when he steeled his eyes and looked at Iroh, Iroh sama, I ask no beg you, he said before kneeling in front of the shocked man since he knew Naruto never bowed to anyone. Naruto bowed his head till it touched the stone floor he was on. I beg you, can the Uchiha survivors along with Makoto-san stay here? And be protected within your walls. I don't know any other place than under your protection they would be safe, he said. Iroh just blinked as his shock rapidly disappeared with amusement filling his body. He stood up and walked over to Naruto's kneeling body. He bent down and pulled on his arm to make him stand. Naruto. Dot you don't have to beg it's not in your nature to do such a thing, besides, he said with a grin that looked unnatural on a damio's regal face. Of course they can stay they will be put under my protection and kept safe from Konoha and especially Serutobi and his teammates clutches, he said. The avatar of death just smiled before straightening himself out, Iroh wasn't done though, but what will you do Naruto? With Hitomi and Mito where will you go? I mean you are always welcomed here but I'm sure you have something planned out don't you? He said with a grin. His response was something he didn't expect, I know of one place where me and Mito will be welcomed and that place is. Dot dot, Kumo the current rakage was friends with my parents and would be the perfect place to help train Mito and myself. As for Hitomi she has informed me that she will be going undercover in Jiraiya's spy network and join a secret uprising organization called, Akatsuki. She will be seen as, Itachi, in the organization and in public until we can find a way to find out their objective and who their leader is, he said. Iroh nodded with the plan it was foolproof he too had heard about to now growing in fame Akatsuki and had recently been hearing rumors the group across the elemental nations. He then remembered something he had been wishing to speak to Naruto about for a while now. Naruto I agree with your plan, but there is something we need to speak about. Since you're no longer a shinobi of Konoha and will most likely be put in the Konoha bingo book what will you do? Someone of your old position and abilities will not be ignored in the elemental nations, he said. Naruto just frowned and thought about it, what will he do? Surely Iwa will send assassins after him, and Konoha's hunter Nin will be hot on his trail even if he's in Kumo. He closed his eyes thinking on what he should do. Iroh saw this and spoke, I know of a way and honestly I've been thinking on this I can place you in that will define your skills, he said with a slight grin. Said ex Anbu Captain Commander blinked and looked at Iroh with curious eyes, what would that be, Izo-sama? He said, if anything Iroh's grin got wider before he spoke, since you Naruto and your family have been friends with my family for so long and you are highly respected among all fire guardians and basically my personal samurai, 
I would like to officially award you the position among my troops, he said. Naruto gaped as his jaw fell to the ground, him being officially placed in the fire damio's army he gulped audibly as he spoke and what position would that be he said iroh just gained a shark-like grin making naruto break out in a cold sweat something that he rarely does the leader of the fire guardians the personal commander of my whole army naruto uzumaki namikaze i would like to make you the first ever kasai rida sotaicho fire leader captain commander Iroh said his grin gone at the end replaced with total and utter seriousness engraved on his face. Naruto gasped as he just thought about what Izo just said, him, the leader of the Fire Guardians. The very same ones he was respected by for protecting them and the daimyos in his time as Anbu Sotaicho, Captain Commander, Personal Commander of his whole army. Something like that kind of position has never been called in history. He thought about it and looked into his friend's eyes. Iroh Sama, I. I humbly respect your decision, but I'm afraid I'm not fit or even strong enough to be in that position, what I've done over the years the people I've killed, he said. Iroh just looked at Naruto with eyes that said, are you a baka? Before he spoke, Naruto, dot you say you're not fit for the position. Have I ever told you your father and mother, Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki Namikaze are the ones that helped me come up with the idea. They once spoke about actually having you their own son in this position if Konoha had gotten out of hand, in which case it did. They are the ones who left that position which specifically for you Naruto. As for not being strong enough, you can't be serious. You are already recorded in history books for decimating over three battalions from Iwa and also your attack of Iwagakur itself. He said. Naruto's eyes shot wide open the position he was being offered was one his own parents helped the Damio create and had actually hoped he'd be the one to succeed the position. Plus getting talked about his achievements in the Iowa massacre made him feel slightly embarrassed. That's when Mito flashed through his mind and he decided right then and there what he would do. He raised his head up to Iroh and said, Iroh Sama, I regret what I said and would accept your offer only if you give me time to help train Mito and myself, I can honestly say I'll be ready to succeed the position in a few years to come. Until then you can give me missions to other daimyos and village leaders if it will help out Hai no Kuni. He said with confidence and determination coming off him like of the flaming sun. Iroh just smiled and spoke, very well then I accept your proposal, during the time you're in Kumo I'll send in missions transferred from me to the Kaminari daimyo, lightning daimyo, he then will have them delivered to the rakage for you to take upon yourself. As this goes on I will be expecting you to get stronger so you can fill in that position. As for your sister, your mother had asked me to make the position for her when she was strong enough to claim it, train her till she's strong enough Naruto, he said. Naruto just smirked, very well Iroh Sama, I'll see to it Mito-chan is strong enough to give any cage a run for their money or beat them in the future. As for myself I promise I'll get stronger to make my parents proud and take the position they helped create and to protect those important to me. Naruto said as he eyes just told Iroh he was speaking to damn honest truth and would do what he said. Good, now get going and as promised I'll have the Uchiha survivors along with Makoto Uchiha be put under protection and can place their clan within my walls so they won't have to worry about the threats outside, he said, Naruto nodded. Yes, thank you again Iroh-sama, now by your leave, he said in his professional tone, Iroh nodded before speaking, you're dismissed. Dot and Naruto, he said. Naruto looked over his shoulder to see Iroh smiling at him, be careful out there, don't want my finest warrior dying out there. The fire Damio said. The secret avatar just smirked and nodded before walking out the door as it closed behind him. While Iroh watched him leave he thought about the future. That boy, he's gonna be someone very important in the future even now with his new responsibility, I can already tell the fates are in his hands and will be the one help turn this war-torn world into a peaceful land. Him and Mito both will both be legends as they grow up and get stronger and wiser. I can only hope I can be there to see it happen. With that Iroh Mizaki left to go prepare his punishment on Konoha for what they have done, and show them who truly rules Fire Country. With Naruto. After Naruto walked out of the throne room, he was told by the guard that they were escorted to the room with the survivors. So with that he shunned Pio to get to the others to relief them the news. When he got there he opened the doors to see the Uchiha occupants resting from the long journey from Konoha. 
As he looked around he sees Hitomi and Makoto with Mito asleep on a handmade futon. He walked over to them before making his presence known. Hey, Hitomi-chan, Makoto-chan. Just got done talking with Damio-sama, he said, ignoring the fact he added, Chan, at the end of Makoto's name. Though Makoto did notice and like Hitomi filed it for later. How did it go? Hitomi said, needing to know what's gonna happen with the rest of her clan and her Ka-san. Naruto just smiled before speaking. I have gained your clan's entrance and are able to live within the walls of the city also the clan is under the protection of the daimyo included with the whole of his personal samurai and fire guardians. He said, gaining shocked looks from Hitomi and Makoto along with some spectators that were listening to the conversation. Are really? We'll be able to live here free from the outside dangers and of Konoha. Said a teary-eyed Makoto. Naruto just nodded before he was pulled into a hug from a rather joyous Makoto. He looked at Hitomi to see a tear fall from her face showing she had not expected this to really happen. He mentally grinned since he always could do the impossible. That's when Hitomi remembers the situation in Konoha. What about Konoha? I'm pretty sure they try something even with Damio protecting them. She said, but was cut off when Naruto's face had a shark-like grin come up on his face making the two a bit nervous. Ho ho, not need to worry about them. Damio Sama has personally said it was high time they learned exactly who was in charge of Haino Kuni and was going there himself along with his personal samurai to deal with them. He said before he chuckled in a cold and dangerous tone. The two went wide eyed, the Damio himself was heading to Konoha. They'd a grin thinking of how some were gonna react to that. Naruto continued, he should be heading there the same time me and Mito head out as well. Now while this is happening, Hitomi-chan be sure that if you get in trouble you signal me the way I told you all right. He said earning a nod from Hitomi. Naruto smiled before looking at the confused Makoto, he reached into his pouch and pulled out a tri-pronged kanai. This got a audible gasp from Makoto since anyone would recognize that kanai. Naruto grabs Makoto's hand and places the kanai in her hands then closes it open before looking into her amazed yet confused eyes. Makoto-chan just like Hitomi Chan, this kanai will lead me back to you if you are in ever need of help. Just throw that kanai and I'll be there. I have a special seal placed on it so that if you are in danger, it will send a message back to me before I flash back to you. So use it when you need to, okay? He said with a gentle smile. Makoto looks at the kanai in her hand back to Naruto with wide eyes before looking back at it again. She couldn't get it out of her head to be given such a responsibility to be given the kanai that in history brought her friend Minato the name Konoha's Kiroi Senko, Yellow Flash. So she did the only thing she could logically think of at that exact moment. She walked closer to Naruto till she was practically smashing her body with her own and gave him a peck on the before moving away hiding her blush. Hitomi's eyes shot wide open before looking into Makoto's eyes to see an emotion she knew all too well. Love and gratitude, for the one person to help her when she needed it the most. She honestly didn't know what to think at the moment except replaying what she just saw over and over again. Her ka-san, Ed Naruto, on the. She looked to see a shocked Naruto touching his as his eyes were wide open in surprise. She sighed as she remembered all the times Naruto would come over she had seen the times her ka-san would look at him when he wasn't looking, but had shrugged it off not thinking it was important. But now she knew it meant something if what just happened was anything to go by. Naruto meanwhile was replaying what just happened in his head, before he looked in Makoto's direction that's when he saw the tiny blush on her face. He mentally sighed that was the third time he was ed, by a different woman. Now he may act like a dense fool around women, but he knows when one is interested in him and right now he doesn't know much on Megami since it had been when he was five years old, and he had yet to talk to her since then. Then there was Hitomi his recently revealed best friend. He honestly could say he had something for her, but didn't know as of yet. For Makoto she was his Ka-san's best friend when they grew up and the times of him visiting her flashed back into his head, the times he helped her when she needed it, watching over Sasuke when Fugaku was too induced in the clan to even care. That's also when his friends in Konoha came to his mind. Yugao, Hana, Anko and lastly Kurenai. Kami how many women did he care for in that way? He was confused about this. That's when strangely Mito flashed in his mind, but she was his sister for Kami's sake. How could he have feelings for her as well? 
Sure he loved her with all his heart, but did he love her more than a brother should? He didn't know and shook his head before getting control over himself he'd think on it later on. E.H.M. Well, Hitomi-chan, we have to get some sleep for tomorrow and Makoto-chan Damio-sama has assigned rooms for everyone in the palace till he can sort out a plot of land for the clan compound to be newly made. Naruto said getting a slow nod from Makoto since she was still getting over what she just did. Naruto smiled before going over the Mito's sleeping form and picked her up gently as to not wake her, after this he shifted her body till she had her head on his shoulder with her arms wrapped around his neck. He nodded at the two women before walking out the door. After this Makoto had assembled the Uchiha occupants and announced what the current situation on what was going to happen. That's when Naruto gained the eternal respect of the clan for helping them survive a full-out slaughter and bringing them to a new home. Hitomi watched this with a smile on her face before she too left to her assigned room. As she did she thought about the future ahead of them all. Naruto and Mito's room. Once Naruto was inside their room he had gently set Mito on her futon, but took a little trouble to have her let go of him. He then started grabbing his scrolls and setting them down on the table before he placing Zanjetsu beside his own futon that was beside Mito's own. After which he sighed before getting out of his clothes, though he never saw Mito slightly wake up so when he was taking off his black long-sleeved shirt he never saw her face light up like the sun and jump under the covers. Kayubi who watched the scene couldn't get the picture of Naruto's muscular chest out of her head and when she saw her container's reaction she decided to tease her. Wow, never knew Naruto-kun was that muscular under all those clothes of his. Was that a six-pack I wonder? Oh my Mito-chan. Daughter you, having pervy thoughts. Kayubi said. This got the immediate reaction out of the now wide awake girl since she blushed even harder making her long red hair pale in comparison. Q-chan, I. I wasn't. Don't deny it Mito-chan. I saw the way you looked at him if only for a split second, but I saw it. You. Like, him don't you? Kayubi said, putting the emphasis on, like. This made Mito bury her head even deeper into her pillow trying to think up an excuse to counter what Kayubi said. W well. I know you like him too. And don't think I don't know the thoughts running through your head when we see him. I can always hear them and especially when you're asleep you always mumble things like, Unaru kun there, or, ah Naruto kun, so ha, said a mentally grinning Mito. This made Kayubi blush the color of her fur, to think her container knew the things that had been happening with her and the fantasies she's had for her brother. Yeah, she will admit it Naruto was someone that had captured her heart albeit unintentionally, but still he had things other mortals never had. He was strong, confident, loyal to a fault and protective of his friends. She still remembered the night when he jumped in front of her crazed induced attack on his mother. That took guts never seen before. No mortal was as strong and yet brave as Naruto, and yes she also knew of his true power after all she was actually a divine entity that has seen the true side of humanity both good and bad. So it shouldn't have come to a surprise when she felt the feeling of Megami on him. That's when she knew Naruto was far more stronger than anyone knew and that attracted her to him even more. Well at least you didn't deny what I said earlier so you do like him don't you, she said, questioning her container. I, 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 gotta go, she said before cutting of connection. Kayubi still smiled at this Mito just couldn't see that she loved her brother more than that of a sister should, but keeps her feelings pushed down. She's gonna have to convince her soon that it doesn't matter if he was her brother, love comes in many ways. She might have not known love, but she knew the way it was. She only hoped that there was a way to get Naruto's love for herself as well. Back in the real world Mito had opened her eyes to peek over the covers to see Naruto getting into his futon. So when she quickly hid and waited, she had thought about what Kayubi said. Do I really? Like Naruto knee that way? Mito thought before she heard the sound of breathing, when she looked out of her covers she saw Naruto already asleep that's when her eyes started to soften. Although she was still only 10 years old she had the extraordinary ability to see through people's emotional defenses and it came very helpful and could also read people by looking into their eyes. But when it came to Naruto she always saw past the love he had shown for her as she grew up that he was tired. Exhausted even she never knew until a few months ago, but she came to the conclusion he was so tired of watching their backs for enemies or dealing with the stress of fighting the Konoha's governing body. She had truly never seen him sleep and not have a weapon at the ready in case of an attack, but now she could finally see Naruto look more peaceful and less tense than he ever was. 
When she looked at his face she was mesmerized by the way he just looked there wasn't a shred of the scowl when his body was tense and ready for an attack. That's when she saw him starting to shake and scowl even more, so she did the only thing that could come to her mind. She crawled closer to Naruto's body and laid her head on his chest, before wrapping her arms around his body as best as she could. She let her long red hair flow down covering her body. She then pulled the blankets over them, that's when Naruto's body started to look less tense and his scowl was replaced with a small smile. She smiled back, before she felt a pair of arms wrapped around her body she looked back to see his arms around her back as he pulled her deeper into him, and she welcomed it as she leaned into the crook of his neck whispering soothing words to help calm him down. It seemed to work as his trembling completely stopped and was fully relaxed. She felt his heartbeat slow down to the normal pace as well. She smiled as she embraced the warmth of her knee Naruto's body. Though secretly Kayubi was too. She wouldn't know that Naruto secretly loved the feeling of warmth cover his body like a blanket as it washed away the nightmares of his sins, and just enjoyed the warm feeling over his body. This was the scene no one would know about. Dot and only shared between these two for the rest of their lives. When morning had come, Naruto was already opening his eyes only to screw them shut mentally throwing curses at the sun, making Zanjetsu secretly amused at that. When he did get used to the sun blink the tiredness out of his eyes before trying to get up. Only to feel a weight on his body. He quickly looked down to see a red-haired body on his own he followed the hair till he saw Mito's sleeping face on his shoulder. He blinked before remembering the strange warmth cover his body when the nightmares came back. He smiled gently before ing her forehead. He gently started to shake her, when he stopped to see if it worked to wake her he only got a, m, my ramen. He smirked she definitely got Ka San's love for ramen even dreaming about it. So when he shaked her again he expected her to say something about ramen again. Imagine his surprise and shock when she said something totally different. Um, Naruto-kun. Dot let me sleep a little longer, she mumbled this made Naruto do a take back, Naruto-kun. When did he become that? What happened to, Naruto-ni, or, Ni-san? Before he had time to contemplate this he felt something over his face so when he opened his eyes from thinking his eyes snapped wide open seeing Mito's face an inch from his own. He only had a second to mutter gasp before Mito's locked with his own. He stayed rooted to the spot for what felt like an eternity which really was seconds before he gently hiding his panic lifted Mito's body and set her down in bed. After this he quickly got up, grabbed a scroll with the kanji for clothes, before going to the shower. He never saw the slight openings of Mito's eyes or the massive blush on her face as she remembered what she had just done. Sweet Kami, I just ed Naruto-kun. She mentally screamed waking up her tenant, which was gonna make it worse for the poor red head. Ooh, what's this? Did you just say you? Ed? Naruto-kun? Kayubi said with amusement in her tone. This made Mito freeze mental before blushing like crazy as Kayubi showed the memory of what she had just done over. Dot and over dot and over again. Kayubi just loved torturing her container. When Naruto had gotten out of the shower he had picked up his scroll and poofed out a new set of clothes. So when he walked back out with only his pants on he blinked in surprise to see Mito already woke up and was staring at him. With wide eyes and a big blush on her face, Naruto blinked before remembering the current attire he was wearing, or the lack of, before he blushed as well before quickly putting on a black muscle shirt. After this he just grinned breaking the embarrassing situation they were just in. Good morning Mito-chan. He said it seemed to work, since Mito's blush lessened and smiled back at him. Gee good morning naruto k -kun. She mumbled before realizing what she just said then the blush brightened. Naruto heard the kun part and decided to accept it for now, if Mito wanted to say it that way for now on she could. I mean it's not like it would change their relationship forever. Right? He then went to his personal belongings and started unsealing the rest of his clothes. As he did so he looked over his shoulder and saw Mito get up and get ready as well. As he looked at her the more he kept seeing his Ka-san in her, she just kept growing up to be like a clone of her and sometimes it hurt since he never got to say goodbye. He shook his head out of his musings at least he had Mito, the one person he'd protect with all his strength. With that he grabbed his trench coat and pulled it over him. After this he latched Zanjetsu onto his back fully wrapped in its casings. He looked then sat down and waited on Mito to get done. After a few minutes he opened his eyes after mentally planning on their next move. When he looked around he saw Mito already dressed, but attaching her kanai and shuriken pouches. He stood up surprising Mito, 
He then walked to the door as he spoke, Mito Chan, are you ready? He said, looking over his shoulder. He got a nod from the strangely quiet girl. This made him raise an eyebrow since Mito was usually hyperactive and wondered if she was alright. He continued on though, but still wondered if she would be okay. Although he never knew the thoughts running through her mind at the moment. Since when did I start calling him, Naruto kun? Or the fact I blush even more when I'm just around him? Ugh, I'm only 10 years old and already having these kind of thoughts and about my own brother. Though that last part didn't really matter to her strangely for some reason. High Shi gates at the gates you could see five figures standing at the marvelous entrance to High Shi, gathered around them was the populace of the city. For one of the figures was none of them their leader Iroh Mizaki with a scroll in hand. The other figures could be seen as Naruto dressed in his usual attire with Zanjetsu strapped to his back. Mito dressed in blue shinobi pants with blue shinobi sandals, along with this she wore a sleeveless red t-shirt that had the Uzumaki symbol stitched on the back. She also had her mother's trademark katana strapped to her hip, but she hadn't yet figured out a name for it since seeing as she heard her brother mumbled a name called Zanjetsu when he gazed at his own weapon she figured she would give her sword a name as well. Next was Hitomi dressed up in all-around black clothes as well as a cloak to shield her identity later on in her trip, beside her was her Ka San Makoto Uchiha. She had come to see off Hitomi along with Naruto and Mito and to wish them all a safe journey. Izo cleared his throat before speaking, Naruto-san as I said I would have the message of your arrival sent to the cage of Kumo and he has promised to send a group of his best shinobi to accompany you back to their village. This scroll here is your proof that you are who you say you are. He said handing the scroll to Naruto. Naruto spoke, Thank you Demio sama we really appreciate all that you have done for all of us. He said gesturing to Hitomi, Mito and Makoto. Izo just waved off his compliment before getting a serious look in his eyes. Also, I will be heading to Konoha today at a later time, so there won't be no need to worry about them for now on. Izo said gaining looks of gratitude from them all. Naruto smiled before speaking, Thank you and I do hope we see each other gain Iro sama he said in a formal manner. To yourself as well Naruto Dono and you to Mito Dono, he said getting a small blush of embarrassment from Mito since she wasn't used to this kind of thing and hid behind Naruto's leg. Naruto smiled at this before nodding at Izo before turning to Makoto. He smiled before he was on the receiving end of a bone crushing hug and would downright admit even though he could feel her pillows smooshed against his chest. Makoto would have surely snapped his spine in half if Zanjetsu wasn't in the way though he swore he could hear a sound that sounded like a pained groan from inside his head. He shook his head before returning it, Mito got one as well poor little girl didn't have the same protection. After this he surprisingly got a peck on the cheek from Makoto before she whispered a few words into his ear. Be safe, Naruto-kun and protect that little angel of sister of yours, she said before backing away, though they never saw the jealous glint that appeared in Mito's eyes. Naruto just gave a cheeky smile before rubbing his head in an oh so familiar manner from a certain red head. He turned to the last person and his eyes softened before placing a hand on Hitomi's shoulder and giving it a reassuring squeeze, since he had seen the emotions running through her eyes he knew she was very hesitant to leave him and go into the world alone. Remember Hitomi-chan, you have, that way to reach me so when you're in danger use it. Don't fret about what I'm doing use it when you're in a death-like situation and need the help, alright? He said gaining a small nod from the woman before she too pecked him on the other cheek before she kneeled down to Mito's level. Mito, do me a favor. Protect this lump when he gets in over his head, because sometimes he always does and although he's very strong, he will need someone there to help him. Can you do that for me? She said. Mito's eyes lit up and smiled, of course I can. Naruto-kun here will always have me to help him when he needs it. She said pumping her fist into the air. Finishing it off with the, datbeo. This struck a chord into Naruto that was no just like his Ka San would do. She always had a phrase when she promised something and it made his heart warm seeing Mito become more and more like Kashina every day. This made Makoto's eyes glaze over in remembrance, as well remembering her time with Kashina as they grew up and smiled softly at the little red head. Naruto shook his head before ruffling Mito's head making her face go into the signature pout with the blush as well. Naruto just smirked and waved off before jumping into the forests followed by a grinning Mito as she too waved to the people behind her. After they had left Hitomi too had given one last hug to her Kasan, before bowing to the daimyo then jumping into the forests as well to go on her long journey. 
After this Iroh's eyes narrowed remembering Konoha and snapped his fingers, second later a samurai landed beside him. Captain get me four battalions of my personal samurai and twenty-one battalion of fire monks and six of my elite fire guardians we will need them, he said with a commanding tone as he strolled back through the separating crowd. The samurai behind his helmet was gaping at what his leader just said and with little hesitance asked, if I may be so bold your majesty, but what for? Are we going into battle? He said a little wary of the answer. Izo just kept walking as he spoke to his soldier, in a way if it comes down to it, then yes we will. But right now we are all heading to Konohagakure and remind them all who is truly the leader of Hai no Kuni, he said before looking at his samurai. Now get moving soldier and rally the army, he said. This got a quick nod from the man before he disappeared in a burst of speed. Izo then turned around and kept walking. As he did so he kept thinking of what he could do. That's when he grinned, remembering a certain country running low on missions as were a few other countries as well. Hai no Kuni border entering Kaminari no Kuni border. They had sped up fast to get to the other border, so this way they could get there as fast as they could. Although Naruto could go much faster he was keeping his pace down so Mito could follow him. After all this was her first time out of Konoha or Hai no Kuni after all. Right now they were taking a break from jumping through tree, through tree and just started walking to rest for a little bit. As they did so Naruto could sense Mito's gaze on him again and sighed while mentally thinking of why she was. Was it because he wasn't carrying her like he used to? Was it because he wasn't playing with her like he usually did? Or his eyes widened dramatically, did she remember that that happened this morning? He gulped audibly and wondered if she was mad or at the least confused, because sure as hell he was. Naruto-kun. Mito said Naruto blinked and looked at Mito, that's when he saw her curious eyes something that he was nervous about for some reason. He gulped before speaking, yes, Mito-chan what is it? He said gently. Mito looked a bit hesitant before looking at the ground as she spoke softly, w well I was wondering. Could you? Carry me like you used to when I was little? She said cutely. Naruto blinked before chuckling seems he was worried about nothing, sure Mito-chan, just hang on. Tight. He said before appearing behind her shocking her of his speed and grabbing her sides and lifting her till she was on his shoulder with her hands on his head. She blinked as she realized how fast he did that. She secretly wished she was that fast as well. But she shrugged before she circled her arms around his head laying her head in his soft and yet somehow mane like hair. She fingered with a few strands of spiky hair jutting from his head, she always liked how Naruto had spiky hair it made him more defined in her opinion more unique if she had to say. Though she can't remember the last time she was on his shoulders like this. She mentally thought about it and remembered it during the time when she was just a toddler, she had just gotten out of her first day in the academy and when some bullies and their parents came to hurt her. Naruto came upon them seen and she remembered that day for the rest of her life. He was like a force to be reckoned with a god that had been angered, she watched strangely when he decimated and beat the parents into a bloody pulp before threatening the kids before ordering them to drag their sorry excuses for parents away before they die. That's when she had cried in his arms before he soothed her and gave her a ride on his shoulders that day. That was also the day she decided her favorite spot in the world was on his shoulders watching the sun go down. She shook her head of the thoughts when another thought came to her attention and decided to speak, a Anyo. Naruto-kun, she said. Naruto who at the moment was focusing on the road and let Mito play with his hair, hummed, a response signaling he was listening to her. Well, I was wondering well more like always been curious of something, she said, making Naruto wonder what she was thinking about. Yes, what is it? He said, well, ever since you went off to fight Ia and came back I've always been curious about your weapon. It's nothing like anything I've ever seen before or read about in Ka San's journals about all swords classes. Yours is not classified in any of them and only comes close to the class category of one of the legendary seven swordsmen's weapons and it's called the Kubikiribocho, the decapitating carving knife, wielded by Momochi Zabuza, she said. Naruto raised an eyebrow in surprise, one for her being the first besides Yugo that has ever asked about his weapon and was curious as to what it was, and two of Mito's information on weaponry with swords. He mentally cried anime tears and praising Mito saying, she is the number one student any teacher would give their left leg for. He smiled before speaking, wow, good job Mito-chan you really did your homework and yes you're correct my weapon is close in category to that weapon, 
and like his its sentiment, but it's much different than the blade itself, he said. Mito being the curious girl she was, like what? And what do you mean by sentiment? She said with an adorable thoughtful expression on her face. Naruto just smiled and answered her. Nah, more like the blade has a mind of its own if you will and has its very own name, but I'm sure you already know that when you eavesdrop on me, when you think I don't know it, he said with a shit-eating grin. This made her blush knowing she was caught on that one, so she closed her eyes sticked out her tongue and bombed her head a little. If Naruto had seen that though he would have swore that as was probably the cutest thing he ever saw. Though, my sword's name. Is Zanjetsu. He is my partner in battle. We fight as one. We know each other's abilities. Dot and weaknesses. We fight as one. Dot and. Dot die as one. He said, speaking the words he knew from his years of training with his inner spirit. This made Mito stare at Naruto in awe, to think he cared so much for his weapon like that. Yeah, she loved her weapon to death, but the words Naruto spoke, they made her feel a tremor go through her body that held so much power. Dot and wisdom that it actually made her feel so small in comparison. She looked at her weapon and tightened her grip on the handle making a silent promise to be more in touch with her katana than just using it as a weapon. Unknown to the both of them except a certain goddess Mito's katana glowed a bright red. That's when Naruto's trained senses picked up rustling of leaves and the sound of footsteps hitting treetops. So he unnoticeably shifted until he was in a position to defend himself. So. You're Naruto. Konoha's ex Anbu Sutaicho, or, should I say, Shinigami? said a voice from within the forest. Naruto tensed himself, for some reason, whoever this person was, he was, strong he could feel it. And with Mito with him, he couldn't go all out. He could feel her nervous and shaking body, he knew she was scared after all the training he put her through. This was the first time she was ever in this kind of situation. He relaxed himself as he calmed his breathing. That's when he felt that itch in the back of his mind get stronger. Much stronger than it usually was. He grabbed his head in pain as he looked around the area for the enemy. That's when he saw the flash of movement, if only barely before drawing Zanjetsu. Clang. Steel met steel. The sparks flew as the ground cracked under the pressure. Naruto then jumping back from where he was, before looking to make sure Mito was okay. When he saw her quivering his mind snapped at attention to end this quick. So when he looked back to see his opponent wasn't he in shock to see. A man that wore something striking similar to what he first wore when he became Megami's avatar. He looked at the man's all around appearance and sees the clothing more of opposite to his, it was white on the outside with it black on the inside. He also wore black socks with Waraji. He then looks at the mon's face only to see a white helmet, thing on the left side of his head. It had what looked like a horn and oddly shaped grooves going down the bottom. When he looked at the mon's eyes he saw green eyes with cat slit pupils. He also saw that his skin was a pale color, deathly pale, but the man didn't look sick at all. Hell the man didn't show a single emotion on his face. That's when he saw the teal lines descend from his eyes, he also had messy black hair and a thin yet muscular frame. He looked to see the man holding out what looked to be a katana, it was the normal length of any other katana and it had a green handle and white guard. But he knew never to judge a book by its cover and could actually feel the power coming of both this strange man and his katana. He warily unveiled his zanpakuto. Now he spoke, now, excuse me, but. Dot who are you? Dot and what do you want with me? Naruto said with a certain edge at his tone. The man just looked on at him impassively before closing his eyes. Why I'm here isn't important for you will not survive till today. He said before disappearing with a static left where he stood. Naruto only had a split second to reflexively Shunpo or Mito would have been slashed by that mons attack. He looked at Mito's now trembling body and knew he had to end this quick. He glared at the man as his eyes took on a bright blue. Zanjetsu started to tremble in his hands since he hadn't had a good fight for a long time. He then stretched out his senses and to his relief felt four strong chakra signatures coming his way, but they weren't as strong as though, but the last one though had bigger reserves than anyone except for Mito. He cut out of his musings when he had to dodge yet again, from the mons attack before putting Zanjetsu in front of him blocking another attacking. But the pressure from the mons swing added with the mons strength alone. Made a crater where he stood, Naruto trembled using everything he had to push the man back before he swung at him which to normal speeds looked like a blur. But to the man it seemed in slow motion and just bent his back dodging the swing. 
Naruto was frowning now he couldn't fight at full strength if Mito was with him. Dot she would get hurt. He could only pray those chakra signatures were who he thinks they are, he looked at the man as he lowered Zanjetsu just a bit, but still at the ready to defend once again. Let me ask this at least. What is your name? Naruto said still hearing the whimpers coming from Mito's quivering body. The man just closed his eyes once more like he was in thought before speaking, my name. I don't see how it is important to someone who is about to die, but I shall at least give you that much information before I strike you down. My name is Ukiora Cipher, and I am the person that will end your existence from this world, he said. Naruto just narrowed his eyes as his Ryatsu started coming off him forming a protective field around Mito as well as signaling those shinobi to hurry up. He looked at the newly revealed Ukiora and growled, very well. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, and I doubt you will kill me he said hoping to at least buy some time. Kami's realm Megami was scowling at the predicament that was happening with her avatar, she honestly didn't expect for them to find him so soon, and right now she knew Naruto wasn't strong enough to handle this person, well not with Mito with him. For this was a battle between beings not of that realm anymore, and she knew Naruto was holding back much more since Mito was with him. When she looked at Kami she also saw her frowning at the predicament Naruto was in. She knew who this man was and knew where he came from. The man was one of a few that served under that man. The one who thinks he can cross into gods and goddesses territory. The fool. He will get his soon enough. When she shook her head of the thoughts and looked back at the fighting she could see Naruto reacting as fast as he could holding back the man. She knew why he was buying time, the Kumo shinobi that was assigned to take them to Kumo would be able to at least take Mito away from harm's way. That's when the true battle would begin. Back with Naruto. Ukiora just shook his head before appearing beside Naruto bringing down his sword. Reacting quickly Naruto brought Zanjetsu up and blocked the strike and then thrusting his left hand into the monk's stomach releasing a burst of spiritual energy he called out, Hato number one. Show, thrust, he stated making Ukiora fly back a few feet smashing into a few trees. Naruto then quickly checked on Mito and saw her scared and was in a shocked induced fear state. He quickly shook her out of her stupor till she looked at Naruto's face. He stated seriously yet softly as to not make her worried. Mito chan, I sense the Kumo shinobi on their way and I know I always told you to never use unless absolutely necessary, but I need you to use Kyubi's chakra and use all your speed to get to their location while I fight this man. Can you do this? He said. Mito was about to answer him until she saw Ukiora behind Naruto she widened her eyes as the man brought his katana down at Naruto's body. She was about to scream for him to get out of the way, until she watched in a flash of steel. Naruto blocked the attack with Zanjetsu. He looked back at her only for him to sigh in relief, when he sees four figures jump from the trees. He quickly acts and grabs Mito and her katana and appears in front of the group shocking them all. He quickly scans them over and sees the youngest looking from them all being a boy with short spiky white hair. He was dark skinned and had dark eyes with lines curving upwards. He wears a dark kumo ninja attire with a overlong shirt with a hood, he had red bandage arm guards and kumogakur shin guards, finishing his attire was a black clothes kumogakur headband tied around his forehead. The next one was a spiky haired red haired woman with her hair going past her shoulders. She too was dark skinned and had piercing amber eyes. She wore a long short sleeved dress as her ninja attire. Completing this was Kumogakure flak jacket, two simple earrings, boots with white soles and lastly wears her Kumogakure headband like a bandana. She also carried a long sword strapped to her back. The next one was a tall woman almost as tall as he was, she had short blonde hair with an asymmetrical cut, which was shorter in the back and longer in the front blue eyes that almost had the same shade as his own, she also had the body that rivaled Tsunade of the Senin. She wore a very low cut outfit with mesh armor underneath, a short skirt and red handguards, high boots and what appears to be a modified Kumogakure flak jacket that covers her stomach only, she also apparently has a sword strapped horizontally to her lower back. The finally person was a woman with long light blonde hair that went down her lower back, she had it tied in a big ponytail as well. She wore a Kumogakure headband tied around her forehead, she also wore the standard Kumo Anbu uniform with the black pants and shirt tight against her body. She also had a kanai punch on her left thigh and wore fingerless purple gloves. When Naruto was quickly done analyzing them he fished out of the scroll given to him by Izo and spoke, look, 
I know why you're here and I can honestly say I'm so relieved you are please I need you to take Mito with you from a far enough distance this scroll here will identify me and her the ones you are supposed to meet up with. I don't have time to explain so just go, he said although trembling gently placed Mito in the arms of the long blonde haired one and handed the scroll to the short blonde haired one, after this he gave them a glare that would freeze hell itself. And also protect her with your life he said before he twirled around blocking the strike that was about to slice him through the middle. He quickly roundhouse kicked the guy and chased after him, ignoring the desperate and worried cry from Mito, it saddened and broke him that he left her with them, but he trusted the Rakage's subordinates to defend her, and he didn't want her seeing him fight like he was about to now. With the Kumo shinobi they just stood shocked still while Mito was struggling in the hold of the long blonde haired woman who looked deep in thought at the moment. The dark-skinned boy was nervously looking at where Naruto stood before looking at his shocked teammates and spoke, W was. T that, he said. Yes, that was no doubt the very same man that left Konoha and marked as a missing nin in their book and was also the very same man. That is marked as one of the most dangerous shinobi in the world. Now I know why Reikage Sama was so serious about this secure and retrieve mission, said Samui. Karui just kept looking on where the man jumped off into. She didn't even see the man block that strike from the mysterious attacker, but whoever it was to get an ex Anbu Sotecho worried must be one strong person. If only she knew how right she was. Within Yugito's mind, she was having a mental conversation with her tenant. Nibi, there was something wrong. I sensed a different energy being used around here. Would you know what this is? She asked the oddly silent Nibi. Said two tailed Biju was replaying what she had just seen and knew directly since her powers were connected to the goddess of death Megami that the man they had just seen was someone she had blessed in some way. Dot she just didn't know what, she just answered Yugito's question with a simple answer. Just watch kitten, if I'm right about my assumption you're about to see something amazing and completely out of this world. Said the Nibi ending it with her usual purr. This made Yugito blink in surprise was that man really that strong? As if reading her thoughts, yes kitten, he is much more than he appears to be, hell the one you're holding is nothing but a child yet I can smell my big sister Kyubi in her. This got a wide-eyed look from her she then glanced down to see the still struggling Mito in her arms, she then pat the girl on the head, this made the girl snap her gaze up at her, please let me go, I need to go help Naruto-kun, she said, Yugito raised an eyebrow at her worried tone and looked at her teammates. What do you guys think? Should we go help him, or stay out of his way, and let him handle it? She said, this got exchanged looks from the others before Samui decided. We can't interfere in a fight like this, for some reason I have a feeling it's gonna be go beyond our level, but that doesn't mean we can't go watch and make sure he doesn't need help after the fight is over. She said with her eyes glancing back at the forest that by now had powerful shockwaves shaking the area. Karui and Omoe looked at each other and shrugged before nodding as well. Very well then let's go and see if the truth of this man's strength is what's said to be true. Said Yugito with a little excitement in her voice. Nibi sensed this and giggled perversely. You just want to soak up that hunk of man's body and have fantasies of riding him till you ho. Nibi. Mentally screamed a blushing Yugito. Nibi just giggled at her container's reaction and knew the now best way to tease her. Then let's go. Said Samui with that the four with a worried to death Mito in the arms of Yugito rushed off to at least try and help Naruto with his current opponent. Ten minutes ago with Naruto and Ukiora Naruto appeared out of thin air to see the man dusting of his clothes as he stood there like he wasn't even affected from the last hit. Naruto frowned before speaking, I don't know what you have against me, but you have asked for a fight you certainly will not want again. That is, if you survive this first encounter. He said before appearing behind the slightly shocked Ukiora, that's when Naruto tried to stab him. But Ukiora reacted faster and in turn blocked the blunt with his katana, Naruto then spun the other way and backhanded the man across the face making him skid a few feet back. While Ukiora was apparently trying to regain his bearings Naruto was conversing with Zanjetsu. Zanjetsu-san, we need to think up a plan, I know this guy has more power than he truly shows, but then again so do we but I must conserve and not show my true power yet. Hum. Let's see how he fights play it out a little longer, and if he gets serious so shall we, till then try and find out how he fights. Till then Naruto I'm gonna go try and block whatever is trying to get out, said Zanjetsu before he faded into the back of his mind. Naruto mentally nodded before looking at Ukiora who just blinked and looked back at him with curious eyes. 
and in a split second they both disappeared leaving shockwaves blowing in the area. Each clash of the blades created a crater, each hit left trees crushed or the ground flattened. Each time they collided they made the forests and ground itself uproot. Ulkiora appeared behind Naruto as they were in the air and aimed his index finger at him and calmly stated, Bala, he stated before a shot of a shaped bullet hurtled toward at Naruto, though he calmly showed the back of his hand and stated, Bakudo number 8. Seiki, repulse, that's when a orb the size of Naruto's head grew and blew back the Bala at Ulkiora. Though he only swatted the Bala away before, appearing above Naruto's sword drawn about to decapitate him. Naruto ducked under the blow and swung Zanjetsu upward only for him to miss. He quickly shunned Pio'd before Ulkiora crushed the ground he was at under his foot. Naruto then quickly leaned his head to the right before a katana appeared a second later. He reacted quickly grabbing the offending arm then kicked the now revealed Ulkiora, this kick made the man crash into a couple of trees as well as create a trench in the ground. Hum. Looks like adding physical energy with my attacks does more damage. He said mumbled before he jumped back before Ulkiora appeared once more. They stared down one another brandishing their weapons at each other. That's when Ulkiora closed his eyes once more before speaking. You, are. Most definitely. A. Curious one, he muttered before disappearing faster than before, Naruto widened his eyes. That's when a slash made its way across his chest appeared, blood spurt out as Ulkiora appeared behind him, holding his katana with a thin line of blood dripping from the end. He looked over his shoulder and said, Show. Show me why. You are called the Reaper. The living god of death. He muttered, before he kicked Naruto in the back making Naruto fly unnaturally fast hitting trees before crashing into the ground making a crater. Ulkiora appeared above Naruto and before Naruto could make a comeback, Ulkiora raised his index finger pointing straight at him and said, Saro, before a green-shaped attack shot out. It went toward Naruto's prone form. Naruto's eyes widened and shunned Pio'd away from the area, good thing to before an atomic explosion erupted from where he last was. Naruto appeared a few yards away with a shredded attire and bleeding profusely from the chest and arm. If I was a second late I would have been killed, and he's moving much faster than before, add in the fact he using something similar to Shunpo, makes it all the harder for me. I guess there's no reason to hold back anymore. He mentally thought before jumping away from where he stood, that's when Ulkiora appeared. I see, you're much faster. Than you were before. I guess I'll get serious then. Naruto said and with that he stabbed Zanjetsu into the ground and crossed his arms over his chest. That's when a blue spiritual hue of energy started surrounding him. Ulkiora raised a slightly curious eyebrow. Wonder what he plans to do now. He thought as the wind starts circling around Naruto and the trees started swaying back and forth, and that's when the Kumo Shinobi appeared a short ways from the battlefield. Present with the Kumo Shinobi, holy shit. Did you see that? That Naruto guy and the bucket wearing dude are fast, and that explosion, I bet even the neighboring countries felt that, said a nervous Omoe. Karui just nodded dumbly with a silent agreement appeared in the eyes of Samui and Yugito, as they were mentally shocked at the speed and power that was happening in front of them. They had just gotten there when they were blew back from a shockwave of wind as the two titans clashed, they had gotten themselves situated around a few trees so they could watch without being in Naruto's way, or close to being killed. Though Mito had watched the battle with awe and shock, never had she known that Naruto since he had raised her showed such power before and the techniques he used wasn't like ninjutsu, but it was similar in a way. She had watched him fully utilize Zanjetsu as him and the man fought at speeds that weren't meant for humans, and couldn't even comprehend. That's when she saw Naruto's hurt form. She was starting to tear up while watching his blood run down his injured body. That is until she saw his action of stabbing Zanjetsu into the ground and placing himself in that stance. That's when she heard Kayubi's voice. Mito chan, what you're seeing now is something Naruto has kept from the world for as long as you were born. No one knows of what he really is except me, and I'm taking a wild guess that my little sister Nibi does as well, said Kayubi. She was watching from outside Mito's the battle that was taking on, and couldn't be more shocked. She knew Naruto was strong and faster than even his father. But at the speeds he was going at now just made all the speed he showed to Mito look slow in comparison. Mito heard what Kayubi said and was curious of what she meant, Naruto was hiding something. Sure she always wondered about Naruto and knew he was holding something back, but she didn't know what it exactly was. As if knowing her thoughts, 
You're about to find out what it exactly was Naruto had been keeping secret from everyone if only a small bit, but you will see. Naruto's true power being used. I don't want you to even blink I will channel chakra to your eyes so this way you will be able to watch the fight since I'm sure. Dot it's gonna go beyond mortal measures. Kayubi said, before a small amount her chakra channeled into Mito's eyes. They changed from the violet orbs to a crimson with a black slit in the middle. The same secretly happened with Yugito as she too wanted to watch was gonna happen. They all unintentionally got ready, but for what? They didn't know, but knew somehow, it was gonna be big. Very big. With Naruto and Ukiora the spiritual blue energy outlining Naruto's body was getting more wild and chaotic, it had tendrils, for the energy lashing out smacking the ground cracking it or tearing trees. Though no one could still see any difference in his stance, they could see a slight curious expression on Ukiora's face. It had been only three minutes since Naruto entered the stance, but it felt like an eternity to everyone there. The shaking of the area got worse. Cracks and tremors appeared in the ground, the trees grew uprooted while the energy around Naruto got even worse. Ukiora though was taking all this in stride and knew even though he didn't show any kind of emotion, he was a bit curious and a small amount of excitement rushed through his body. Kami's realm, so, he's gonna release it. Bout damn time that thing has been on him for so long, said Megami. Yeah, but what is it exactly? Only you know what it is since you are the only being connected to his power in this dimension. So do you have idea what he's gonna do? said Kami as she watched on with an interested face. Megami only grinned which unnerved Kami a bit before she spoke, Naruto-kun has found something was only limiting his power, which means he found the limiter. I put on him so he wouldn't alarm others that are spiritually aware and wouldn't go out to find him, like a certain group we know of. Anyway he only found a temporary way to release the limiter, but even that is enough to help turn the tides of this battle. Even now with Naruto's current skill he won't match up to that man so he will need to fight seriously if he's gonna have a chance to beat him," said Megami with a serious look on her face. Kami's eyes widened at this and stared at the scene they were watching with anxiety mixed with anticipation, she spoke while doing this. And you're happy about him temporary taking it off, why? She said. Megami only grinned much more than before as she stared lovingly at Naruto's form, for this way you my sister will see the power he has been holding back. Even when he used Bankai even then I'll admit it was impressive for my avatar to reach such a stage the power behind it along with his true abilities and true appearance were locked away into this limiter. She said with a slight regret in the tone. Kami snapped her neck looking at her sister way and spoke. What do you mean? All the power he's been using now is only a scratch to what's been sealed. And what do you mean his appearance? Megami. What has the limiter actually sealed away from him? She said a bit nervous at the end. Megami just gave her a sideway glance before looking back at Naruto's form, that limiter, was my strongest one Kami-chan. But it did something unexpected it sealed much more than it was supposed to. You see the power and speed he's been using at this moment was his alone from the physical human body, all the training he's done in speed and my techniques was only part of his power. What you have seen is only a scratch on the surface of what Naruto really is. As for appearance well. She said this with a grin coming up her face and slight pink blush coming up as well. This made Kami gape in surprise, Naruto was only fighting with human limits, he fought this man at set limits for humans. That's when her eyes grew as wide as they possibly could, if that was true. Dot how powerful was Naruto when he temporarily removed the limiter. That's when she saw the pink blush on Megami's face and remembered it also sealed part of his appearance as well, and from what she knew Megami never blushed well except when they saw Naruto's first time reaching Bankai. That will be forever ingrained in her mind for the rest of her immortal days. She only had one more question, um, what will happen when he does release it? said Kami. Megami just closed her eyes and spoke, when the limiter gets released Naruto's true abilities come out, his power, speed, hell even his spiritual energy will dramatically increase dramatically. This though will only be enough to at least bring out a draw between them, she said. Kami only nodded before looking at Naruto's now glowing form in wonder. With Naruto and Ukiora Ukiora now stood still waiting for what his opponent was doing, even now he could feel the rise of his spiritual energy, and his Ryatsu was going going up higher as well. Though he did feel a bit of fluctuating irregularly. That's when he was shaken out of his thoughts when Naruto uncrossed his arms to unveil his pure concentrated face. Ukiora saw the look in his eyes when he did this, and it inwardly surprised him. 
Naruto's eyes were nothing more than bright blue nothing more than that you couldn't see a pupil, iris anything except a bright blue of where his eyes used to be. That's when he knew Naruto was ready to unleash whatever it was, so he got ready keeping his sword straight and gazing down on his opponent. Naruto was gritting his teeth while focusing as hard as he could, that's when he felt it. He shot his arms out to his sides and yelled, Limiter Kai. He yelled before he erupted in a flash of light, this temporary blinded Ulkiora as well as the audience. But that didn't mess with their hearing so when they heard a explosion of gigantic proportions erupt from where Naruto stood it shook them to the core. Hell every village from lightning country to high no kuni could see the bright light. The sky itself was lit up by the explosion. The clouds parted or disappeared from the bright light. Though someone could hear the distant voice of a girl. Mito before the explosion saw the light erupt from Naruto and yelled as it took him in, Naruto-kun, she said before the light blinded them all. When the light started dissipating Ulkiora was the first one to see what happened afterwards. He was in front of a giant crater beneath his feet. When he raised his head to look for Naruto he sees smoke covering where he stood although he could see it already clearing up. So when everyone was able to get their sight back weren't they all in shock when the smoke fully cleared showing a different Naruto. The figured showed the same height Naruto was just a few inches taller making him 5 feet 9. He wore the Shinigami attire except a few key pieces for one instead of socks or waraji for footwear were black anbu boots, upper torso was also showed his muscular chest and sick pack. He had mesh over this finishing the customized design was a black hyori with tear's end at the bottom, across his chest was a red rosary strap. He also changed physically his hair had grown noticeably longer and less spiky, more of a tamed. The spikes fell down with it almost covering his eyes, it also reached past his neckline and to the shoulder blades. His eyes changed from the vibrant sapphire they were to icy blue that showed a maelstrom of power within that no one could control. His facial features were more defined with his face more angular and eye more narrow like that of his father. His arms now visible showed rock hard muscles that were covered from his former attire. Lastly in his right hand was Zanjetsu glowing bright blue. Ulkiora's eyes were now wide in shock now his suspicions were confirmed, this man. Dot was a Shinigami. Second later he had blocked a strike from Naruto pushing him a few feet. That's when he saw the ferocity in his eyes knowing the man was gonna try and end it quickly. He pushed back and they separated. Naruto then quickly threw Zanjetsu up before grabbing the end of the bandage, and with the shock of Ulkiora was actually spinning the weapon at fast speeds. If that wasn't enough Naruto was much faster than he was before. So with he used, Sonido, and Naruto using, Shunpo, that's when the battle began. Clang. Steel met steel once more. Naruto appeared above Ulkiora and swung Zanjetsu almost slicing the mon's right arm off. If it wasn't for the man blocking the attack with his own katana. They disappeared once more before Ulkiora appeared in the air above the now appearing Naruto and said, Saro, before the green blast of spiritual energy blasted headed its way to Naruto. Naruto turned in time and raised his right arm and stated, Hado number 33 Sokatsui, blue fire, crash down he said blasting a blue spiritual energy attack counteracting the Saro. This resulted in a massive explosion in the air, making the two opponents fly back a bit. With that Naruto appeared out of the smoke, he spinned around blocking a slash at his back, before gathered his spiritual energy into Zanjetsu and pushing harder. This resulted in a visible blue blade-like attack coming off Zanjetsu heading for him. Ulkiora though cut down the attack only for him to be get grabbed by the head and slammed into the ground making a crater. Naruto inwardly didn't use such vicious tactics, but had to beat this person quickly. That's when he was punched in the stomach before backhanded away from where he stood. When he tried to stand up he was slammed back down from Ulkiora's foot. When he looked up his eyes widened, Ulkiora didn't have a scratch on him, he quickly shunned Piyod before where he laid was Ulkiora's foot and a small crater. When he appeared a few yards away from Ulkiora he got in stance and disappeared then reappeared in front of Ulkiora then his swung downward which Ulkiora blocked once again. Naruto then pulled back spin Zanjetsu again before letting it go at fast speeds at Ulkiora where if the pale man didn't dodge it, he would have been stabbed through the chest. After this Ulkiora appeared in front of Naruto and tried to swing his sword down. Only for his wrist to be stopped by Naruto's hand and having Naruto's other hand placed in front of his face, he then stated, eat this, Hado number 63. Raikoho, thunder roar seer, Naruto said, that's when yellow electrical and spiritual energy gathered at the base of Naruto's palm and released it into Ulkiora's face. 
with the Kumo Shinobi, sweet Kami, this is unreal, said Karui, as her eyes were wide glued on the fight before them she had long since given up trying to catch up when they vanished and appeared somewhere else in the area. She only keeps her attention on when they're visible, even then she sees them do things that are either strange to her or downright impossible. I mean when do you see someone be that fast, or not die from the hits either we're getting. Omoe just ed on his ur nervously, if they keep fighting like this then they'll get attention from neighboring villages and that will lead to the demio knowing then he'll spread the news to the other demios, then, he said, but was cut off when Karui punched him in the head, Baka. Don't over exaggerate everything, she said. Samui though was keeping her sharp keen blue eyes on the battle before her, she knew the man they were told to meet up with was strong hell stronger than a cage, but what she was seeing now blew that out of proportions. Even an army of cages wouldn't match up to this. The speed used surpassed the rumors she heard about the legendary Hiroishin no Jutsu, the strength surpassed of Tsunade of the Senen's own and the techniques looked to be stronger than any ninjutsu used before, even if they were strange. Yugito and Mito with both their tenants were completely shocked, the speed, power and abilities both used were otherworldly. It was never recorded in history that someone had used those kind of abilities. But the change to Naruto was a big shock to Mito she always remembered her brother's appearance through and through, but now he looked different, he looked almost like their two San. But. Naruto was different, he wasn't the fun-loving joking brother she knew. He was now a deadly warrior using tactics that would kill a normal human in a second. A shinobi though would survive some hits, but even the toughest of them all wouldn't last that long in this kind of fight. You got that right. What you're seeing now is a fight that surpasses mortal understanding. Yes, some humans might survive some hits, but that's to an extent. Mito-chan, what you're seeing now is another side of Naruto. Something you weren't meant to see yet, this is the side of him when he's deadly serious about something. Kayubi said. Mito kept her eyes fully on Naruto and remembered her words, and could see it was true. Naruto was very different than before, he was always looking for a vital area to attack and end his opponent and if the pale man hadn't blocked the attacks she was sure the man would have died long ago. She only hoped that Naruto made it out okay. Kami's realm. In the realm of Kami, the two goddess couldn't take their eyes of the fight even if the two were moving slow in their eyes. It was an interesting battle, Megami's avatar against a being Azul Kiora. It showed the full development of Naruto's abilities and skill with using Megami's very own power. Though Kami and Megami blushed a real dark shade of red when they saw his transformation, and mentally agreed on one thing. Naruto had a body built for a god the way he was going now. Megami spoke while watching her avatar, that's what happens when he releases the limiter if only for a little bit, his true capabilities with being my avatar comes out, this is basically the true Naruto Kami Chan. Everything that was part Shinigami was sealed except for the minor things. The power behind most of his attacks before were locked away. She said pulling. Kami just looked at her before looking at Naruto, she honestly would express Naruto interested her badly, I see. By curiosity though. Dot has he ever released Bankai in this state? She said. Megami just looked at her with cold eyes which unnerved her a bit. No, and if he does. Let's hope it doesn't come to that she said in a tone of finality and, sadness? Kami just blinked before looking back at the fight, slightly praying she could meet Naruto herself one day. Back with Naruto and Ukiora this resulted in blowing the man back into the demolished forests. Naruto breathed out a sigh and placing Zanjetsu on his shoulders holding the handle with his right hand, well I think that did it. He said, with that he turned around and began to walk away. Where? Do you think you're going? Said a voice. Naruto looked back only to get blasted by a supercharged Sero blasting him into the forests before it resulted in a nuclear explosion. This rocked the shook the whole area and pretty sure half a five mile radius. Mito's eyes widened in shock when this happened, but before she could say anything. Don't worry Mito-chan. I can sense Naruto-kun is okay, no need to worry. This made her slightly relaxed, but couldn't help but be worried for Naruto. Back in the destroyed crater. Ulkiora appeared atop it looking down in the smoking middle, there lay Naruto's struggling form. Naruto had at the last second shielded himself by surrounding himself in a shell of condensed spiritual energy, but even then he had numerous injuries. Two broken ribs, he could feel that, a nasty burn on his back three bloody gashes among his chest from when he landed. And lastly his face had blood dripping down from his head and over his face. Naruto struggled himself, before he heard Ulkiora speak. 
I see, this is your limit. I expected more from you, but I guess. My expectations for you were to high. But know this. When you die, so too. Will your sibling. After that was said, Naruto's mind snapped at attention and stood up ignoring the pain in his body. He glared into the green slitted eyes of his opponent, Don. Tiu Ying dare touch her. Naruto said, Ukiora only shook his head before speaking. You are in no position, to tell me what to do, now lie down and die, like the filthy human you are. He said in a monotone voice. With that Ukiora turned away and was walking away. Naruto glared at the ground thinking on what he could do, before he remembered the one thing he could do. That's a last resort, but what other choice do I have? But can I even achieve it with the limiter off? Though I don't have a choice in the matter, Zanjetsu you ready partner? He mentally thought. Always Naruto, but be ready the thing within your mind I've been trying to hold back may find this as a chance to come out when you use this form. So please do your best to end this quickly. Zanjetsu said through Naruto's inner world. Naruto nodded faintly before he slowly stood up, before releasing a burst of his Ryatsu. This got the reaction for Ukiora turned around with a curious expression on his face. Well it would seem you have a bit more fight left in you. Then let us see what you can do. Foolish Shinigami, he said at the end. Naruto just looked down at the ground his hair shadowing his eyes. He raised his right hand holding Zanjetsu and swung it to his forefront and placed his left hand onto his right forearm. This action made Ukiora a bit more curious as to what the man was gonna do. That's when blue spiritual energy started coming off Naruto, the flowing end of Naruto's Zanjetsu started to swirl around his right arm, before it completely wrapped around his arm and the ground around him cracked. When Naruto raised his head up Ukiora saw his eyes change. They showed a glowing blue in the center with it also outlining his pupil. Naruto spoke, now I see, you weren't going all out on me. I see now you're no human I can tell that much through this whole fight those kind of attacks would kill a person, but you. Dot you don't have a scratch on you, and whether or not you have super hard skin or something I don't care. What I do care about is you trying to hurt Mito Chan. Dot and that's something I won't allow. He said with a scowl form on his face. Ukiora raised an eyebrow and spoke, you speak as if you have a way to stop, but from what I can see your buying time. What is it that you have up your sleeve? He said. Naruto just glared at the expressionless man and said, I have one way to take you down or at least. A way to make you retreat, it's something I haven't used in a fight before only practice. Plus I never used this form with my limiter off, but you never know until you try. Naruto said. And what would that be? Whatever as you have though won't save you, I've been toying with you all this time even with your so-called limiter. What is it that could make you even think as strong enough even beat me? He said with a little curiosity in his tone. Naruto just grinned weakly as blood came down his head, this is what I meant. Ban. He said as the wind around them completely stopped and the anticipation of the hidden crowd held in their breath. Kai. He yelled at the end. Zanjetsu then glowed blue hiding the blade itself. Blue lightning crackled around the growing spiritual blade. It finally erupted with a blue beam of energy shot off like a beam toward Ukiora the man himself only had a little time to dodge the attack, but did get a little cut on his left arm. His eyes widened when he felt a little blood go down his left arm gripping to the ground, he actually broke through my? This is surprising and did he say Bankai? This fight might have gotten a bit more challenging. Ukiora said looking at his bleeding arm. When he looked at the sight of what the spiritual blade attack did, he saw a catastrophic sight, a trench about 5 foot deep and 3 feet in width went on where trees used to be. It stretched on for miles and was pretty sure, it would scar the land itself. When he looked back a blue explosion of spiritual energy erupted like a volcano and it reached far into the sky. The sight could even be seen from the oncoming wreckage and his brother Killer B. The light lit up the sky illuminating it for miles upon miles. The Kumo Shinobi had to hold onto where they stood for the shockwave almost blew them away. They had watched one minute Naruto was getting beat, then saying a word then this. Though within Yugito and Mito Nibi and Kayubi were in stunned silence and were having thoughts upon what Naruto's few words were before the explosion. Though one thought came together in both their minds and the shock on their faces appeared. Did he say, Ban Kai? They thought similar regardless of the different mind they were in. When the light faded all that there was in its place was smoke, but you could tell a figure stood within from its shadowy outline. Kami's realm, he released it, please. Please Naruto-kun end it. Quick, 
she said desperately holding hers hands against her chest. Kami looked at her sister in worry before speaking. Megami-chan. What's wrong? How's him going ban Kai bad? She said worried for her sister. Megami just looked at her with tears coming down her face, because. There's something within Naruto-kun that has been getting stronger. How it has been is by when Naruto uses his Shinigami power the entity which lives within him gets stronger. Now when he just released Bankai he has a good chance of losing control. Dot and that part of him. Comes out. She said as more tears came down her beautiful face. Kami just looked at her with worry before bringing her into a hug as they watched what was going on. Tell me Megami. What is it that lives within Naruto? Is it that bad you would be so worried about him? She said. Yes Kami Chan it is. For you see the being within him is the manifestation of all the hate, rage, regret, sadness, anger, and bloodthirst that has built up over the years. Plus it was created even before he grew up. The being I speak of was created from the remaining Yuki that resided in him from Kayubi Chan's attack all those years ago. What I speak of Kami Chan. Is that Naruto kun? Dot has a inner hollow. She said before breaking down in her shocked sister's arms. With Naruto within the dissipating smoke, the figure could be seen more clearly. Ukiora though felt a small spike of energy he was quite familiar with, but threw it aside for now since he was more curious as to what this living Shinigami could do. When the smoke finally cleared away within the middle of the crater stood a newly transformed Naruto. His former attire did a complete 180, he now wore a tattered cloak over his half-revealed upper torso. It was together in the middle of his chest and abs and the flowing ends flowed in the remaining wind. The cloak itself was black on the outside white in the middle and deep crimson red on the inside. He wore the standard Shinigami Hakama with the white belt tied around his waist. There was also what seemed to be like bandages wrapped around the lower end of his abs, and finishing it off was the standard footwear. He was holding a black katana that was all pure black in sight with the guard being the design of a swastika. The blade was pure black and handle black as well with red diamond shapes within the handle. Ending it was a small chain hanging from the hilt. Tensa Zanjetsu. Naruto said, holding the Zanpakuto in his right hand tightly. Ukiora quirks an eyebrow at the newly transformed Naruto and speaks, What is this? Is this your? Bankai? He said with a questioning tone. Naruto just looks at him before disappearing, and before Ukiora could defend himself. He had multiple cuts and slashes appearing among his body cutting his clothes and leaving small cuts on his body where they only bled a little. Naruto appeared behind him and in astonishingly turns around and tries to stab the shocked Ukiora. Only for the man to quickly spin around and actually stop the offending blade with one hand. That shocked Naruto and before he could do anything he had a hand protruding into his chest. He slowly looked down and saw the pale skin, he looked back up and saw Ukiora's surprised yet bored gaze. Yes, you are quite strong, I'll admit that, you even broke through my enhanced hiero. I'm quite amazed, but I can still go much faster than you. This is your limit. He said in a bored tone, before he ripped his hand out of Naruto's chest showing a hole. He coughed up blood before he fell to his knees. He could believe it. Dot one second. He had used Bankai a second later he used all the strength he could muster to make a decent cut, next thing he knew. He was stopped by from stabbing the man in the back with one hand. Then he goes and takes stabs him in the chest leaving nothing but a hole. That's because you're weak. Naruto's eyes widened and looked around as best as he could to look for the voice. Who said? That. I did fool, I can see you're having trouble, I'm gonna take over for a little while to save your pathetic ass. And before Naruto could question the voice again he lost consciousness, but the last thing he saw was Mito running at his bleeding body, he could only utter a few words as his eyesight went black. Mito. Chan. Dot run. Dot now, he said before the blackness enveloped him. Mito was at his body in an instant when he lost consciousness, Naruto-kun. Wake up. Please. Please wake up. She said pounding on his chest doing everything she could. That's when she felt a cold chill going down her body and hesitantly looked up to see Ukiora's green slitted eyes gazing down on her trembling form. You. You're his sibling are you not? No matter the case. That boy is dead there will be no bringing him back. He said, only to get a katana aimed at him from a pissed Mito. Kayubi's chakra swirling around her changing her features with the whisker marks on her face getting more feral. Her violet orbs going to a crimson with a slit, and claws growing from her hands. The chakra enveloped around her body and sword as she stood over Naruto's dead body while tears fell from her eyes. 
I'll kill you, for killing Naruto-kun. She yelled with a half-demonic voice. This change made Ukiora raise an eyebrow, before catching the lathe that would have lopped off his head if it wasn't for his great speed, he shook his head before pushing the blade making her stumble back a bit. Do what you want, but like I said there will be no bringing him back. Dot now die, he said and appeared above Mito's body and she then turned around, she buried her head into Naruto's chest, time seemed to slow as Ukiora closed in on Mito, even the now coming Kumo Shinobi were slowed down, Mito's emotions ran free and couldn't help, but remember the times when Naruto helped her when she was in trouble, the times when he protected her from the world's troubles, the times when he was there for her when she needed support. She freely let the tears fall, she felt so weak. Dot not able to help him when he needed it. When he fought this opponent on his one without anyone to help him, even before there wasn't many people that able to help Naruto, it was always him saving his friends or her. There was no one to help him. He was alone. With a desperate cry she let out her despair and anguish, Naruto-kun. She yelled, with her emotions coming to the forefront crying on Naruto's chest. With Naruto's mind, you could see Naruto's body floating, but a slight twitch to his eyes were enough to whisper, Mito-chan. Time seemed to revert back to normal and when the offending katana was a mere inch from Mito's head, it was stopped. By one blood-covered hand. Ukiora raised an eyebrow and looked up only for his eyes to widen in shock something that rarely happens. The Kumo shinobi stopped as well a foot away from them, they stood shocked still seeing right in front of them something that was impossible. The once thought dead Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, had his right hand holding back the almost death blow over Mito's head. They couldn't see his face, but knew something was happening, and from the shocked face from the pale man it was either good. Or bad. Mito waited for the blow to come down on her, only to feel a rush of wind and then nothing. No pain. No blood. No nothing. Kit. L look up. She did so slowly and saw that the offending weapon was stopped by blood-covered arm, she followed it to see Naruto's body, her eyes widened when she saw a scowl on his face. I told you, you were weak Naruto guess I'll have to save you and show you. Dot how to use a bankai, but first I'm gonna show. This fool what happens when you mess with our loved ones? Said a now grinning Naruto. Mito looked at his face only to be shocked when she saw his now different eyes. The whites were now black and the where the blue was a evil yellow. She also saw white. Particles adding onto the left side of his face covering his left eye. The now awake. Naruto, looked in her direction and she saw his eyes soften just a bit, before they locked with Ukiora's own shocked ones. I'm gonna murder you, for trying to hurt her. Prepare to die, he said before grabbing Mito and pushing her away and stood up, he grabbed Zanjetsu still holding onto the katana. He then grinned an insane grin. He glared into Ukiora's eyes and said. I hope you're ready to die, for you crossed the line trying to kill her, he said before appearing above Ukiora. He's faster than before. The Arankar thought before jumping back, but he felt a hand on his shoulder when he looked back he saw Naruto's face with half of it covered by the demonic mask. Ukiora's eyes widened at the speed, Naruto grinned at him before speaking, take this Getsuga Tensho, Moon Fang Heaven Piercer, he yelled before a black and red aura surrounded the blade, he swung diagonally letting a crescent shaped attack shoot forward at Ukiora in high speeds. The man quickly used Sonido away a few yards from the attack only to be stopped from Naruto's hand on his shoulder with his face twisted in a crazy smile. Don't blink. Ha ha ha. He said before unleashing another Gatsuga Tensho onto him this cornered him and before he or anyone else knew it. They reached him and exploded in a straight line of black and red. Naruto. Just grinned as more of the mask appeared on his face, making him even more menacing. He looked around the area and grinned even more. He raised Zanjetsu into the air. Second later a bleeding Ukiora was there with his sword stopped by Naruto's own. Before he could do anything else Naruto grabbed his arm and swung him down into the ground making yet another crater. He raised his sword into the air and cackled. This was fun and all, but I'm bored so die, he said with a glee tone. He quickly brought his sword down, only to hit solid ground. He scowled and looked behind him to see Ukiora once more with his chest bleeding much more from the combined Getsuga Tensho, his clothes were torn and bloody. Naruto cackled and before Ukiora had time to catch a break he was slammed into the ground face fist. He felt a foot slammed him into the ground deeper. He looked up as best he could to see, Naruto's, grinning face with Zanjetsu in a downward position aimed at his head. I see. Dot how very. Hollow like. 
You aren't so different from us. After all, he said, Naruto scowled at him and was about to end his life only to feel a pair of arms wrap around his body. He looked down and saw. Earlier with Mito Mito couldn't believe it, first she thought Naruto was dead, but even as the death blow was about to come down on her, now she was seeing him fighting once more, but with a lot more ferocity in each attack. The way he cackled insanely. The way he grinned seeing each attack land made his demonic looking mask and glowing yellow eyes made her feel scared. But not as much scared for Naruto's own safety. This wasn't the loving brother she knew. This wasn't the Naruto she knew. She steadily got up, and from ignoring ran to Naruto's body standing over the frame of Ukiora about to deal a death blow. Kami's realm. Oh no, he's lost control. Kami chan. We need to help him. Megami said with tears going down her eyes. Kami just looked at her sadly while thinking up a way to fix the situation, that is until she saw Mito's running form. She looked back at the trajectory and her eyes widened. No, Mito. She'll be killed. She whispered sadly. Megami shot her head up to see Mito a foot away from Naruto. Her eyes glowed a ethereal purple before smiling softly. No, there is no way Naruto would kill her in normal form or when he's like that. She's too important to him to kill her, he'd rather die than let that happen. But, I think. Dot the only one to be able to bring him back is that girl. She muttered with her eyes on Mito's form. A spirit beside Kami was crying tears watching the scene, she had red silky hair with fair skin, she had violet eyes similar to Mito's own though they were red and puffy from what looked like crying. She wore a long white kimono with no footwear. This woman was none other than, Kashina Uzumaki, and she was watching the scene in despair. Kami looked at her sadly bringing her into a hug which the woman melted into it. Kami tried to soothe the woman's tears, but she couldn't even stop her own. They were all worried with what was about to happen. Back with Naruto he looked down to see. Mito, having her arms wrapped around his waist crying into him. He felt his will waver, but scowled and was about to yell at her only to stop when he heard her words. Please. Please. Come back Naruto-kun. Come back please. She said but was heard perfectly clear even if her face was buried into his back. Naruto. Eyed her as more of the white, demonic, looking mask came upon his face. Please. Come. Back. This isn't you Naruto-kun. Come back. Come back to me, Naruto-kun. She yelled, before falling to her knees clutching his bloody hakama crying her heart out. This snapped the real Naruto awake within his mind. Mito chans. Crying. I have to. Wake. Up. Naruto, on the outside was about to pull her off when suddenly. His right hand went to the mask and his yellow eyes widened in horror. No. No. Dot you go back. Go back and let me handle this, he said struggling with Mito's grip still on him, he swung his sword wildly as his right hand was pulling harder and harder on the mask. No. Dot it's time you went back. Dot and I got back control. Said Naruto using everything he had to gain control back over his body. But, can't you see? I can kill him let me do it. You're weak. He yelled. But the pulling got much more harder. I don't care. Mito is crying and I will be by her side. Now get back in here. Naruto yelled. This got the resulted action. The mask was starting to crack. Ukiora watched from where he was shocked at what was happening before he used Sonido to get a few yards away. No. No. Stay back in. No. 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 He yelled before the mask was fully torn off letting the, the darkness that covered his face fade into nothingness. Naruto's eyes then changed back to the striking blue, but they showed how tired he was. He was breathing heavily while looking at the white broken pieces of the mask being to fade away. He scowled at this before he looked tiredly down at Mito's crying form. She probably didn't hear any of this since it was mulled over with her crying. He raised his right arm while his left was holding Zanjetsu in hand. He then turned around quickly and fell to one knee, but he brought his arm around Mito's surprised form and brought her into his body letting her calm down. Mito herself was taken back with the back of Naruto's hakama was pulled out of her grasp, but she felt a strong yet warm hand on the back of her head pull her in. She didn't know what it was so had yet to open her eyes, but that was soon washed away when she felt a, a muscled chest. She slowly opened her eyes to see bloody torso and torn up black outfit in front of her. That's when she heard it. His voice, he he, hey. Mito chan. Dot why are you crying? Naruto said weakly, 
Mito's head shot up to see Naruto's warm and caring eyes she knew staring back into her own violet eyes. Tears glistened in her violet eyes. Naruto smiled softly at her before raising his head to see Ukiora a few yards away from him, with a thoughtful expression on his face. He scowled darkly at the man, but only to flinch at his wounds, that's when he heard a slight tearing sound and looked back to see Ukiora walking into a dark yet misty portal with his back to him. He was about to talk, but was beaten to it. You. Dot are stronger than I thought. I am mildly impressed with your skill, but I do hope. Dot the next time we meet. You're stronger than this. Ukiora said, before his body disappeared from sight when the portal closed on him. Silence then undertake the war torn battlefield. The Kumo shinobi stood there warily before Yugito rushed over to Naruto's body and Mito's crying form in his arm. She stopped a few steps away from them to watch what would happen next. Naruto then looked down at Mito and hugged her tighter as he fell consciousness about to leave them, he spoke a few words that only she would hear. Mito chan. Thank you. Dot you helped me gain control. Over myself. Thank you. He said before he started to fall. Mito quickly realized this and tried to hold him back up, but only to fail when he slipped out of her grasp and fall face first into the ground. Naruto kun. Mito said, trying her best to wake him, but she suddenly heard two loud crashes a few yards away, but when she looked up she saw two dark skinned muscled men in different attires, but both had a frown on their face. She suddenly felt the adrenaline leave her, and felt the drain of using Kayubi's chakra. She suddenly without warning fell beside Naruto's body. Naruto's body somehow knew this and had his arm wrapped around her, like he was protecting her. Yugito looked and saw who the new visitors were and gasped, Reikage Sama. Killer B Sensei, she said. Reikage just grunted before he hefted Naruto's body onto his shoulder. We can talk later Yugito. Right now we have to get these two back at Kumo and get them medical attention. I'm sure whatever kind of battle happened it will bring attention to many more, and they will be closing in fast, he said. Yugito nodded as the one named Killer Bee picked Mito up and carried her in a bridal carry. Rakage looked at his subordinates, we talk later, now move. We need to hurry back at Kumo, he ordered before jumping into the forests followed by Killer Bee, before the others followed with thoughts of the battle they had seen. Kami's Realm Oh thank goodness, thank you. Thank you Mito chan you saved him. Whispered Megami as she watched the whole thing as did Kami and Kashina. They were all shocked at how things went, but smiled at the end when Naruto gained control over his body again. That's my Masumi. She can do anything, even bringing back her strong brother back from wherever his mind was, Databane. She said pumping her fist into the air, this made Kami and Megami giggle a bit. That's right Kashina chan Mito is a very strong individual as are you. Especially when she sees Naruto in danger, she'll jump to defend him when he's at his weakest, Kami said. Kashina just grinned, yeah, but could you two start explaining why I've been brought here? Minato still needs to be tortured after what's happened with Mito and Naruto, she said with a sadistic yet angry gleam in her eyes. They both flinched at that knowing the torture Minato was going through would make even the most evil demons go cry for their mommy. If they agreed on one thing it was Kashina was scary when pissed off. Well. Kami started. Konoha's front gate the immortal. Chunin guards Azumo and Kotetsu were gaping in shock and a little fear. Why? Well it couldn't be the fire Demio standing before them with six of his elite fire guardians along with some of his personal army behind him. Could it? Kotetsu shockingly spoke, you um, Demio sama what are? Why you doing h here, he said. Izo just kept glaring at Konoha before speaking, I'm here to give Konoha a personal wake up call, he said as his men marched through the guards and into Konoha. Iro scowled as he and his men walked through Konoha. Right now he had six fire guardians surrounding him and his whole army marching through Konoha. Right now he was heading for the cage tower. As he did so he and his guardians all scowled at what they were seeing. Konoha's populace even with a few shinobi were all either partying or going all out in bars drinking to their heart's content. What made it all the worse was that. The bastards all had things resembling Kayubi, Mito or Naruto. They had seen a group of civilians having a burning of these things as they chanted a song. Hell they even saw some spitting on the models or pictures of the three. Iroh was livid. He was 100% sure now, he was gonna give Konoha a one-way trip to hell with this. He wasn't gonna destroy it, no not at all. 
but he was gonna give its people and shinobi populace a real good kick in the ass that they needed. Can't believe this is how Konoha turned out, and to disrespect the Mito Chan and Naruto kun this way. It sickens me, too said, she got agreements from the others as well, even Asuma did. The man may be Hiruzen's son, but he had always detested the way his father did things, even when he himself had made friends with Naruto and first met Mito when she was only three, he had warmed up to them and become something of an uncle figure to Mito and brother figure to Naruto. Iroh nodded as he ignored the shocked looks they were all getting from the populace, yes, that's right, Konoha has fallen from where it stood long ago. He said, too grunted as she spoke. PFTT yeah, they fell. Iro sama, real hard, she said. He nodded in agreement before they reached the cage tower, after this he turned around and spoke, men. Go surround the village everything from the walls to the Hokage monument, I want every inch of this village surrounded so no one tries to leave. He said getting a resounding nod from them all before they marched off to do as ordered. Iro then turned toward the surrounding populace of both citizen and shinobi alike and spoke, now citizens of Konoha along with its shinobi I'm only gonna give you one warning bring me here as in Serutobi in 10 seconds or I will burn Konoha to the ground, now move or I will fulfill what I just said, Iro commanded. This got the reaction of the shinobi dashing to the Hokage's mansion. Iro then turned toward Tu and spoke as his voice echoed over the deadly silent crowd, Tu San, I want you along with Chiriku bring me those that are close to Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, go, he said. Hi they said in unison, before disappearing in a shushin. When some heard Naruto's name some grew fearful as their eyes searching everywhere, possibly that the Namikaze would come out to kill them. Others smirked knowing what happened to the man, that had grew a terrifying reputation among Konoha. Exactly at 9 seconds Hiruzen Serutobi appeared with his teammates, they looked ahead of them to see Iro's piercing brown eyes on their forms. They suddenly paled for some reason. Iro then stated, once my elites come back here, then we can begin, until then if you so much as move here as in Serutobi or your teammates I shall have you killed, he said with dangerous tone that promised what he said. The shinobi suddenly tensed seeing as their leader was threatened by someone higher up than their Hokage. Hiruzen frowned at this and did exactly what he said. Three minutes later two with Chiriku arrived with Yugo, Anko, Hana, Kurinai, the clan heads, Tuchi and Ayame Ichiraku, and lastly Sasuke. The former wearing a hospital gown and looked dead beat tired, but was awake enough to be there. Hiruzen clicked his teeth in irritation they found Sasuke he was hoping to get to the boy and either make him loyal to Konoha or kill him. When he looked back up he saw Iroh nodding at the ones Naruto was close to. Alright, since everyone is here I'm gonna be talking one interruption form anyone will mean instant death no questions asked, understand? He said voice with commandants coming off his like a raging river. They all nodded without question while some were actually hesitant to do so. Good I can at least see some of you Konoha aren't as stupid as I thought you'd be. He said getting some scowling at him, but he waved it off for he didn't care what they thought. Now the reason I'm here for, you see I've come upon interesting information from a friend of mine, and from what I heard some of you think you can undermine my authority. He said his gaze lingering on Serutobi and his teammates. You see, what I have come across is that my good friend, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze had been forced to flee from Konoha taking his sister Mito Uzumaki Namikaze with him. Why I say this? It's because several of you had been trying for years to kill Mito with him protecting her. This brought upon Naruto the now ex Anbu Sotecho leaving Konoha becoming a missing nin. He said with his now angry eyes on Hiruzen. Some of the villagers acted a bit smugly at that knowing that the demon and its demonic guardian was gone for good. Though those that were close to Naruto namely his ex-squad, the clan heads, the Ichirakus shake in anger and sadness. They had gotten letters from Naruto when he disappeared with Mito. They had read and knew what happened, what Hiruzen and his teammates decided to do. The threat against Mito's life and order of the Uchiha clan's massacre. That was another thing it stated he helped Itachi killing the ones that were truly the usurpers, he stated they had spared two innocents that didn't know of the coup. Sasuke looked at the ground in sadness, he always looked up to Naruto like Itachi, Naruto was a great role model to him. Sasuke always wanted to be strong like Itachi and Naruto they were two of the most well respected shinobi within Konoha, that is until the massacre where it was reported when Naruto was cited helping Itachi kill the clan. That was another thing he always thought about. What did Itachi mean that night when he said he was protecting the ones that were important to him? 
When Sasuke heard Naruto was sighted he refused to believe it, but couldn't help but think it was true since Naruto was best friends with Itachi. Also he stated that, during the night he left Konoha. He had honestly told me that he did help in the now recorded Uchiha massacre. But he had his reasons that only I and one, Itachi Uchiha, know of. But I'm here now to warn you Konoha as a whole, besides those that were close to Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. That if any harm is to come to Naruto or Mito I will personally burn Konoha to the ground be damned you're a shinobi village, I've let you all rot in your fester thinking you're all invincible. Since the three shinobi wars, I've let you run on to much of a short leash, and the actions have brought out the consequences of one of the finest men I knew and a innocent girl and one clan's extinction. I'm going to reprimand you Konoha as a whole, he said. After he said this he took a sweep of everyone and he saw mixed reactions some from anger, rage, or hatred. Others had what looked like fear, shock or regret, but he didn't give a care they were going to pay for their actions especially their leader. First off the punishment going against me and going behind my back, as usually met with total annihilation from my army, but I'm gonna do something else. From now on all missions from S ranks will now be taken away from Konoha and shipped to other countries that need it. Some like Sanagakure, Taigakure, Kumogakure, and even Kirigakure. Also from now on the budget from me that helped pay for most of your expenses has been cut down to 60%. Also from now on, if you even try go behind my back again, next time I won't be as lenient and will destroy all of Konoha. He said, Iroh then looked at the now shocked still crowd and seething Hiruzen. He then motioned for the ones closest to Naruto to come closer, after which when he saw Sasuke he smiled seeing as Hitomi didn't kill all those and would need to keep an eye out for Sasuke's well-being. Also these people will be under my protection and if anyone tries to hurt them or a member of their clan, will be killed whether or not you pled to the Hokage, nothing will stop your death. He then looked at Hiruzen and his teammates angry forms. Now you. Hiruzen Serutobi, Sandame Hokage, you are now officially hereby ripped of your position as Hokage and also the council will be abolished as well. Until a new Hokage that is actually level minded and doesn't try to go behind my back is brought to my attention. I will be having the clan heads be making the decisions with the final say being myself with a via a messenger bird sent to me from them. Now as for punishment Serutobi you and your teammates will now have your chakra sealed away with your legs and arms sealed also which will only allow minimal movement to that of a civilian, he said. This made Hiruzen, Sandame Hokage of Konohagakure, Kami no Shinobi, the professor lose it, no, you will not do this, he said with a snap of his fingers his personal anbu appeared battle ready. Danzo agreeing with his old rival, Root, he said with his emotionless men jumping out from the shadows. This got some villagers hoping they would be able to kill the Demio. They were sorely mistaken when Iroh himself jumped from where he stood and with astonishing strength he landed in front of the troops, with a calm stop of his hand he stopped his guardians and spoke, you are so power hungry you would defy the Demio. Oh how low Konoha has fallen since the Shodem and Nidime's reign, he said. Shut up. Serutobi yelled dressed in his old shinobi battle gear. Iroh shook his head at Hiruzen's stupidity. I see you're all gonna try and kill me. Very well. Dot let me show you. Dot why I'm called. The fire demio. He said his eyes now dead serious with a steel edge at the tone. With that the troops charged at Iroh, despite this though Iroh looked calm and bored. Die, you pathetic worms, he said, before gathering surprisingly fire into his right palm before thrusting it forward. Hi Ken, fire fist, he stated. The fire exploded off his fist taking the shape of a giant flaming orange fist. This took the charging shinobi by surprise and they paid the cost, that is being burnt alive by the orange and red flames. Iroh ignored their screams of pain and anguish while glaring at Serutobi's trembling form. He motioned for his guardians and samurai to go ahead and shackle down the four traitors. While this was happening Iroh walked over to Naruto's friends and surprisingly smiled. Sorry we didn't come earlier. Naruto only arrived the day before. He did everything he could to ensure the safety of those that followed him and the ones here. That's why I'm here. He asked for my help and I accepted. There will be no worrying of what happens now. Konoha is now under my rule until a more suitable Hokage is found. He said. Hey Anyo. Demio sama excuse me for asking. But where is Naruto kun? Ayame asked. The question on everyone's mind. Iroh just smiled, Naruto, is heading for Kumo with Mito, the current rakage of Kumo is a longtime friend of his parents, 
Now wait a second Hyuga-san for I know there is much hate amongst your clan and Kumogakure. But this Rakage is the one who overthrew the last who at the time held the mission for capturing one of your Wan. So there is no need. He said stopping Hiyashi from saying something. Yugo though asked, but why would he head there? Is it to get away from Konoha's hunter Nin? She said worried for her ex Anbu Sotecho. Iroh shook his head with his face holding a frown. No, he's heading there to train himself and Mito, that is all I know for now. He said looking at Yugo. This got a sigh of relief from most almost all of them. Ah, that's Naruto kun alright, always training with him, if there's one thing he needs to cut back on its training, hell he has even little Mito hooked into training, those two are a pair of stamina freaks, Anko said with humor in her tone. Iroh just laughed at this before they were interrupted by Asuma coming up from behind Iroh before bowing, Iroh sama Hirazan Serutobi and his three teammates have been captured, Danzo though did his best to be fight, but we outnumbered him and is now in chakra cuffs and chakra draining seals, said the samurai, Iroh just grinned. Iroh looked back and spoke, now, all of you I'm gonna say this now is a order from myself if any and I do mean any civilian or shinobi alike try hurt you in any way since you're friendly with Naruto and Mito, you are to kill them, he said, getting surprised looks from them all, and since they were about to question him he spoke. I tell you this because, Konoha's villagers and shinobi alike are what I've said they are nothing more than arrogant discriminant fools that think they are invincible, and before this I wasn't all that worried for Konoha except for Naruto and Mito, but now I see it was my mistake so many things happened. From now on, I'm gonna leave Konoha in the hands of those Naruto trusted more than anyone else, he said getting hesitant nods from them all. Good then I shall take my leave, and don't worry. You'll hear from Naruto again. Trust me. Iroh said with a laugh, with that Iroh turned toward to his gathered troops, we leave then, he said getting a, hi, from them all. I hope he's doing okay, said Kurenai, only to get a snort from Hana, ha, of course he's fine Naruto-kun as strong Kurenai, stronger than we all think he'll be fine, she finished cheering up a saddened Kurenai. You got that right. Anko said Kami's realm Naruto groaned as he started to open his eyes, he could faintly remember talking to Mito before he passed out then nothing. When he looked around himself all he saw was pure white, nothing more than that. The last time he was in something like this it was in Megami's realm or as it's called, Limbo. He got up from the bed and walked a few feet looking around the area. You've grown, Naruto-kun. Said a voice that was familiar to the blonde. When he looked behind him his eyes grew to the size of dinner plates, in front of him was none of than Megami along with a silver-haired goddess in his opinion. Though he looked back at Megami with shock and surprise. M Megami I is that you? He said still questioning if he was still dreaming. Megami only smiled before walking closer to him, when she was close enough she spoke, let this prove it to you that it is me. She said before capturing his once more. Naruto's eyes along with Kami's popped wide open at her direct action though he didn't back away and instead hugged her closer into his body. He could feel the same shiver from last time he had go down his back and knew. This was Megami. Megami though was moaning when he brought her closer it actually surprised her with his action, even more so when he started rubbing her back sensually. She was really enjoying this, but she had to put an end to the. For now. So with that with a hesitant grab, Naruto was pushed a bit away from her till they were only an inch from each other. She then laid her head on his shoulder humming a satisfying tone. Naruto just smiled running a hand through her soft silky hair. That's when he realized they weren't alone, so with a quick snap of attention, he looked up to see a grinning Kami. He nudged Megami who was still comfortable in his arms looked up at him then behind her. That's when her face grew a furious blush and jumped away from him. This action confused Naruto, but he shrugged and spoke, Um, it's nice to see you again Megami-chan it truly is. But who's your friend here? She looks like your twin or something, he said scratching the back of his head. Kami just smirked at Naruto, and before Megami knew what was going on. Kami had already appeared right in front of Naruto giving him an appraising eye. Yep, you're right Megami-chan he certainly is quite handsome and still growing, Kami said, oblivious to Naruto's blush of embarrassment. Megami just looked on before smiling, yeah. But we do have more important things to do than flirt with Naruto kun, even if it's been so many years since I've seen him. She said, Naruto just sighed in relief, which Megami caught and smirked evilly. Besides, we can do more than flirt with him later on, she's aid in a sultry tone. Naruto just went rigid as a shiver of either fear or excitement go down his spine, 
He didn't know which one it was, but he knew one thing. He couldn't wait for what she was planning. He shook his head of those thoughts and spoke, Um, Megami Chan, could you please explain to me how I got here or what's this place called? Or the fact we haven't seen each other in years? He said, Megami just smiled at him before speaking. Well, for your first two questions, this realm is Kami's, she's my sister. She said, pointing at the waving Kami. And why we haven't seen each other for long is because I wanted to wait on you to get stronger, before I gave you more info from me personally of what being my avatar entails, she said. Naruto blinked in surprise before smiling. Ah, I see, no wonder she's as beautiful as you are, as well as you two looking alike. He said, not seeing the blush upon Kami's face, when he gave her that compliment though Megami did and decided to file it for later. Now, Naruto I know you're probably wondering why you're here, well I can already tell you. You're still unconscious from your fight with, she said, but was interrupted. Ulkiora, he said with a frown. Megami blinked and nodded. Yes, Ulkiora now I know you're gonna ask questions so I'm just gonna explain to you what he was and what type of being he is, okay. She said, getting a nod from Naruto. Good sit down this is gonna take a while. Kami said snapping her fingers and out of thin air, four chairs and a table came Naruto raised an eyebrow at the action, but shrugged it off since Kami was a goddess, but he did wonder what Tihi fourth chair was for. Good now where to start? Oh I know we start from the beginning of when the living world was created. She began. Megami told him of when the world was created everything was peaceful, there was no fighting, no bloodshed, no war or death. Everyone lived in harmony with each other. But then disaster struck when the first ever war between the first humans happened. How it happened was beyond anyone except that all we know is someone tried to overthrow the gods exacting in a war between the ones who tried to overthrow us and the ones who worshipped us. She said, she told him of when the war ended the world was almost a complete wasteland, but had flourished once more into the world Naruto knew. The technologies the first humans used was forever destroyed and forgotten. But the ones that died in the war were the problem said Kami, Naruto tilted his head in confusion. What? How could the dead be a problem? He said, well the spirits of the ones that died in the war either were confused or were completely filled with hatred of how they died or were still angry of the past and couldn't leave that behind, Megami said. So, what happened? I know something had to be done with the dead spirits, Naruto said. You're right. Something did happen me and Kami decided on a way to help as best as we could, that being the spirits that looking for a way to pass over and be accepted were taken by me into heaven so they could forever leave the living world in peace, and live the rest of their immortal lives in heaven. Kami said. Then. What happened with the ones that were filled with anger, or the hatred during that war? Naruto said, but when he saw Megami and Kami's saddened expression he mentally scolded himself for asking. T they. Dot had become. No. They turned into monsters. Dot the emotions they had to the living world kept them chained there till the emotions ate away at them. Turning them into what we call. A hollow. A being that is created from dead spirits that has the negative emotions of dying. Either it be from sadness of they died, anger of how it happened, hatred at who did it, all kinds of emotions like this is how they were created. Megami said as a tear fell from her face. Naruto flinched at this while putting a hand on hers to at least comfort her. This seemed to work and she smiled weakly at him before continuing, they were creatures of all shapes and sizes, and all they were after changing were rampaging, hungry monsters, they fed on the spirits of the dead. We didn't know what to do with them until after years of thinking we finally decided to create a dimension for themselves. This place was called Haseo Mundo, this place was their home and battlefield all at the same time. After this we locked the dimension away from the living world, heaven, and finally hell. After this decision was made, we made a way that if a hollow was created it would be reverted back to Haseo Mundo. Megami said, taking a deep breath before looking into Naruto's eyes. What you thought Naruto was rather in a common case, a hollow, but a very rare breed of one for you see you fought against something called an Arankar. It's a hollow that has went through its stages of normal, Manos, Ijukas, then Vasto Lord, that was originally the final form of what any hollow could become, but. Kami said, but a hesitant look came upon her face. Naruto saw this and in spoke, let me take a guess. Something happened to be making these rare hollows transforming into these Arankars. He said, getting surprised nods from them both, that's when his face set in a frown of thought. That's right, and you Naruto are quite possibly lucky enough to have lived against that man, 
for you see you might have thought he was going all out against you, but. Megami said, but was interrupted when Naruto's eyes changed to the bright blue. I know. I could feel it, the man was still toying with me. Even with the limiter off and even then. Bankai. Wasn't enough. Naruto said before he scowled remembering the interruption of that, the very thing he's been holding back. He flinched when he felt a flick at his forehead, he blinked while touching at the red spot. He looked up to see Megami having her hand in a flicking motion, with her beautiful face set in a frown. Naruto-kun we know this, we saw it happen, but then again that man was beyond a hollow itself. She said shocking him, also. We saw what happened when you lost consciousness, how you lost control of your body. Naruto-kun. I'm sure you have questions of what that thing truly is, but. Dot not even me or Kami truly know all we can tell you is that. Dot it's your inner hollow, she said. Naruto just closed his eyes in thought, he reeled in what they told him everything from the first humans, the first war, the creation of hollows, to how his world came to be. He grit his teeth remembering how he couldn't even beat Ulkiora, he then remembered that. Hollow within him. That's when he steeled his eyes and set his path up for the future, he opened his eyes getting a slight gasp from Kami and Megami, for his eyes were now different. They were the eyes of a hollow, but. There was a ethereal blue glowing outlining his pupil. But they disappeared, but they saw it. Very well, I'll just have to get stronger. Damn the whatever limit I have to go through. I'll get stronger than ever before, I'll go through the nine levels of hell and back to get stronger than Ukiora or anyone else. I'll become the avatar you would be proud of Megami Chan. I'll become the being of death for the living world. I'll become your judgment and executioner, and no one. Will stand in my way of that, he yelled, as an unnatural wind blew from him. This got startled reactions from them both, before Megami smiled lovingly at her avatar. Baka, you already made me proud. Kami though couldn't help, but let a shiver of excitement go down her spine, when she saw the look in his eyes for just that moment and of his personally declaration. She couldn't help, but feel Naruto was gonna be something more than her sister's avatar in the future, she didn't know what, but she just had a feeling he was gonna become something even greater than that. So it was a weird scene when she moved over to him and did the last thing either of them thought she would do. She caressed his face before pulling him into A, she knew this would either get a tongue lashing from Megami or questions of why she did it, but right now she didn't care all she wanted to do was give this man a chance at many others before him never did. The chance to steal her heart away, and in time maybe. Just maybe. Dot she will fall for him. After snaking her tongue through his shocked mouth she explored a little before she wrapped her tongue around his own before pulling back. When she opened her eyes half lifted she saw the dazed expression on Naruto's face and the shocked one from Megami. She smiled at her sister reassuringly with the underlining message saying, I'll explain later. With that Kami grabbed Naruto's shoulders and spoke, now go Naruto-kun, and fulfill your promise to Megami-chan and myself. Become strong Naruto-kun become something that will make even the heavens shift and hell tremble, until then. Protect Mito-chan, because I'm sure. She's gonna become someone very important to you later on. She said in a sultry tone at the end. This made Naruto blush at that knowing she knew of what happened between himself and Mito. That's when he felt a hand on his other shoulder he looked and saw Megami smiling at him. Like Kami-chan said Naruto-kun, become stronger. Become the true avatar of death I know you will be, don't worry of your past sins the people you've killed. They have pasted on into heaven no bearing any ill will towards you. So no more of you regretting what you've done in your life, you hear me? She said in a tone that sounded like a mother scolded her child. Naruto just blinked before smiling, true he had been getting the nightmares of what he has done, the missions he was given, the slaughtering, the murder, the outright genocide he was ordered to do. It tore him up inside for what he has done, but hearing the soothing voice from Megami and comfort that both her and Kami excluded made him feel so at ease it erased what he has done from his mind. A tear fell from his face as he spoke, thank you, Megami Chan. Kami Chan. He said as both goddess held him, as this happened Naruto's body started to face from his feet on up. Kami saw this and looked to see Megami seen it as well. They held him tighter as he started to fade they spoke, Naruto-kun, the next time you see us. I hope. Dot you can fully open to the ones that love you. Goodbye. Naruto-kun. They said in unison. Naruto heard them, but his eyes kept closing. Though he did smile softly when they said the last part. Maybe. Just maybe. He can love. With that Naruto's body disappeared in their arms and away from their realm. 
They both had tears going down their eyes, not from sadness yes they were gonna miss him, but they were tears of happiness knowing they would see him again in the years to come and knew he would be a lot stronger than he already was. That's when a shimmer appeared behind them, so it was not a surprise to them that Kashina appeared out of the shimmer of white energy with tears going down her face with a small pink hue added to her face. She had been there through the whole thing by Kami and Megami's advice and what she saw had been shocking her once upon time's son, had grown into a powerful and wonderful man. He was already grown up and despite being 15 years old, he would be the heartbreak if many women. She herself strangely blushed scarlet when she saw the interaction he had with Kami and Megami and a briefly thought what that felt like. That's when her body shook, when he released his power and spoke his words, she couldn't help but be shaken by the courage and bravery that blazed of each word he spoke. The Naruto she knew, her son. Dot the one who gave up his humanity for her so she could have a few last minutes with Mito. Dot had changed into what he is now. A true man to his word and keeps his promise. Even if he has to face the devil himself. She blushed even more when she saw his appearance it was so much like Minato, but then again a difference to it. Kashina shook he r head of her musings when she looked up to see the amused faces of Kami and Megami, they probably saw her interaction. Now Kashina-chan, were you having thoughts about someone? Said Kami as she grinned at Kashina. Bingo Kashina's face broke out even more in a scarlet red which made Megami laugh at her predicament. I I I, wasn't. She yelled, but that didn't convince either goddess. Kashina averted her eyes to the ground. Kami smiled at her before bringing the woman into a hug, Kashina melted into it right then. Kami could hear the soft sobs from the woman. Why? Dot why? Do I have feelings for him? Dot why? He's my own. Dot son. She said as she cried into Kami's chest, their gaze softened on the woman. It would seem after watching Naruto and how he protected Mito from the world's dangers made her happy, but sad since she wasn't the one protecting them. It was all Naruto's doing he was the one to raise Mito, the one to train her, the one to feed her or bathe her, he was the one who read to Mito at night or let her sleep with him when she got scared. Naruto was the one who protected, raised Mito, and she, Kashina their own mother couldn't do anything, but watch. It tore her up inside to know she couldn't help them one bit and it only made it worse when she started seeing Naruto in a whole new light over the years. Of course she kept the feeling down but it was getting uncontrollable and seeing him now made the dam break and the emotions she's held down come forth. Well, Kashina technically he isn't your son anymore. Said Megami, this got the shocked reaction from Kashina when she turned around to look at Megami with shocked eyes. W what do you mean? He's not my son anymore. She said with her voice quivering from either sadness or strangely, hope? Megami cleared her throat, well Kashina-chan, you see what I didn't tell you is that Naruto your son on that night did die but was reborn as my avatar the body he has now is his spiritual manifestation for what he would have looked like, but when the limiter comes off that is his true appearance. He isn't really related to you or Minato anymore, he is his own person now, he doesn't have any blood ties to you or Minato since his physical representation of either of you was destroyed when Q Chan's chakra entered him. It completely destroyed all genes he had, but the physical appearance he had and was gonna have stayed with him, she said. Kashina's eyes unknowingly lit up, and said, so. That means, dot all this time, she said. That's right, Naruto knows this as well, but he has kept this secret from Mito not knowing how she would react, from Naruto not being her brother anymore, Kami said. Kashina just stood there for a few more minutes with her eyes staring blankly at the two goddesses. That's when a grin came upon her face. Databane, she yelled excitingly amusing the two goddesses. Kashina pumped her fist into the air her eyes blazing with determination only seen in Uzumaki's. Great. Dot but uh. Dot how can I see either of them when I'm, she said gesturing to her spirit form. Indicating she was dead. Kami just grinned. That's what we talked about before remember. When I ask you about the chance of being alive again. How about now? She said getting a fast nod from the woman. Of course to bring you back may take a few days, until then I think it would be best you watch how things unfold in the living world and catch up with the current events that are to be taking place, she said. Kashina just sighed happily before looking at a screen of a hospital room in Kumogakure, there lay Naruto, Mito by his side. Her eyes took a glazed look as she looked at Naruto. Yes, I can't wait to see you again, Naruto-kun, Mito-chan. Kashina is coming back home, she yelled the last bit hyperactively. She could only hope, 
that when she is brought back she can tell Naruto her feelings about. Kumogakure hospital morphine. Blood. Death. That's what hit Naruto's senses as he was coming back to consciousness and right now mentally he was hating every second he was in wherever he was. He tried to open his eyes only to quickly shut them due to the light hitting his eyes. He let out a few small curses before slowly opening them to get used to the light, he tried to remember everything that happened. He was fighting Ulkiora. He remembered seeing the man, retreat, into some kind of portal. He remembered the Kumo Shinobi a few feet away from him. Then he remembered Mito's voice calling out to him. That's when everything else was a blur. When he tried to get up he felt a slight weight on his stomach, so when he looked down he saw the signature red hair. He smiled gently knowing who it was, he ran a hand through her hair while remembering what she had done. To jump in danger like that, risking her life for him. He frowned when he remembered when she almost got killed, and if it wasn't for. Dot him she would have been dead. He mentally thanked the him, before looking at her condition. He saw she was dressed in the same thing as last time. But when he saw her face he could see she hadn't slept for a while. Also the slight red tear marks on her face indicated she had been crying. He mentally scolded himself for making her feel so worried. I'm. So sorry. Mito Chan. He whispered with that he tried to gently get out of bed, but he never knew one thing. Mito was wide awake. She suddenly snapped her eyes open and looked straight into his surprised ones, that is until her eyes glistened in tears before she tackled into Naruto pressing themselves back into the hospital bed. Naruto-kun. She cried burying her head into his bandaged chest. Naruto just groaned a bit still feeling a bit of pain, but he shook it off as held Mito. He felt her body rack with sobs and hiccups, he sighed running a hand through her hair. When she calmed down a bit Mito pulled herself away from him until she was practically face to face with him. Naruto looked into her eyes to see relief and happiness, but he also saw how tired she was if the bags under her eyes were anything to go by. With that he sighed before speaking, Mito-chan. Dot how long has it been since you've slept? He said. Mito then averted her eyes away from him, trying to look anywhere but him, but failed miserably when she got a knowing look from him. She sighed knowing it was hopeless. None, I haven't slept since I woke up from using Kyubi's chakra during your fight with whoever that guy was. I've, I've been here the whole time. She said hoping he wasn't mad at her. Naruto just smiled which she missed, he gently s his hand around her frame before picking her up earning a squeak of surprise from the girl. He then laid down on the bed before giving some room for Mito on his left side after this he covered them up. He then looked at her confused eyes, you need your sleep Mito-chan even if we're in a hospital. He said hospital like it was poison getting a giggle from the girl. Let's just sleep a few hours hum. I need a bit more anyway, okay? He said. Mito just answered by cuddling up to him even more, she wrapped her arms around him while mumbling something as sleep quickly took her. If it's with you. Then I'll sleep anywhere Naruto-kun. As. Long as you're. Safe, she finished before succumbing to sleep. Though she never knew how much her last words meant to Naruto since he eyed her before smiling. He wrapped an arm around her waist and another on her head. He then placed his head atop her red hair. He sighed softly as he pulled her closer before darkness started to creep around his eyes as well. Me too. Mito chan. Me too. He said before falling asleep as well. One day later, so. Let me get this straight here, you, points at Naruto. Want to live and train here in Kumogakure, until you think you're both strong enough to defend yourselves from your enemies, is this what I'm hearing here? Said a with a stoic face. It had been a day since Naruto woke up again. After this he asked for an audience with a after this he explained everything to the rakage. The man was surprisingly quiet and calm through the whole thing only the slightest twitch from his eyebrow betrayed the stoic and impassive face he had. Naruto nodded with Mito by his side, ever since the incident in Hai Shi and battle against Ulkiora Shi and him been getting a lot closer than before. Reikage nodded once more, before he slammed his hand into his desk shattering the poor thing, even if Mito flinched at the action Naruto didn't bat an eye at it or the stare he got from the Reikage. Well besides the point of you two being Minato and Kashina's kids, what's in it for me? I mean sure I am an old friend of theirs back in the war, but I need to gain something out of this he said scratching his goatee. Naruto just grinned. Well you can boast that you and your brother Killer B were the ones who trained Mito-chan here to be as strong as I know she will be in the future and also the ones who housed someone of my reputation within your walls. This way you won't need to worry an enemy attack. Naruto said knowing his status it was true, 
he was one of the most dangerous men alive so it was a fact that no one would attack where he stayed unless they wanted a death wish. Rakage just looked at him for a few moments, before bursting out laughing scaring Mito a bit and getting a raised eyebrow from Naruto. Once the man calmed down a bit he wiped a tear away from his eye and spoke, of course you can stay. I was joking there, but it does help you being here so that's a bonus, but I'm glad you both are here and decided to get away from Konoha, because if what I heard is true the fire Demio himself went down there and arrested the Sandame and his three teammates along with killing a few shinobi that tried to get in his way. I'm guessing the Demio answered your call huh Naruto-san? He said with a chuckle. Naruto's eyes just widened a bit before smiling. Iroh was truly on of the most trustworthy people he knew and now kept his word of getting Konoha back for its past sins against his family. He looked at Mito and spoke, Mito-chan will you go outside for just a minute I need to speak to Reikage sama for a minute privately okay? He said getting an annoyed look from the girl before she went out the door. After this he looked at her and spoke, Reikage sama can I ask you something? Sure what would that be Naruto-san? He said wondering what the young man needed. I know this is asking a lot from you, but. Could you, Killer B and Yugido help train Mito since you know what's within her? I would like you three help her get control over Kyubi's chakra and practice having it under her control. I will be helping her when I can in her shinobi skills when she needs it, but she will be needing help with controlling Kyubi's massive chakra, he said. Reikage just closed his eyes in thought, he knows of Mito being the Kyubi Jinchuriki and of how much training one Jinchuriki needed to get full mastery of their biju. After all he's seen how hard it is to control a biju with its massive chakra reserves in one human. But this was Kyubi a entity stronger than all other biju. Then again he always liked a challenge. Very well. When would you like to start training her? He said. I'm gonna begin training her as soon as I can, I've brought with me since we left Konoha everything from our family. It's been sealed within my body in a pocket dimension seal for quite some time. But with this she can learn what she needs to, so she can get stronger. He said touching a Uzumaki symbol where his heart is. A nodded before he thought of something. What about you? I know you are strong enough to face a cage so why would you need to get stronger? He said. Naruto sighed as he ran a hand through his hair. Let's just say. I've got enemies stronger than any cage in history and leave it at that. He said getting a shocked look from A, but the glare he got from Naruto told him he wasn't in the mood to explain. I I see. Well if I may ask what where will you be training in? I know of a place where Killer B and Yugito train in their biju powers, you could go along with Mito and live and train there. While this happens I can send off the missions the fire Demio would be transferring to the Kaminari Demio and to myself. I can send a messenger bird to you when one does come in, how does that sound? He said. Naruto thought about and had to say it was a good plan this way he could make a place where he could train in secret. Plus it's an added bonus with being closer to Mito and help in her training. He looked at her and spoke, very well it's a deal Reikage sama could you have either Killer B or Yugito san meet us so they could take us to this place? He said. Of course I can actually I think Yugito is here now. He said pointing at the door, he turned around and saw the blonde haired woman standing right there with a curious look on her face. Naruto just blinked before smiling at the woman, this earned a small blush from her which a caught and would talk to her about it later. Well Yugito, I'm guessing you heard that last bit. Well if you would be so kind as to have Naruto and Mito follow you back to the island it would be wonderful. He said. Yugito just looked at a before looking back at Naruto with a small blush on her face, V very well, it will be done Reikage sama Now if you would wait for me outside Naruto-san, I need to talk to Reikage sama for a minute. She said finding it strangely hard not to call him, Naruto-kun, for some strange reason. Maybe it was Nibi messing with her body again. Naruto nodded as he walked to the door that's reasonable. Well till then Reikage sama I'll be seeing you later. He said with the door closing with a click. After he was gone Yugito looked back at it and spoke, Reikage sama I'm here to report about the aftermath of Naruto and that strange man's battle a day ago and I have to say, you're gonna have to take a breather for this one. Kumogakure outside cage tower 20 minutes later, so, where exactly is this place Yugito-san? Mito said, wondering where they were going. Yugito just smiled at her while walking, it's gonna be the place where you and Naruto-san will be training and living from now on until the appropriate time comes when you can either live in Kumo or stay there, she said. It's an island where me and Killer B sensei train in our biju powers, but it's also where we live since it's away from society and away from prying eyes, she added. Ooh, she said. 
Hem it sounds like the perfect place to train. Naruto added. Anyo. Naruto-kun what will we be training in? She said with a confused face. Naruto just chuckled rubbing her head making her pout once more. What will we be training is in our shinobi skills, you still need a lot of training to go. If you want to get stronger while I need to master a few more techniques here and there. He said. Oh. Mito said fixing her hair when it was messed up. Anyway. Mito chan when we get down to training you have to promise me something alright? He said as all three got on a boat to the island. What? She said, you gotta promise me to do your best and never to give up. This training I'm gonna put you through will make all the other times look like a cakewalk. I'm gonna be brutal I won't lie and will not say it's gonna be easy. For it won't be, can you promise me to never give up and keep going? He said with a serious look in his eyes. Mito didn't hesitate for a second, never. I want to be strong like you and if that means going through your training then I will, besides, she said with a small blush on her face. This got a raised eyebrow from Naruto and Yugito who was listening on the conversation, yes what is it Mito-chan? He said. I want to be strong enough to protect you. I want to be able to protect you when you're the one who needs it. I don't want to see you hurt again. She said with the blush much brighter. Naruto just blinked before grinning, he leaned closer to her face and spoke, Mito-chan. Thank you. And you will get stronger. That's a promise. He said before ing her cheek this time. This earned a full blush in the face from Mito and a surprised look from Yugito. Those two, sure got the close relationship. Um, I think it's cute, and think if the future does come down to it. You should join them if they do make an item. I mean look at that man's body. Purr. Nibi. I. Naruto-kun. He. Dot wa. Asterisk giggle calm down Mito Chan it was only a on the cheek nothing to be embarrassed about, hell you're lucky you got him all to yourself for the next few years so just maybe. No. I I can't. I. Mean. I. Want. To. Be but. Don't worry about it for now Mito Chan, the future is still ongoing ever changing you'll have your plenty of chances to tell him, how you truly feel. With that Kyubi cut the mental connection. How I truly feel. Dot for Naruto kun. It's been three years since Naruto and Mito were instated into Kumo and they honestly couldn't be happier. They've had so much more peace within their walls than Konoha ever gave them. They had become friendly with the village itself and basically family to Reikage and his brother Killer B. Yugito on the other hand over the three years gotten closer to them until she was basically with them everywhere they went. They also became two of Kumo's finest shinobi. Ever since Reikage allowed Mito within the academy and having her graduate she was put into an apprenticeship afterwards. Naruto was her sensei, also part-time Anbu. They did missions when it was needed and when they had a break, they would both go back home to train. During the three years Naruto sent for Jiraiya to talk to him, when Jiraiya came he was asked for help in Mito's training. The man gladly accepted, but after a year of training Naruto had gotten a bit pissed about something. Or someone. He told Jiraiya it was Tsunade that was on his mind. The woman never once came to check up Mito ever since she was a newborn not once had she come to check up on them. He knew of Tsunade's loss within Konoha, but damn it Mito was her goddamn goddaughter. So it was with great anger when Naruto told Jiraiya to bring her ass back even if he has to beat it into her head that she still has people in this world that need her. And came back she did, after having a very lengthy discussion between herself, Jiraiya and Naruto she and her apprentice Shizune and their pet pig Tun Tun were instated into Kumo as the personal medic nins of the Reikage and his family. They live with Naruto and Mito along with Jiraiya since the man didn't want to be apart from his family no longer. The house they lived in was built on the island where the two trained over the last three years. It had two staircases going up the second floor and third floor. The first floor had the dining room, kitchen, and living room. It had a built-in hot spring outside with two sides for either male or female. The second floor was designed for the library with all Uzumaki and Namikaze clan scrolls and techniques. There was ten rooms in the whole house five rooms of the second floor and third floor. There was also two bathrooms on the second and third floor. The third floor had the master room along with the current clan head's office. There was also a training dojo on the right side of the compound, along with training posts, training weights from normal weights to chakra draining weights. On the other side of the compound was a garden full of medical herbs and flowers of all kinds. It was Mito's idea actually and Naruto swore she had caught Kashina's love for gardening. But no one complained for the medical herbs were needed in Mito's studies in learning medical jutsu and ways to heal. 
The compound was originally built for only Naruto and Mito for a place to sleep or take a break from training, but after having a discussion with the wreckage of certain clan matters, Naruto personally built the place built for a clan, because shockingly it would seem Naruto and Mito were placed under the CRA. This had gotten reactions from both, Naruto was just blank and no a single emotion was on his face that day. While Mito was inwardly having a mental battle with herself and Kayubi thinking on what were the chances of this happening. Also and to Kayubi's shock and joy, the compound was designed like Kayubi. It had a carving of Kayubi's head above the main doorway with nine wooden tails around the compound and field, like it was protecting the clan home. The main gate to the home had the Namikaze and Uzumaki symbol on both sides of the gate with Kayubi between them and her tails wrapped around both symbols connecting them together forever intertwined with each other. The relationship between Naruto and Mito was a bit strange sometimes they would act like siblings, but other times as when they act like lovers, because an incident one year ago changed things between them. Flashback Naruto was outside sitting on the grass while Mito was beside him panting after having to spar with Naruto for up to 30 minutes straight. She never felt so exhausted in her life. Huff huff and Naruto-kun. See can I ask you something? She said trying to catch her breath. Naruto looked at her with a raised eyebrow and spoke, Sure what is it, Mito-chan? He said wondering what Mito was curious about. Mito after catching her breath she looked up at him with a small blush on her face. W what do you think about me? She said asking the question that has haunted her for a long time. Kayubi was inwardly congratulating her container of her guts to say what she needed to say. Naruto just blinked dumbly before smiling. What I think of you? Honestly? Mito-chan, I think you're a wonderful girl growing up into a beautiful woman, hell I'm pretty sure you will need to beat the guys off with a stick in two more years. Heck, soon you won't need me anymore to protect you, he said. Mito snapped her head up at him while she blushed at his words she spoke, no, I will always need you, she said, getting a surprised look from Naruto, she then realized what she just said and averted eye contact. W what I mean is, I don't want to lose you, I want you to be by my side. I don't want to disappear from my life, she said as tears started to fall from her eyes. Naruto's eyes softened when he saw this, Mito. She kept speaking despite this. You will always be needed in my life, I I I. Don't want you to leave me, she yelled the last part as she averted herself away from him. But that stopped when Naruto grabbed her and brought her into a hug, she stiffened before melting into it crying into his chest. Naruto kept her there as he thought on what she said and mentally beat hit himself for being so stupid. Mito-chan. I'm not going anywhere. You will always have me in your life. He said trying to soothe her the best he could. Mito sniffled a bit more before looking up into his eyes and spoke, I. Naruto-kun. I. Want to tell you. Something, she said getting Naruto's attention. What is it, Mito-chan? He said rubbing her back to comfort her. I want to tell you. Ever since I was little. I always tried to catch up to you. I wanted to be as strong as you were even now I want to be as strong as you are, but something else came. It was. It was. She said trying to finish what she wanted to say. Go on Kit. You can do it. My feelings for you. The truth is. Naruto-kun. I, I I love you. She said before capturing his, this caught Naruto completely off guard so it wasn't a surprise when he fell back onto the grass with Mito on top of him. When they landed they had yet to separate, so after a few seconds of being shocked of Mito's move Naruto makes his decision. He wraps his arms around her body pulling her even closer into him, Mito wraps her arms around his neck. Mito gets even bolder when she makes the even deeper getting a small widening eyes from Naruto before he deepened it even more. This continued for three minutes before they broke for air. As they did Mito had a blush that made her hair pale in comparison. Naruto on the other hand had a dazed expression on his face with a small blush on his face as well. After a few minutes Naruto shakes himself out of his stupor and stares at Mito's embarrassed form. As he did so a mental conversation was taking place. She loves me. Sure we're not siblings anymore due to the incident, but still. Naruto. Dot you as well as I both know well enough the true feelings you have for her. There is no more hiding it Naruto, tell her how you truly feel. Zanjetsu said telling his partner to tell her. I know this Zanjetsu. Dot but. What if she gets hurt? Because of me. I don't think I could forgive myself. Naruto there is no need to worry I've known you long enough that you have a will that is unbreakable, 
there is nothing that will hurt her. Not even your inner hollow would dare try and hurt her, even he has boundaries he wouldn't cross. I guess you're right. Maybe I've been scared to tell her the truth this whole time, well no more, with Naruto vanished from his soulscape. Zanjetsu smiled before turning his head to the right and saw Naruto's inner hollow standing there with a small smile of his own. I'm guessing you have something to say? Zanjetsu said. Hey. Yeah it's about damn time King got his ass in gear. This way we can finally get over the last boundary holding his true skill back, said Yami. Zanjetsu nodded knowing it was true. Naruto's true power and skill was always being held back by boundaries he kept locked away and over the years they were washed away and with the finally one, the one boundary Naruto never truly felt was destroyed. That boundary was love. Love for Mito he was always confused if it was a sibling love or something more and it was the key that held back his true potential. With it out of the way his training would skyrocket. So, when are gonna show yourself to him? Zanjetsu said. Yami just grinned, later on. Right now, King has other things to worry about. Yami stated before disappearing. Zanjetsu nodded in agreement before looking up at the sky seeing his light up with the sun he looked around seeing the grassy fields and trees blowing in the wind. Zanjetsu smiled closing his eyes he spoke, Naruto. Don't you know what I like most? The trees, the grass, the sky. Nature itself is what I like most, and it truly blossoms out the most when you're at the happiest, thank you. Naruto. He said before vanishing as well. Naruto snapped his eyes open and pulled Mito into a hug surprising her, but she then embraced it. Mito chan, I never knew. Dot you felt that way about me before. He said, and noticed the shift in her body posture saying she was nervous. He smiled warmly while pulling her closer, he then pulled his head back till he was face to face with Mito he spoke then, and I'm glad to say. I love you too. Mito chan. He said and before Mito could say anything she was on the end of a from Naruto. Mito's heart piratically leapt when he said those words, she never felt so happy in all her life and now knowing Naruto loved her as well it made her feel so happy she just melted into his arms. They stayed like that for a twenty minutes until they fell asleep in the fields. That day changed everything for them and honestly it was for the better. Good job Kit, now it's my turn. Dot but I only hope I can reach out to him, somehow flashback and ever since then they would be around each other all the time. Around other people they would act like siblings, but alone or around the people that knew of their relationship which was Jiraiya, Tsunade, Shizun, Yugito, Rakage, Killer B. They would hold each other or play around, at night they'd sleep with each other nothing farther than that since both weren't ready yet. But Yugito was also one girl Mito had seen giving Naruto the same stare she gave him. It was full of love and compassion. Not really surprising when Naruto saved her from getting raped with Inkumo, how it happened was that in Kumo's council there are some that hate Yugito for what she holds and tries everything to either put her under their control or kill her, and they try to do it behind A's back. Though when Naruto saved Yugito and her innocence he had forever befriended Yugito and Nibi. After this incident Naruto marched through Kumo carrying Yugito in a bridal carry, he kicked open Reikage's doors and explained what happened. To say Rakage was furious was an understatement after he heard what happened. The man was downright pissed off. He ordered for a council meeting and Naruto followed the angry man. After they got to the council meetings they had found out it was some of A's advisors that ordered the attack and suicide missions on the woman. It was also them that had started sending assassins after Mito. That got Naruto even angrier and in a snap, Naruto murdered the advisors in cold blood showering himself in the gore. After this Naruto told the Rakage to get his people straightened out or he would do it himself. Rakage didn't hesitate, he had issued out the order if anyone was to try and hurt Yugito in any way possible or Mito for that matter. Those people would be tortured both mentally and physically before they were killed. Naruto gained a name after the incident with Kumo's council, he gained the name Barati Shinigami, Bloody Reaper, funny really how some of that is true. Also over the three years Naruto had been doing the missions he was assigned by from Iroh, and some of them ranged from simple diplomatic missions, to making treaties with other countries, to assassinating traitors planning to betray the fire daimyo. He had been named by other daimyos he's met as the Feia daimyo Taishi, fire daimyo representative. He also went on a diplomatic mission to Sanagakure and was asked by the Kei's cage, to help fix the seal on his son. When Naruto found out the boy was Gara no Sabaku and had within him the one-tailed Ichibi no Shukaku. 
He immediately stabilized the seal earning the respect and trust of the K's cage and of his village, but Naruto made good friends with the Sabaku children. First one was a boy named Konkuro a young teen training in the arts of puppetry. Another was the oldest sibling a young girl by the name of Tamari no Sabaku, she trained in using her battle fan in the element wind as her main ninjutsu repritor. The last one was Gara no Sabaku the young kid after the fixing of his seal was fixed he had become friendly with those around him. Overall the trip to Sanagakir was a major success and a powerful ally to the fire Demio and Kumogakir. He gained the respect from other countries which when they found out he was in Kumo, they took it upon themselves to ask for an alliance with Kumo, which it took in stride. Also the training over the three years for the both of them jumped to monumental proportions for the both of them. Since the beginning of their training Naruto had unsealed everything from the night he left the Namikaze home, and showed Mito a training plan for the next three years. She would first work on her chakra control with the help of Cage Bushin no Jutsu. Along this she would keep practicing in using her katana. He also had her working on her Fuenjutsu and Ninjutsu. Since she had massive chakra reserves thanks to Kaiubi she couldn't do any Genjutsu, but did have the ability to dispel given enough time. Over the three years she had grown through the skills she learned and mastered quite a few of them, first being the Rasengan, Jiraiya taught her and the two of the third step in the Hiraishin no Jutsu. Also she had started herself in elemental manipulation because she had learned when Naruto gave her a piece of chakra paper that she had the affinities for water, and wind. So she continued her training to master her affinities to the point she mastered them. And she did, and now after the last three years of hardcore training from Naruto or is what she called his training, Hell's military school, she was was between the levels of expert and master in Fuenjutsu, mid Junin level in Ninjutsu, low to mid Junin in Taijutsu, low level Junin in Genjutsu since she can't do them, but to spell most if not all high level Genjutsus, cage level in Kenjutsu, and cage level in chakra control. Overall Mito was high Junin level to low cage level in terms of being a shinobi. Though she learned her lessons to always hide your true skills until they are really needed, that was the talk she got from Naruto since she was stronger for her age, she still needed to get experience in the field and to hide her true abilities since there were people out there that would try to use her for their own benefits. Naruto's training in the shinobi arts were now fully mastered, everything from using ninjutsu, genjutsu, taijutsu, kenjutsu, fuenjutsu. In the art of jiken kuken, time space ninjutsu, he worked mostly on this in the shinobi arts since he himself knew there was so much potential within the area and since no one except his father and the Nidem knew of the ninjutsu he worked his hardest to create some jutsu from the skill. As of right now though he only made a few, other than that he was a master in the shinobi arts. Now in being a shinigami as Ulkiora put it, Naruto drowned himself in the skills and didn't hide his abilities anymore. He immersed himself creating and mastering all kinds of kido from Bakudo, Hado and Haringu Kido, Healing Kido. Though the last one had only a few Healing Kido spells created at the moment, nothing more than at least 10. His skills in Hakuta, hand to hand combat, were much better than it was before, like in his fight with Ulkiora, his attacks with either his fists or kicks didn't even leave a single scrap or bruise. That's when he trained to the point in Hakuta, his strength added with his brutal way of fighting. His attacks would leave the landscape itself torn asunder from the massive blows and kicks he left within the land. Hell Guy and Tsunade put together with Guy's weights off and the eight gates open still would not match up to his strength. The only one Naruto truly knew who had more strength than him at this point was Megami and Kami. Zanjutsu, the art of a Shinigami wielding his Zanpakuto to its fullest potential. He named it Zanjutsu because for some reason it sounded better than just another Kenjutsu style. In the art he decided it was gonna be used not only for practicing sword katas, but also bonding with your Zanpakuto till you're completely in perfect unison. Zanjetsu once told him that to release his true power Naruto would need to completely master him to its fullest potential. In Hoho, his speed is unrivaled, he was much faster than he was three years ago, since the art itself was his favorite skill along with Zanjutsu. Speed in battle was tested in battles between himself and Zanjetsu. During this he would keep training in the skill and still does. He already knew long ago his speed long surpassed that of the Hiraishin, but he would say the jutsu itself was more of a primal way of the flash step, and would say it now. Minato was a genius in creating the jutsu since it was so similar to Hoho. He also secretly watched and studied Mito's katana for a while now he could sense a very familiar energy within the weapon, 
it surprisingly radiated the same power as Zanjetsu once did when he first trained with him. He also saw some strange things happened with Mito while they trained, for example and sometimes he would see Mito's appearance flash and switch into a Shinigami outfit like his own when he first became a Shinigami, but then would turn back to her normal attire. He thought his mind was playing tricks on him, but did keep what he saw filed away for later. Just in case. Also over the last three years since the incident with himself and Mito, the growing girl told him about Kayubi's secret feelings for him and actually Naruto wasn't as surprised as Mito thought he would be sure. Sure he finds out a celestial being such as Kayubi has feelings for him shocked him to the very core of his being, but somehow he saw it coming. How he did? He doesn't know even till this day, but he did promise Mito and Kayubi he would work on a sealing jutsu to split Kayubi and Mito out of each other. And he did it was a sealing jutsu that split the two beings apart, but are still inked spiritually. He couldn't completely make a jutsu that broke Megami's power, but it was close to it. He grinned in satisfaction that day since the seal overlapped the Shiki Fuin, and linked Mito and Kayubi spiritually then just physically. But when he saw Kayubi transform out of Mito's body he saw a woman that blew the the word beautiful out of his mind. Kayubi transformed from the massive nine-tailed fox it was within Mito's mindscape into a long crimson red-headed woman. She had tan skin with three whisker-like marks on both sides of her face like Mito. She also had crimson red eyes with fox slits within, though she also sported what titled her as Kayubi no Kitsune. She had a pair of fluffy red fox ears and red nine fluffy flowing tails with orange ending at the tips. Though since Kayubi at that moment wasn't wearing any clothing her perky D cup S were out to be seen by all. Good thing it was only her, Mito and Naruto in the ceiling chamber within the compound at the time. Naruto at that time when he saw her form just blinked owlishly before his eyes shot wide open, and mouth agape in surprise, but before he could do anything he was tackled to the ground by both Mito and Kayubi. The two were so overjoyed they kept ing and hugging Naruto till the poor teenager was unconscious from it all. Now after three years the two were ready to come back out into the world out of the protection from Kumo. At the Reikage's office we could find the Reikage staring hard at the other two figures in the room. The first one was a five feet six girl she had red long hair that went down her back with some framing her face, she also had tan skin and six whisker marks on her face. She had vibrant violet eyes that showed warmth and compassion to the figure beside her. She wore a tight fitting orange tank top that hugged her developing C cup, while it showed her mid-drift. She had over this a long-sleeved crimson vest which was filled with scrolls of all kinds. On the back of the vest was the symbol of the Namikaze and Uzumaki symbol along with Kayubi's crest between the two. She also had a form-fitting crimson shinobi pants, below this was blue shinobi sandals. Attached to her left hip was a kanai and shuriken pouch and finally upon her right side was her katana securely strapped within its sheath. She also sported a kumogakir headband on her forehead. The girl looked at the figure beside her with a soft smile on her face. This girl was the 14-year-old Mito Uzumaki Namikaze, sister, girlfriend of Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, and third container of the Kayubi no Kitsune, genin of Kumogakure and student of Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, and at the moment she was standing at attention in front of the cage of Kumo for another mission. The figure beside her was a male by the rigid and stature the man on the man. He was at the height of 6 feet 0 while his stance just showed he was a seasoned warrior. The man had spiky blonde hair it, the bangs reached his eyebrows while the back reached past his neckline. His eyes were that of a sapphire blue, but within them showed power wisdom, yet restraint of something more. This man had tan skin much like Mito, but his body showed muscles that showed through the fabric he wore. The man wore sleeveless black tank top that showed his six-pack now developing into a eight. Below this was a pair of dark black pants with black combat boots at the end. Like Mito the man had a pouch on his left hip. Lastly he wore black fingerless gloves with a metal plating with the inscribed words Shi no Abada, Avatar of Death, in kanji. Finishing off his appearance was a long-sleeved pitch black trench coat with a white flame design dancing below, on the back was like Mito had both clan crests with the Kayubi intertwined between them. Though he also had the insignia of the goddess of death herself behind the crests with her arms draped over them in a protective manner. He also had a red rosary strap running across his chest going up his right shoulder, it held a bandages up blade upon the mons back. After this was a kumogakure headband strapped of his left bicep and a fire demio insignia strapped onto his right bicep. This man was Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, 
Anbu Captain of Kumogakure, Junin Sensei Tomito Uzumaki Namikaze, Fire Demio's unofficial Kasai Raida Sutaicho and the Goddess of Death, Megami's avatar. Reikage stared at the two people in front of them with an impassive stare, but on the inside he was proud of being the main people to help them when they needed it most and would say it without a doubt these two were already in his family. He was proud of how they turned out after three years, yes he knew of all the trouble they were in three years ago, but with the help of himself, the Fire Demio and Kaminari Demio themselves helped throw off their tracks leading to Kumo. The two in front of him though, was some of Kumo's were a few of Kumo's pride and joy, for Mito she was the little radiate sun of joy and energy Kumo needed to brighten itself up when they needed it most. Hell the times she came to see him she brought joy to him and the staff within the tower. Naruto was the pride of Kumo, even if the man wasn't native he helped them out of all kinds of situations that could have led to war for them for last three years. During the time he was an Anbu he did high-ranking missions to help out Kumo in general, even if Naruto was in training when he was called upon he would be there and ready. Reikage knew these two were strong, stronger than they're supposed to be at their age, but then again with enemies they have he couldn't help but agree they were gonna need it. Mito was already at elite Junin level to mid Sanin, but all she really lacked was experience. When she gets that she would be a force to be reckoned with. Naruto he knew was way past his level, sure the man was way younger than him and doesn't have as much skill in battle, but that was covered up with Naruto's exceptional ability to grow every time he fights and learn things which take other people years to do and the skills he has in the shinobi arts amplifies his power. Now when Naruto uses those weird powers of his of the few he has seen anyway he knew Naruto held back a lot, but then again he has to so he doesn't hurt those around him. He's sure no one even Mito has seen his full extent ever since the battle three years ago Naruto kept his training in those skills and that weapon of his a secret from everyone. But he knew one thing Naruto and Mito both were exceptional people both in fighting and in life. He cleared his mind of his thoughts before speaking. Hello you two, I know you just woke up, but this is very important. You see I've just gotten a mission from a client which stated she needs someone to help take back control over wave country from a tyrant named Gado, he said getting a raised eyebrow from both of them. Is it the same Gado from Gado Industries? Mito said wondering what this mission could be about. Yes. That's correct and it would seem the man has been controlling the country for years now even the water demio can do nothing about this. That is why the man himself has asked for help as well to kill this man and destroy all that he holds within the country. Any questions? Yes, what can we expect from this mission? Naruto said, needing to know at least a rough estimate of what him and Mito will face. Reikage scratched his beard and spoke, I'd say not much, except for the occasional thugs and bandits, though I would say the man might be hiring some missing nin so be on the lookout is all I can say, he said, getting a nods from the both of them. Okay. But Reikage Sama, can you tell us the rank of the mission? said Mito since she wanted to know the difficulty of the mission itself. Reikage just chuckled, he and Naruto could see behind her eyes the giddy and excitement of a mission. Naruto himself remembered those times when he was like that, but that was beaten out of him later on in his life. It's AC bordering low B rank Mito, now I usually don't allow Genin to go on such a high ranking mission, but seeing as how well taught you are and who is leading the mission you should be just fine he said getting a nod from Naruto and a wide grin from a practically glowing Mito. Woohoo! Naruto-kun we can go a high mission, I can't wait to start showing how strong I am. Datbeo! She said pumping her fist into the air. Naruto just chuckled along with Reikage as he ruffled her hair like always. This got Mito to pout childishly like she did when she was younger. Of course Mito-chan, but I already know how strong you are, no need to show me. Now Reikage sama when do we head out? Naruto said, I just shrugged and said, I'd say at 10 am, getting a nod from them both. Very well then we shall take our leave to get ready. Naruto said turning back to the door Mito following behind him, I just kept staring at their retreating backs until he remembered something important. Wait. I forgot to mention something, the client's father, he uh, he's asked help from. Konoha so there is sure to be some of their shinobi there as protection, so please don't start anything. Reikage said, getting a worried nod from Mito, though Naruto narrowed his eyes at that before nodding as well, very well Reikage sama, now by your leave, Naruto said. Good you're both dismissed. He said which both nodded before walking out the door, once they were gone a breathed out a sigh of relief knowing this mission would either cause trouble for Kumo or Konoha in general. Outside the cage tower, Anyo, Naruto-kun about the mission, 
what will we do if we do run into Konoha Nin? Mito asked a bit worried about the upcoming mission. Naruto just turned his gaze on her not breaking stride, nothing will happen Mito-chan, and even if something did happen you're strong enough to protect yourself and even then I'm here to help so there isn't nothing worry about. Now why don't we go pack up and head to the gate so we can get an early start, okay? He said getting a smile from Mito. Okay. And besides we need to go say bye to Aero Kyofu and Tsunade Daibo, Godmother, and Shizune Nei Chan. She said getting a nod from Naruto. That's true those two would be worried sick for us if we didn't tell them where we are going, but Shizune isn't as bad though, he said. Imhum. Mito mumbled before she stepped closer to Naruto and grabbed his hand holding it as they walked. Naruto just smiled at her action and softly wrapped his hand around hers as they walked back at the compound. Kami's realm. So, are you ready Kashina? I'm sure you're excited to see them again aren't you? Said Kami while her eyes showed amusement for the giddy woman in front of her. Kashina just looked at Kami like she was stupid. Of course I am. I can't believe you'd ask that question. I've been waiting for three years to see those two again and not being able to watch how they change due to you keeping it a secret from me makes it all the more painful," said the giddy yet now irate beauty. Kami just smirked while rolling her eyes at the childish display Kashina showed. Megami though was giggling at how she acted, true, but then again I know there's another reason you want to get down there fast. Isn't there? said Megami with a sly smirk. Kashina tilted her head for a minute before she went red in the face of embarrassment for what Megami was implying. W.L. How can I not? I mean. I I. Well I know you two can't wait to see him either. I know for a fact you two haven't seen how much they've changed over the three years. She said smirking like she won the lottery even though the blush was still there. This got blushes from both goddess which they looked away not seeing the peace sign Kashina gave. Kami shook herself out of her stupor before speaking. Now Kashina when I bring you back I don't know where you will be exactly, but I'd say you will be near the border of fire country and wave country. Till then I'd say you should head for Kumo. Kami said getting a nod from the woman. Good. Now when you see the two tell them we said hi and also, give Naruto kun a from the both of us, Megami said getting a blush from Kashina and before she could retort what she said, she was gone in a flash of light. Kami sighed after Kashina disappeared and looked at her smiling sister. You know, I envy her a bit she gets to see Naruto kun after so long and we don't until later on. She said, getting a soft smile from Megami. Don't worry Kami Chan, when we do see him we'll be able to finally tell him our true feelings for Hai, until then we can watch over them and hope we get to see him soon. Megami said getting a soft nod from Kami, that is until a grim expression came upon her face, which Megami caught and spoke, what's wrong Kami Chan? It's that man, Naruto kun fought three years ago, ever since that battle we haven't heard or seen any activity on him or the people he serves under since then. And it has me worried, said the goddess of life. Megami just giggled which got the curious look from Kami and she decided to elaborate. Kami Nei Chan. She said getting a shocked look from the woman since Megami rarely used, Nei Chan, before. There is nothing to worry about, sure we haven't heard or seen them for three years, but I'm pretty sure my avatar has it under control, because even now I don't know how strong Naruto kun has gotten. But I do know after the last three years he's much stronger than before. So I know for a fact he will be able to protect himself and those important to him she said getting a nod from Kami. With that the two quickly snapped their fingers before a screen popped up before it searched for Naruto and Mito. Kumo main gates, uh. Those two were so adamant about having more shinobi to come along, can't they believe in us to be enough for this mission? Mito said puffing out her cheeks. Naruto just smirked before chuckling at her, it's not they don't believe in us, it's just that they want us to be safe, but there's nothing to worry about. So you ready? He said getting a quick nod from the girl. Naruto smiled before checking out with the guards handing them the papers before him and Mito jumped off into the forests heading to their next mission. Too bad this mission was gonna give them one hell of a ride. Border of wave country in a flash of light, Kashina appeared before falling to her knees in exhaustion. She stayed there for a few seconds to ready herself, before she looked around, she noted she was indeed between the border of wave country and fire country due to the way the trees were. She still remembers her time when she was alive so it wasn't a surprise when she remembered this part of the forest. She then looked at herself and was quite satisfied to see her wearing the normal Anbu attire except the orange-colored kitsune mask on her right hip. She smiled when the rush of memories hit her from her time as an Anbu, 
Then she felt a familiar tug on her left hip she looked down to see a the katana she once used when she was alive. Not the same one Mito used, this one was the same one given to her by the first Mito and her grandmother. The very first katana and Uzumaki heirloom of her clan. She smiled patting the weapon, before stretching out the kinks in her body before reaching out with her chakra sensory to sense a few chakra signatures heading into the same area. That's when she felt Naruto's and Mito's chakra signatures she grinned happily before jumping off toward their location. With Naruto and Mito after leaving Kumo's border they stepped up their speed to faster levels so they could reach their destination faster. This way they could meet up with the client and hear of what she needed in more detail. As they did so Mito used her sensory ability to reach as far as she could to look for any sign of trouble. That's when she saw some chakra signatures heading in the same direction as they were, but at a much slower pace. Naruto Sensei, I sense six chakra signatures seven miles east of us. Two of them appear to be heading into the four other signatures, what should we do? She said in a professional tone, since this was a mission she was gonna be called Naruto Sensei, since calling him Kun, may give information that the two were close and may endanger themselves. Naruto frowned at this, there was obviously gonna be a battle between the people Mito sensed, but question was who? Was it gonna be the Konoha shinobi hired by the client's father? Or some missing nin fighting hunter nin? He sighed before looking at Mito, well it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen. Wanna go check it out just in case it's the client's father? He said getting a hesitant nod from her. Naruto saw the nervousness in her eyes and placed a hand on her shoulder. Mito-chan, there is nothing to worry about, I'm pretty sure you can take on anything we face ahead of us and if not I'll be there, so no worries okay? He said with a grin. Mito's nervousness vanished almost immediately before ing Naruto on the cheek. She smiled warmly with a small blush, thank you Naruto-kun, now let's go. She said jumping ahead. Naruto stood there for a minute before shaking his head with a smile of his own plastered on his face. He then jumped after his apprentice, girlfriend. With Mito though she could feel another small chakra signature heading the same and although she didn't know exactly who it was. The chakra felt familiar somehow. Riverbed of wave country, ha ha ha. Is this all the great Kakashi of the Sharingan is capable of? It's quite pathetic if you ask me, said a man who stood at the height of six feet zero and wore white, gray black camo pants and black shinobi sandals. He wore nothing on his chest leaving it bare while his arms sported forearms protectors. This man also wielded a giant zanbato as tall as himself, he had black eyes and black hair that spiked up in the right. He had bandages wrapped around his face and nose. This man was Zabuza Momochi one of the seven legendary swordsmen of the mist, and at the moment he was facing off against Kakashi Hitaki. Kakashi at the moment wasn't faring so good, First off his team just left Fire Country border only to be attacked by two C-ranked missing nin that go by the name of, the Demon Brothers. After this his team decided to go on ahead despite the mission jumping past C-rank and now bordering B to A-rank. Now normally he wouldn't let low-level Genin decide this, but one particular person on his team was adamant on going. He shook his head of the thoughts before jumping out of a downward slash from Zabuza before ducking under a sideways slash, only to be kicked in the stomach into the water. When he swam back up, what the? The water. Dot it's. Dense. He said only to hear a cackle behind him. He turned around only to be too late. Haha <laughs> that's right. Sweden. Swiru no jutsu, water prison. Zabuza said before water surrounded Kakashi's form trapping him in a sphere of water. Zabuza then turned his head toward the trembling forms of Kakashi's students and smirked. Now let me show these greenhorns how real shinobi fights he said before doing a one-handed seal. Mizu Bunshin no Jutsu, he said before four water clones popped out of the water before they drawled out their Zanbados readying themselves to attack their targets. With Kakashi's students, Sakura Haruno, Sai and Sasuke Uchiha, were unnerved to see about fighting this man with their sensei trapped like he was, except Sai of course. Sasuke grit his teeth as Aura remembered that night the night his clan was massacred by the two most important people in his life. He wasn't strong enough to stop, Itachi, and now was too scared to fight a Junin. He closed his eyes in anger of thinking how weak he was now. The Zabuza clones were about on them until in a split second they were all gone back into water. It happened in only a second, but that was enough to shock Zabuza, before looking around the area. Who did that? said the man, but that was when he felt a slight indention in his back and that's all he felt before his body met a tree or should I say trees. 
Kakashi blinked in shock at what he just saw and that's when he and everyone in the area heard someone speak. Man Kakashi, you sure have gotten weak after so long, you been slacken up or something. Said a male voice that Kakashi and Sasuke thought sounded very familiar for some reason. Zabuza who pulled himself out of the pile of trees he hit looked up to see smoke of where Kakashi was and only saw Kakashi's figure still in the water and out of the water prison and two other shadowed figures within the smoke. When it started to clear they could see the figures more clearly. Though when Zabuza saw the taller of the two his eyes widened in shock and a little bit of fear at who he was seeing. Kakashi and Sasuke though gasped who they saw only to get confused glances from the others. When the smoke fully cleared it showed Naruto and Mito Uzumaki Namikaze with the former staring at Kakashi's form in emotion that showed slight disappointment. Mito though was giggling at all their expressions. Kakashi to get out of his stupor, and Naruto? M. Mito? I is that you? He said, Sasuke's head perked up needing to know if it was indeed true. Naruto just looked and saw Sasuke, he grimaced knowing this was gonna be troublesome later on. Yeah. It's us now why don't you go rest up I'll take care of this. Mito chan please take Kakashi away from the water and to his team. He said getting a nod from the girl. With that Mito shifted Kakashi on her shoulder and jumped away from the river. After this Naruto lazily turned his head to see Zabuza's now walking form with the mons Zanbato on his shoulder, he could see through the mons bandages face mask he was grinning. Ha ha ha. I see. Dot you. I finally get to fight you. Ooh this is gonna be good. He said eyeing Naruto's form and Zanjetsu strapped onto his back. Naruto raised an eyebrow in curiosity. What do you mean, Zabuza-san? Why could you possibly want to fight me for? He said getting a chuckle from the man before it turned into a full-blown laughing fit. Why? Why? I've been secretly wanting to fight someone of your caliber since day one. The day you entered the international bingo book for the elemental nation's most dangerous men got me excited to fight you at least once he said with glee in his tone. Naruto scowled remembering that it was the same event when he committed the Iwa massacre. Ah oh, I see, you want a challenge? He said getting a snort from Zabuza. Ha. Huh. No I just want a swords duel, I know you used that weapon on your back with your confrontation with Iwa and it's my and almost every other swordsman's dream to at least see or fight against the weapon in the swordsman that committed such a historic event in Iwa. He said eyeing Naruto's Zanpakuto with curiosity. Naruto just closed his eyes in though, before looking at Mito seeing her excited, but worried eyes. He smiled seeing her since the girl was always excited when he fought with Zanjetsu, he turned back to Zabuza and grabbed Zanjetsu's handle getting a twitch of excitement from Zabuza. Very well then, on the condition that you and I have a talk after this got it. He said getting a nod from the man. With that Naruto sighed before fully pulling out Zanjetsu showing his partner in all his glory. Zabuza's along with the audience eyed the blade and saw how unique it was, the blade itself was every swordsman's dream to see since it was the same weapon used in countless battles, wielded by a master swordsman. The blade that was said to be able to wipe out an army of shinobi with one swing. Zabuza though knew better that the blade was very much similar to the legendary swordsman's weapons, but different somehow. Though he was completely giddy in excitement to fight against such a blade and its wielder. Up in the trees a young hunter Nin Mask Shinobi could be seen and though her form could not be seen she was trembling in both fear and anxiety. To see a man of Naruto's stature before her was both exciting and terrifying. She feared for her master's life since this man was honestly beyond their level if the stories about him were true. As for Kakashi and his team and old man by the name of Tizuna looked at the blade before they heard a sigh from Mito, they looked at her questioningly, but only saw her dreamy looking eyes on Naruto's weapon. Sakura though along with secretly Sai asked her sensei on who this man was, sensei, who is this man and who is she? She said with a little edge at the end when she looked at Mito. Kakashi though was looking at Naruto's form in shock, before hearing his student's question, he decided to elaborate. Sakura this man before us was someone that Konoha has exiled for its ignorance and discrimination towards his family. He said in a regretful tone eyeing Mito with sadness as well. Sakura just rose an eyebrow and spoke once again, but what's his name? His name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze and that girl beside me is his sister Mito Uzumaki Namikaze. Kakashi said getting Mito looking at him for a few seconds before looking back at the two battle-ready shinobi. Sasuke though was completely wide-eyed seeing Naruto and Mito after so long and especially Naruto, Naruto. Dot the same one that took a hand in his clan's massacre was here. Why? How? 
so many questions ran through his head as to why Naruto would be here. Sai thinking on getting more information, then why isn't he in Konoha's bingo book? I mean shouldn't he be within the book since he was exiled? He said getting a narrow-eyed look from Mito. Kakashi sighed before speaking, it's like Zabuza just said Naruto here wasn't just put in a common Konoha bingo book, he was placed in the International Elemental Nations bingo book only reserved to the cages, demios and hunter nin commanders of each village. Since Naruto himself is such a dangerous man he isn't allowed to be fought by any common hunter nin. That's how dangerous Naruto is, but when I think about it, if it wasn't for Konoha impudence then he wouldn't be this way. He said getting shocked looks from them all except Mito since she knew of Naruto's status, but knew the dangers it brought with him. Sakura now looking at this man in complete fear uttered, and he's our enemy. She said with a deathly quiet voice unlike her normal screeching voice she uses other times. Mito just looked at her before speaking, Naruto sensei and I have no business with Konoha we were sent here on a mission to help free wave country from a tyrant named Gado. We aren't your enemies, but then again we aren't your allies. Now please be quiet I'd like to watch Naruto sensei's battle with Zabuza san, she said. This got weird glances from them until they heard a clash of steel ring through the forest when they all looked back they saw something they would forever remember. Naruto was holding Zanjetsu in front of him holding back a struggling Zabuza back from completing a downward slash at him with just one hand. Naruto sighed before pushing Zabuza back making the man skid a few feet away from him, after this Naruto appeared behind Zabuza. The man went wide-eyed, fast. He twirled around in time to block a slash at his back, but the ground beneath him shattered into a crater. This got shocked looks from some spectators and wondered how strong that attack was. Though Zabuza was thinking something totally different, yes, this strength his speed. This is the man I've been wanting to fight at my fullest. Before he let down his guard and jumped back in time, he looked at Naruto before charging at him at his top speeds, this left after images on the water. This action got a gasp from Kakashi, how? He's much faster than before, he mumbled. Mito though kept her eyes on the battle awaiting to see a true battle between swordsmen of their level. Even though she was trained in the art of Kenjutsu and was at a cage level she and Naruto both knew she would need experience to back up that claim. So this was a perfect way to analyze a battle between true swordsmen. Naruto saw his increased in speed, and raised Zanjetsu in time to parry a slash from Zabuza before he jumped into the air dodging a decapitating slice from behind. He narrowed his eyes a little seeing no movement on the water before spinning around knocking away Zabuza's attempted slash upon his back. Naruto then took that chance to bring down Zanjetsu hammering it down on Zabuza's own Zanbato making the man plummet to the ground. After this Naruto went headfirst before landing on the ground creating yet another crater. He saw and looked at Zabuza's prone form before it poofed into smoke, Zabuza appeared behind him midway into attack. That's when Naruto appeared behind Zabuza making the man go wide-eyed, he's faster. That's when he felt something going down his left arm he looked down to see a red long gash and in that second blood spurted out. He widened his eyes like others of how he just did that. Gah. He grunted before he was on the receiving end of a kick knocking him into a tree. He grunted once more and before he could do anything else he felt a thunk beside his head snapped his eyes to look on his right to see Zanjetsu an inch from his head. He. That. He's been holding back. He beat me so easily. Dot and yet. If he would have moved his weapon just a bit more to the left he would have killed me. Zabuza thought before his eyes landed back on Naruto's walking form. When the blonde spiky haired man was in front of him he yanked Zanjetsu from the tree and pointed it at Zabuza's form. Now, we talk, he was interrupted when three senban needles pierced Zabuza's neck making him go limp against the tree. He narrowed his eyes when he saw the appearing hunter Nin kneel before Zabuza's form. Thank you for taking care of him, Shinobi-san I shall take him back to finish off the body, said a feminine voice. Mito quirked an eyebrow at seeing a hunter Nin, but that's when she saw the Shinobi picking up the body, that's when she knew something was. She looked to see Naruto seeing the same thing but wasn't doing anything about it was what was confusing her. Ah, I see then perhaps you would get rid of the body now then, wouldn't you hunter Nin or should I say? Chan. He said with a sly smirk and mentally chuckled seeing the quick stiff of her body before she disappeared in a shushin. He shook his head before placing Zanjetsu onto his back once more while the bandages wrapped around the blade encasing it once more. He turned his head toward the audience and sighed in frustration, alright, now with that over old man. He said getting Tazuna's attention. 
Lead us to your home I'm pretty sure if our assumptions correct our client is in fact your daughter so might as well lead us both, okay? He said in a more professional tone. You uh, s sure. He said in a stutter, with that he lead them ahead with Naruto hefting up Kakashi and Mito walking beside him as Kakashi's team followed with questions all raging around in their head. After five minutes Kashina appeared in the area and huffed angrily, damn it. I just missed them. She said before looking around the area she closed her eyes feeling the energies that were here and when she felt Mito's and Naruto's she grinned. I'm close though and from the feel of Mito-chan's energy and Naruto-kun's they're close. She said before jumping off toward their location. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.